Episode 52, Crimson Blood Frenzy Dragon Gene. The Crimson Dragon's gene and the Berserk Lion gene were both top-tier ancestral genes of the Roaring Tribe, and their strength was equally matched. Daniel had only extracted two incomplete genes, but he didn't know what kind of skill the gene chain had. Daniel was not worried at all, because these were two high-quality genes. Under Daniel's control, these two genetic talents slowly merged together. Under Daniel's gene energy push, the gene structure kept colliding with each other. The two different genes were very difficult to fuse. The gene energy between the two different genes was completely different. The difficulty and risk of fusing two different genetic talents was very high. The first time Daniel fused with the strength from distress and the sandwolf gene, he succeeded without any difficulty, probably because of the system's reward. Just like the first time, Daniel extracted the bloodthirsty furious ant gene, and the first time he fused with the genetic weapon, he succeeded in one attempt when the success rate was low. This should be the system's rookie award. Two completely different kinds of gene energy were pushed together in Daniel's body. An intense pain made him clench his teeth. The fusion of two different types of genes was no different from fusing water and fire together. That kind of pain went deep into the bone marrow was not something an ordinary person could withstand. Fortunately, Daniel's spiritual force was very powerful. If it was an ordinary person, they would have given up long ago. Two genes are so hard to fuse. They are indeed worthy of being two higher tier ancestral genes. Daniel's forehead was covered in sweat, and he became angry. The higher the quality of the genes, the harder it was to fuse them together. But Daniel wasn't someone who would give up so easily. If Daniel could not successfully fuse the two gene chains in one attempt, then all his previous efforts would be in vain. Daniel gritted his teeth, and blue veins began to bulge on his forehead. Under his crazy manipulation, the gene energy in Daniel's body pushed the two gene chains to gradually fuse together. This situation lasted for nearly a quarter of an hour. Daniel's spiritual force was powerful, and his will was extremely strong. His eyes were bloodshot, and his entire body was covered in sweat. It was as if he had just been fished out of the water. I've succeeded. Daniel lay down on the bed and panted heavily. This is not something an ordinary person can bear. Fortunately, he had succeeded. The Berserk Lion and the Crimson Dragon had successfully merged together under his push. After the fusion, the genes produced a brand new genetic talent. Gene Talent Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon Incomplete Fusion Gene 19% Complete This was Daniel's third gene chain. Although this gene chain had yet to be perfected, one could see how extraordinary it was just from its name. After all, this was a fusion of two types of high-grade ancestral genes. Its quality was definitely good. After the fusion was complete, Daniel rested in the inn for a while before recovering his strength. After changing into a spare set of clothes, Daniel walked down from the upper floor. He ordered some food and drank his fill before leaving the inn. However, Daniel did not go into the wild lion family. He changed direction and headed to the other side of the road. Daniel quickly passed a few streets and arrived in front of a very rough building. This building was built very simply, and the workmanship was not exquisite, but the material used for building was very luxurious. The walls were made of marble with snake patterns, and the roofs were made of bricks with wolf blood. Even the stone steps at the entrance were made of the rarely seen black agate. However, this building didn't have the slightest bit of beauty as its decoration was only to show its owner's wealth. This was the mercenary association of the Roaring Tribe, the gathering ground where many warriors fought against the mutated beasts. Mercenaries earned a living by killing the mutated beasts and obtaining the Beast Corps. 
Their jobs were very dangerous, so the rewards were usually very generous. Daniel looked at the entrance of the Mercenary Association for a moment and then walked in. The space in the Mercenary Association was very big, similar to the large canteen in Daniel's school in his previous life. It could accommodate at least two to three hundred people. There were not many people, and less than a quarter of the seats in the hall were occupied. In the hall, there were several young women dressed in simple, sexy clothing walking between the tables. They were the servants of the Mercenary Association, and they were also one of the special characteristics of this place. As long as someone took a fancy to them and gave them enough beast cores as compensation, they could take them away. Any one of them could go to a room in the Mercenary Association to do some unspeakable things. Daniel's entrance did not attract much attention. Only a few people near the door heard the noise and raised their heads to look at him. He came to the front of the counter, and a waitress immediately greeted him with a smile. Sir, how are you? Is there anything you need help with? The waitress smiled sweetly and walked in front of Daniel. She spoke very gently to him. The waitress wore simple clothes, and Daniel's gaze did not shift at all as he looked into her eyes. He smiled and asked, Is there a bounty mission here? Normally, mercenaries could take some bounty missions in addition to hunting monsters and obtaining beast corps. Of course, these quests were different in difficulty, and not everyone could accept them. When the waitress heard Daniel asking about the missions, she could not help but look at him. Daniel was currently wearing the luxurious clothing of the wild lion family, and he was very clean. He did not look like a mercenary at all. Master, are you a mercenary? The waitress asked curiously. They had been in the mercenary association for a long time and seen all kinds of people. They were very familiar with judging people's identities. They could roughly determine the identity of the person just by looking at some details. When she first saw Daniel's fair face and clothes, she could tell that he was wearing expensive clothes. She thought that he was here to have fun in the mercenary association. Most of the mercenaries had been fighting for a long time in order to make a living. They all had a faint murderous aura about them and were not very clean. This is the first time. Daniel paused for a second and smiled awkwardly. He did not know what kind of procedures a mercenary needed to complete a mission. Episode 53 Wild Mercenary Group You haven't registered as a mercenary yet, have you? If you want to accept a mission, you need to register your mercenary information and have to go through a mercenary level test. The waitress said with a smile, but she was actually quite disdainful and felt that Daniel was just a rich man. It would be great if she could entice Daniel and obtain some benefits from him. After all, rich people were much more generous than mercenaries. Thinking of this, the waitress slowly approached Daniel and whispered into his ear, Master, please follow me. I will take you to register for mercenary information. The waitress spoke into Daniel's ear, and the fragrance from her body surrounded him. Daniel nodded without even looking around. He followed behind the waitress and walked toward the back of the mercenary association. The waitress's beautiful figure gently twisted in front of Daniel. Coupled with her slim figure and the scent of perfume, she believed that Daniel would definitely fall in love with her. However, the waitress failed to realize that Daniel's thoughts were not on her at all. Daniel still did not know the power of the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon Gene that he had just successfully fused with, so he needed a battle to confirm it. That was why Daniel came to the Mercenary Association. He wanted to accept the mission and go out to fight with the mutated beast. This would allow him to fully understand the information of the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon Gene during the battle. Soon, they arrived in a spacious room in the Mercenary Association. Although this place wasn't as big as the main hall, 
It was still a large stadium that could accommodate dozens of people. There were fewer people in this room, and it was more like a training center or something. The wooden dummy, fighting ring, and all kinds of training equipment were placed in this room. There were a lot of people training here. The furnishings here reminded Daniel of the gym in his previous life. Everyone was training there. However, the mercenaries here were extremely ruthless during training and were probably training to kill. That's the leader of the wild mercenary group, Michael. He actually came to train today. Michael is the strongest senior warrior in the wild mercenary group. I heard that he once defeated an awakened practitioner who had a gene chain with his bare hands. He can defeat awakened practitioners with his mortal strength. He is the role model of many mercenaries. When they passed by a training platform, Daniel saw a group of men and women surrounding it. They all looked at the people on the training platform and cried out in surprise. Curious, Daniel turned his head to look. On the training platform, there was a young man with a topless upper body who was attacking the equipment on the training platform. The numbers on the equipment were jumping crazily, and the alarm was ringing. In just a dozen seconds, the damage value on the testing equipment had reached SSS level. This was the limit of the device. At this point, cheers erupted from below the training platform. Everyone was shocked by Michael's combat strength. Is the Wild Mercenary Group really powerful? Daniel couldn't help but ask when he saw this. As soon as Daniel said this, the waitress leading the way stopped and turned around looking at Daniel in astonishment. She gently covered her mouth with her small hand, as if he didn't know the existence of the Wild Mercenary Group was a very strange thing. Sir, you don't even know about the Wild Mercenary Group? Said the waitress in disbelief and further explained to Daniel. The Wild Mercenary Group is the strongest team in the Roaring Tribe besides the three families. Lloyd Michael was the leader of the Wild Mercenary Group. They have connections with the three families. His strength was comparable to an awakened practitioner with his mortal body. After listening to the waitress, Daniel was mad. It seemed like he was just a high-ranked warrior. He estimated that he could only defeat some weak, awakened practitioner, which was worthless in Daniel's eyes. Daniel thought that he would be able to spar with an expert and test out his third gene chain. Let's continue. There's nothing to see, Daniel said. It seemed that if he wanted to test his new gene chain, he could only test it with the mutated beast in the wild. Michael jumped down from the training platform and took the towel that someone else had brought over. He looked in Daniel's and the waitress's direction and shouted loudly, Come and accompany me. As his voice faded, everyone's gazes instantly focused on the waitress in front of Daniel with looks of jealousy, pity, and all other sorts. The waitress's body seemed to have been struck by lightning, and she suddenly froze, trembling slightly. Lord Michael Taylor actually needs a waitress? Maybe he needs to vent it out after his vigorous training. I really don't know if she's lucky or unlucky. Lord Michael Taylor is really generous, but the process is a bit cruel. People were gloating and whispering, as if they knew Lord Michael Taylor's habits well. Lord Michael Taylor, I'm busy serving guests. I wonder if I can do it next time? The waitress turned her head and spoke with a trembling voice. Her voice sounded like she wanted to cry, and a trace of fear flashed across her eyes. Cut the crap. Hurry up and come over. Don't tell me you want me to personally look for you. Michael's eyes were cold. His body was now filled with desire, and he needed to find someone to vent it out as soon as possible. Since Daniel and the waitress happened to enter the room at this time, Michael chose her. The waitress's body trembled slightly but Michael was the leader of the wild mercenary group. She could only bite the bullet and walk towards him. Seeing the waitress's movement, Michael smiled with satisfaction in his eyes. He liked this kind of obedient person. Just then, Daniel grabbed the waitress's wrist and forced her to stop in her tracks, causing her to turn her head in surprise. I'm so sorry, brother. I'm in a hurry to register for mercenary information. Can you look for her later? Daniel looked up at Michael and said faintly. His tone 
was not polite at all. Episode 54 Solving Future Troubles His words not only stunned the waitress, but also the group of people surrounding him. Even Michael himself was stunned. Everyone's eyes instantly focused on the inconspicuous Daniel. After a moment of silence, the people surrounding Michael suddenly burst into mocking laughter. <laughs> Is he a fool? He actually asked Lord Michael Taylor to wait? Where did he come from? Don't tell me he doesn't know Lord Michael Taylor. In the Mercenaries Association, no one dares go against Lord Michael Taylor. Everyone's words were filled with ridicule and self-satisfaction that Michael would harm him. Daniel's thin and weak body could not withstand a single punch from Michael. After all, Michael was one of the top warriors amongst the advanced warriors. He was comparable to an awakened practitioner. The people felt that the way Daniel spoke to Lord Michael Taylor must have meant that he did not want to live anymore. Michael slowly walked towards Daniel and the waitress. His tone was very cold and looked like he wanted to kill him. It has been a long time since someone dared talk to me like this. Daniel's eyes were calm. He looked at Michael's without any fear. When he arrived in front of Daniel, Michael's energy seemed to have reached its peak. He grabbed at the waitress, wanting to snatch her away from Daniel. He didn't care if he would hurt her or not. I'll give you a chance. Get lost. Michael shouted coldly. Just as Michael's hand was about to grab the waitress, Daniel's hand firmly grabbed his wrist. No matter how much strength Michael used, he was still unable to move. Lord Michael Taylor, please calm down. After finishing taking care of this matter with him, I will immediately come and find you, said the waitress when she saw the friction between Michael and Daniel. She was so frightened that her face turned pale and she quickly came between the two of them and begged. Michael slapped the waitress's face, causing her to be sent flying. Michael roared angrily, and then he kicked the waitress once more. His attack was fast, and it even made a sound in the air. If this kick were to land on the waitress's body, she would be heavily injured. Daniel didn't want to cause trouble, but when he saw Michael being so rude, he couldn't help but feel annoyed and threw out a punch. With a dull sound, Michael's whole body flew like a shot put ball, and he fell heavily onto the ground. Daniel snorted and helped the waitress up from the ground. One side of the waitress's face was already swollen. Her face was full of panic as she pulled Daniel and said nervously, You should leave quickly. You have offended Lord Michael Taylor. If you don't leave now, it'll be too late. But what about you? Daniel asked. The waitress was stunned. Daniel could leave after offending Michael, but she depended on the Mercenary Association to survive. If she offended Michael here, it would not end well for her. The waitress's eyes were filled with despair. When she thought about the consequences of offending Michael, she wanted to die. So, I'll help you solve your future troubles, Daniel sighed and said helplessly. The waitress was stunned for a moment and looked at Daniel in confusion. Daniel turned around and walked towards Michael. Michael got up from the ground with the help of the crowd. He held his chest. His eyes were gloomy and full of intent to kill. He said, How dare you attack me? You are doomed to die. He actually dared to launch a sneak attack on Lord Michael? Lord Michael Taylor, go to the arena and teach him a lesson. There will always be people who like to test Lord Michael Taylor to the brink of death. Their lives will be gone in a moment. Michael's subordinates threatened fiercely. In their eyes, it must have been Daniel's sneak attack that sent Michael flying. Daniel really didn't use much strength because he was afraid that he might accidentally overexert himself and punch Michael to death. But now, Daniel decided to hurt him first because if he didn't, he would not listen to his words. Michael took the lead and jumped onto the arena to exercise his muscles and bones. The sounds of his bones cracking was alarming. The atmosphere below suddenly became lively. 
Daniel was silent and slowly walked onto the arena. Just as Michael was about to let Daniel know the consequences of offending him, Daniel suddenly turned around with his back to him. This strange action stunned Michael. What is he going to do? Could it be that he knows he's finished and has given up? Does he want to test this difference between his and Lord Michael Taylor's strength? Everyone was confused by Daniel's actions. Without saying anything, Daniel threw a punch at the device behind him. Everyone just scoffed at this. The highest level of this device was SSS. Michael's power had already reached the highest level. Even if Daniel tested again, he would not be able to surpass SSS. Under everyone's disdainful gazes, Daniel's fist landed on the testing equipment. The testing equipment didn't display any test values or alarm, but exploded on the spot. A large number of fragments of the testing instrument were sent flying. The entire area was completely covered by the smoke produced by the explosion. When everything returned to normal, everyone looked again and saw the huge device had disappeared. Daniel stood on the ring with an expressionless face. Are you sure you want to fight me? Daniel said. The people who were standing below the ring, ready to watch a good show, opened their mouths wide and looked at Daniel in disbelief. This was the best testing equipment, and even Michael, who was comparable to an awakened practitioner, could only reach SSS level. Daniel was more powerful. He blew up the testing equipment with one punch. Michael looked at the device that was blown up with one punch. He was a little scared, and cold sweat appeared on his forehead. He knew that if he fought with this unremarkable young man in front of him, his head would probably end up like that device. Who are you? Michael solemnly asked with gloomy eyes. This was also the question of everyone, including the waitress who was completely stunned. Why had no one ever seen Daniel before? Episode 55 Kneel Down and Beg for Mercy Everyone, including the completely stunned waitress, was wondering why hadn't anyone seen him before. Just then, a few figures arrived in the training room. The one in the lead was a middle-aged man with white hair, and behind him were two guards wearing light mechanical armor. Manager Davis, someone called out. This was Manager Davis, who was in charge of the Mercenary Association's affairs. When he heard the explosion, he rushed over with his men. What happened? He asked in astonishment. Manager Davis's eyes swept across the place, and his gaze fell upon the damaged testing equipment. This made Manager Davis a little dumbfounded. This testing equipment was able to withstand an awakened practitioner's attack without being damaged. It could be said that this was steel plate equipment, but when Manager Davis saw that it was actually damaged, he couldn't even believe it. Could it be that some of the mercenaries' attacks were stronger than awakened practitioners? Manager Davis looked at the two people in the ring. The first one he locked onto was Michael. The wild mercenary group's name was very famous in the Mercenary Association. Michael's powerful strength had also made him the most famous warrior in the Mercenary Association. His attack power was comparable to awakened practitioners, so it was possible he could have blown up the testing equipment. When Manager Davis turned his eyes to the man standing opposite of Michael, his body trembled violently. Manager Davis of the Mercenary Association is here. He's going to be in trouble. Lord Michael Taylor doesn't even need to attack. Manager Davis will be able to get rid of him. Coincidentally, the instrument malfunctioned. I don't know if he's just lucky or unlucky. When everyone saw Manager Davis walking towards Daniel with two powerful guards, they started whispering to each other. They looked at Daniel with a sneer on their faces. Although Michael was the best among the Mercenary Association, Manager Davis was the one in charge. Michael had to show him some respect. Everyone wanted to see how Daniel would face Manager Davis's reproach. If he dared to go against Manager Davis, he would attract the wrath of the entire Mercenary Association. 
The consequences of offending the Mercenary Association were no less than offending the three great families of the Roaring Tribe. This was extremely terrifying. Manager Davis approached Daniel and stared at him for a while. Under the watchful eyes of everyone, Manager Davis suddenly lowered his body and bowed to Daniel. Welcome, I am Manager Davis, he said very respectfully. The two guards behind Manager Davis saw what he did and immediately knelt down in front of Daniel. For a moment, the atmosphere in the room froze and the sound of everyone's breathing and heartbeat could clearly be heard. Do you know me? Asked Daniel, a little surprised. I was lucky to be present when I was in the gladiator tournament. Manager Davis replied respectfully with an excited look in his eyes. He was very excited when he thought of how Daniel had killed five awakened practitioners with just two gene chains. He was surprised that Daniel had come to the mercenary association that he was in charge of. Who is he? He even made Manager Davis respect him. Gladiator tournament? Could he be an awakened practitioner? So what if he's an awakened practitioner? The mercenary association had a mercenary on an awakened practitioner's level. Everyone had different opinions, and even though they had heard about the gladiator tournament, they could not enter the tournament and had no idea who Daniel was. Manager Davis knew about the gladiator tournament, and that was enough. Even though these people didn't know about it, it didn't mean that Michael didn't know about it. Even though Michael, who was the leader of the Wild Mercenary Group, wasn't present at that time, he was very well informed. When he heard the name Daniel, Michael's heart trembled violently. He felt as if he had fallen into an ice cave and his hands and feet turned cold. Daniel's name had spread across the entire Roaring Tribe like a plague in the past few days. Even though most of the people didn't know what Daniel looked like, This didn't stop his reputation from spreading. With the strength of two gene chains, Daniel had killed five gene chain awakened practitioners. In the end, he defeated young Lord of Crimson Dragon family with his severely injured body. Furthermore, Daniel was a participant of the Wild Lion family. This meant that he was the future son-in-law of the Wild Lion family. Daniel's strength and background were very powerful. Michael didn't dare to imagine that the person he provoked was actually Daniel, and he instantly knelt down. Lord Daniel, please forgive me. He said the previously arrogant Michael, who now had a panicked expression on his face. His entire body was drenched in cold sweat. Even if the Wild Mercenary Group was called the number one mercenary group in the Roaring Tribe, his combat strength was comparable to an awakened practitioner. When he was facing a true great figure from the Wild Lion family, his strength and background were still insignificant. Michael's kneeling had shocked everyone. In their hearts, Lord Michael Taylor was like an invincible existence. With his mortal body, he was comparable to an awakened practitioner. He knelt down in front of Daniel. Who exactly was Daniel? Even Lord Michael Taylor was in fear and trepidation. When they thought about how they had mocked and ridiculed Daniel, panic emerged on their faces. When Manager Davis saw Michael's expression, he understood what had happened. He came before Michael. How dare you offend Lord Daniel Wilson? Manager Davis kicked Michael's chest. Michael spat out a mouthful of blood. He flew down from the ring and landed heavily on the ground. The power of this kick was extraordinary. Manager Davis had used his true strength. Lord Daniel Wilson, what do you think I should do with him? Manager Davis asked Daniel. Daniel looked at him and said, forget it. Manager Davis had already done so. In any case, Michael was not a threat to him. Even if Michael wanted revenge, he would not have the chance. They weren't from the same world. Episode 56 Mission When Daniel once again walked towards the waitress, she panicked and couldn't help but take half a step back. 
Don't you want to take me to register for mercenary information? Let's go. Daniel said lightly. Manager Davis saved Michael Taylor's life. Daniel used to request the waitress to show him how to register to let Manager Davis know that this waitress was under his protection. When the waitress heard Daniel's request, she looked both relieved and flattered. Daniel was an awakened practitioner of the wild lion family. He was considered a leader with formidable strength. It was her honor to be able to lead the way for Daniel. The waitress nodded with excitement and surprise in her eyes. Under everyone's shocked and envious gaze, the waitress led Daniel through the room. After the two figures disappeared, Manager Davis turned to a guard and said, I want all the information about that waitress. Don't let anyone touch her. The guard understood. He nodded and walked out of the room. Following the waitress's lead, Daniel came to a room used for registration. After Daniel entered his information to register as a mercenary, the waitress looked confused. Daniel, why do you want to register as a mercenary? Awakened practitioners rarely register as mercenaries. The waitress couldn't help but ask curiously. Daniel turned his head to look at her and casually replied, I am here to play. The waitress was surprised. It seemed like a waste for a prominent and powerful awakened practitioner to register as a mercenary. Even in the E-class Roaring Tribe, awakened practitioners didn't need to be mercenaries hunting mutated beasts for a living. Mercenaries and awakened practitioners' missions were similar, though. They both needed to kill mutated beasts. However, awakened practitioners were usually recruited by big forces. They were responsible for protecting the trade team and they would only attack mutated beasts when they encountered them. They did not seek them out. An awakened practitioner's main focus was to protect the ordinary people. They did not need to go looking for monsters. Mercenaries were different. Their main source of income was to hunt monsters and obtain beast cores. Even if the monsters didn't look for them, they still had to take the initiative to look for monsters. Mercenaries earned a lot more than ordinary people. But this profession was definitely extremely dangerous and had a high casualty rate. Most awakened practitioners would not volunteer to be professional mercenaries. Daniel probably came to register as a mercenary because he thought it might be interesting. But the waitress didn't expect Daniel to say it out loud or actually do it. The waitress smiled awkwardly and brought Daniel the mission announcement column. The mission announcement column was the main way for mercenaries or mercenary groups to find and apply for missions. Every day, there would be a variety of new missions posted on it. The missions were divided into groups according to difficulty level. Mercenary and mercenary groups would apply to accept missions based on their strength and perceived ability to complete the mission. Some missions listed set requirements necessary to apply for them. As an awakened practitioner, Daniel would obviously be one of the highest ranked mercenaries. After all, even the strongest mercenary, Michael, couldn't withstand a single blow from Daniel. The mission announcement column was posted in a separate room off of the main mercenary association hall. Although there were not many people here, Everyone was gathered in front of a huge screen that filled an entire wall. The main hall of the Mercenary Association was a place for resting and entertainment. The room with the mission announcement column was the true core of the Mercenary Association. All the missions and resource trading were carried out in this room. Gold Turtle Business Group. This mission requires five B-grade mercenaries and ten C-grade mercenaries. There will be generous rewards, a safe route, and the mercenary group will be the priority. Anonymous, we will form a team to hunt Black Earthworm. We need B-grade and above mercenary partners. Mercenary group needed. There's a mission to find Broken Wings Flower. Recruit members. All kinds of information slowly appeared on the huge screen for all the mercenaries to see and choose missions or groups to join. The level of each mission was marked at the end of each description. Of course, most missions required mercenaries with B-level and above. C-grade mercenaries were basically no different from ordinary militia. 
Their combat strength was very limited, and they could only serve as a foil for the transportation missions. Following the waitress, Daniel arrived in front of an operating table. Daniel, you can find information about all of the missions here. The waitress showed Daniel the functions of the operating table. Help me find the most difficult task right now, Daniel asked casually. The waitress was surprised but started checking. Very quickly, a mission notification appeared on the operating table. The most difficult mission is to obtain the Eye of the Dragon of the Shadow Furious Dragon. The mission difficulty is SSS grade. It requires awakened practitioner who has two gene chains or more. When the waitress saw how difficult the mission was, she was very surprised. She hadn't been in the Mercenary Association for long, but she had never seen such a difficult mission listed. Not only was it the most difficult mission, but the requirements to apply were also very high. It required an awakened practitioner to accept it. Furthermore, it was a mission that only people with the strength of at least two Jane Chains could accept. Such a mission couldn't be accepted by anyone else currently registered in the Mercenary Association. All right, I'll accept this mission. Daniel glanced at it and announced casually, Help me release a message. The content is, Recruit a guide to lead a small team to the Shadow Furious Dragon. Reward of 100 Beast Cores. When the waitress heard Daniel's words, she couldn't help but shiver. 100 Beast Cores. This was not a small number. Ordinary missions would not pay this much. The difficulty of this mission was worth this price, though. They had to enter an extremely dangerous area. Daniel only needed a guide to lead him to the Shadow Furious Dragon territory and would handle the rest. Any mercenary who had been with the Roaring Tribe for long could complete this task. Daniel, the Shadow Furious Dragon is located in one of the forbidden areas. Not even the elite awakened practitioners of the Roaring Tribe's ruling three families dare it to enter it. Episode 57 Let's Go The waitress hesitated for a moment, but eventually tried to persuade him. I heard that an awakened practitioner who had three gene chains lost his life during a similar mission. Even the patriarchs of the three great clans are a little afraid and ordered the disciples of the clans not to enter. Please think about it carefully. The waitress was very worried about his safety. Ever since Daniel saved her from Michael Taylor, the waitress's attitude towards Daniel had completely changed. Daniel saved her life. Samson can't control me. You don't have to worry. Daniel curled his lips and said bluntly, on the surface, Daniel agreed to be the son-in-law of Wild Lion family, but in his heart, he had no intention of staying for long. Samson both threatened and enticed him, but Daniel felt disdain in his heart. Daniel was still weak, but once he upgraded his Red Moon Frenzy Dragon Sheen, even Samson wouldn't be able to do anything to him. One of the reasons he chose the Shadow Furious Dragon mission was that it was by far the riskiest. Another reason was the Red Moon Frenzy Dragon Gene. He didn't know what relationship it had with the worm monster, but he knew it was powerful. All the genes of the Crimson Dragon family were from the Crimson Dragon and incredibly powerful. It would not be an easy task for Daniel to perfect the Red Moon Frenzy Dragon Gene, but he was up to the challenge. When the waitress heard this, she hurriedly placed her index finger on her lips and motioned for Daniel to lower his voice. At the same time, she nervously looked around. In the Roaring Tribe, directly calling the names of the Three Families Patriarch was taboo. After all, the Patriarchs of the Three Families were revered. Even if Daniel was a member of the Wild Lion family, it would be disrespectful to call the names of the Patriarchs directly. However, seeing Daniel's resolve, the waitress said nothing more. After all, she was nobody to him. With Lord Daniel's formidable strength, he should be able to return safely, the waitress thought in her heart. After issuing the recruitment mission, a small team quickly contacted them. This kind of easy mission 
would be chosen by the mercenary who saw it as soon as it was released. After all, this mission did not require them to fight or protect. As long as they brought Daniel to their destination, they would be able to get a generous reward of 100 Beast Corps. If they could hunt a relatively weak mutated beast along the way, the harvest from this trip would probably allow the entire mercenary team to have a comfortable vacation. After the waitress handed over the information to the mercenary team, she gave a brief report to Daniel, bowed slightly, and spoke to him. Daniel, it is my honor to serve you. If there is nothing else, I will take my leave now. The waitress's voice trembled, but she tried her best to calm down. Wait. Just as the waitress was about to turn around and leave, Daniel suddenly opened his mouth and asked, What is your name? The waitress was very surprised. For women like her who sought survival working for the Mercenary Association, there was basically no one who would ask for their names. Usually, people would just use their code name to call them. But now, Daniel actually asked for her name. This confused the waitress. Daniel didn't think there was any problem. The waitress had served him well, so he ought to know her name. My name is Jade. The waitress did not turn around and said softly with her back to Daniel, I will remember, Daniel said, then turned around and left. The guiding mercenaries were preparing resources for the trip in the backyard of the Mercenary Association and waiting for Daniel to arrive. Daniel arrived in the backyard of the Mercenary Association and saw that there were other people there beside the guide team. Of course, it was understandable that there were other people in the huge backyard. But after seeing them clearly, Daniel's expression grew wary. There were a few men in golden leather armor and a woman in golden armor in the backyard. It was Princess Nala and a few elite warriors of the Wild Lion family. They appeared to be waiting for Daniel here. Daniel was not surprised. He had no intention of hiding his whereabouts from them. However, Daniel didn't expect Princess Nala to come here in person. Nala, why are you here? Daniel said with an awkward smile on his face. Didn't you want me to come? Nala asked. Nala was obviously unhappy and looked at Daniel with resentment. Nala's eyes made Daniel a little scared. It was as if she was abandoned, which made Daniel feel guilty. This place is very dangerous, so no, I didn't expect you to come. Daniel turned his eyes and said seriously. Nala's expression eased a little when she heard Daniel's worry. It's fine. Father allowed me to come. Besides, I have the power to protect myself. I won't drag you down. Nala said faintly. Daniel didn't refute her. He simply let her do as she pleased. Initially, the mercenary team thought they had made a great deal. However, when they saw the members of the Wild Lion family, all of them started to panic. After all, this was one of the three big families of the Roaring Tribe. Every elite warrior of the Wild Lion family was much stronger than they. The reward won't be any less. Lead the way. A warrior of the Wild Lion family came to the front of the mercenary team and said in a proud tone, The Wild Lion family had won first place in the Gladiator Tournament this time. The warriors of the Wild Lion family were very proud when they walked outside and displayed their vast resources. A grand and luxurious light-armored vehicle with a golden lion head slowly drove out of the Roaring Tribe. Under the mutated beast's suppression, the human living space had shrunk. Now most of the means of transportation were used to pull cars with domesticated monsters. It was already very rare to see an energy-armored vehicle like this. After all, armored vehicles consumed a lot of energy. It was not a tool that ordinary forces could use for a long period of time. Even a large force like the Wild Lion family rarely used energy-armored vehicles. However, on this day, the people of the Roaring Tribe once again saw an armored vehicle that looked like a lion. The armored vehicle slowly drove out of the Roaring Tribe's main gate. When the people around saw the dazzling golden color, they couldn't help but move to the sides of the road and give it a wide berth. Even the mercenary team guides couldn't help but straighten their backs when they saw this scene.
Episode 58 The Haunted Forest Although the vehicle borrowed power, the crowd's reaction made them feel like celebrities. The space inside the light-armored vehicle wasn't large, but it was very comfortable. However, the only drawback of this light-armored vehicle was that the air inside was somewhat stuffy and hot. Daniel didn't feel any discomfort. However, Nala, who was sitting opposite of him, blushed slightly and looked a little shy. Nala, are you feeling unwell? Daniel saw Nala's appearance and asked curiously. When he asked Nala, the flush on her face seems to have increased a bit and she glared at Daniel fiercely. Daniel was at a loss. It's too hot in the car. I need to change my clothes. Close your eyes. Nala fiercely warned Daniel. You are not allowed to open your eyes and peek, otherwise I will gouge your eyes out. Nala, whose face was flushed red, looked like a spoiled child. When Daniel heard this, he looked at Nala with a smile. The teasing look in his eye was quite obvious. What are you looking at? Nala said frantically. Close your eyes. Just change your clothes. I won't peek at you. Daniel rolled his eyes and said bluntly. At first, Nala did not react. After she understood, she was so angry that she almost threw herself at Daniel. Finally, under Nala's persistent pestering, Daniel closed his eyes. Along with the sound, a faint fragrance entered Daniel's nose. The nether wolf gene not only increased Daniel's speed, explosive force, and eyesight, but also strengthened his sense of smell. This delicate fragrance was the unique scent of Nala. This made Daniel's heart beat faster. After a long time, I'm done changing. You can open your eyes now. Nala said softly. Daniel immediately opened his eyes. Nala was no longer wearing the tightly wrapped military uniform. Instead, she had changed into a thin set of clothes that completely outlined her perfect figure. Nala tied up her hair that was originally loose. Nala's fair arms and calves were exposed to the air. Her legs were together, and her head was slightly lowered. She seemed very dignified. These two completely different temperaments were reflected on Nala's body at the same time, but it did not make people feel any discomfort. Instead, it made people feel a strange temptation. Daniel finally suppressed the inexplicable desire in his heart and sized Nala up and down. This dress suits you quite well. It's very beautiful. Daniel praised from the bottom of his heart. You really are a rogue. Nala's face was red as she muttered in a low voice. Daniel was instantly speechless. He just casually praised her but was treated as a hooligan. Did she really have to let him say that she was extremely ugly? But on the surface, Daniel just acted as if he didn't hear her and just sat there. The atmosphere in the car seemed a little awkward for a moment. But at this moment, the armored car suddenly paused and shook Daniel and Nala. Daniel opened the door to check on the situation. What happened? Nala asked. We've left the territory of Royan tribe. We should be at the border of the haunted forest by now. Daniel said. Before this, Daniel had roughly understood the Rowing tribe and its surrounding areas. The Roaring Tribe was an E-class camp with several F-class camps around it. However, a vast and deep forest lay to the west of the Roaring Tribe. There was a standard for dealing with the mutated beasts in the area surrounding Roaring Tribes. However, the unknown was terrifying. Few people had explored the haunted forest or knew what to expect of the monsters there. Even though the Roaring Tribe had existed for a long time, they had only explored the outer regions of the haunted forest. The number of mutated beasts in the haunted forest was much greater than the number of mutated beasts in the Roaring Tribe area. The haunted forest was made up of a special kind of tree called Ghost Tree. This kind of tree was very hard and impervious to water and fire. No one could cut it. When the gentle breeze blew at night, the branches and leaves of the Ghost Tree rubbed together causing friction. It made a sound like crying and screaming, which was terrifying. Even though people knew that this sound was produced by the friction between the branches and leaves of the ghost tree, no one was willing to stay in the haunted forest at night. The moment this sound was heard, 
It was as if there were ghosts crying and howling in the trees. This was also the reason for the ghost tree and the haunted forest names. Even when the mercenaries of the Roaring Tribe went out to hunt for the mutated beast to obtain the beast core, they tried their best to avoid the haunted forest. After all, an awakened practitioner had once disappeared into the haunted forest. There seemed to be a huge creature in the depths of the forest that made people fear it. Even the patriarchs of the three major families of the Roaring Tribe had listed the haunted forest as a forbidden zone. They prohibited their disciples from entering it without permission. Since the elites of the three family did not dare to enter the haunted forest, ordinary mercenaries did not have the courage to enter. Therefore, the haunted forest was not far from the Roaring Tribe, but the degree of development of this large forest was very low. Basically, they knew nothing about the situation in the haunted forest. It was only rumored that there was a Shadow Furious Dragon somewhere in the haunted forest. In fact, this was just a rumor, but no one had actually seen it before. It was possible that those who had seen the Shadow Furious Dragon had all died, causing the Roaring Tribe to only have its legends, but no sighting. Haunted forest? You actually want to go to the haunted forest? Nala's eyes widened when she heard Daniel's words. She asked again in shock, What's wrong? Daniel asked curiously, Are you crazy? Do you know what kind of mutated beasts are in the haunted forest? Nala's expression was serious, and her tone was very afraid as she asked, This is the reason why I went in. Could it be that you know what is inside? Daniel asked back. At the same time, he was also curious. Could it be that there was some insider information in the wild lion family? The wild lion family controlled one of the three major families of the Roaring Tribe. How could they not explore the haunted forest? No matter what kind of resources there were in the haunted forest, as long as they could make use of it, it would make their families stronger. How could the ambitious three families be indifferent to such abundant resources? They would definitely fight to send people to explore it. Episode 59 Secrets of the Heritage Armor The three great families had unanimously listed the haunted forest as a forbidden area and prohibited their disciples from entering. It must be because they had discovered something strange in the haunted forest. As the princess of the wild lion family, it was not surprising that Nala knew some secrets. The reason why the haunted forest is listed as a forbidden area is because my father told me there is a terrifying monster in the haunted forest that can destroy the entire Roaring Tribe, and no one is allowed to enter. Nala's expression was somewhat timid. Obviously, when Samson told her about it, this incident left a shadow in her heart. Do you know what that terrifying monster looks like? Daniel said with some amusement. Nala was shocked for a second, and then shook her head. Then what are you afraid of? Daniel rolled his eyes and did not seem worried at all. These were all tricks to scare children. In front of Daniel, the terrifying monster still had to obediently hand over its genes. The more terrifying the mutated beast, the more excited Daniel became. I can't go in. Father will scold me if he finds out. Nala said timidly, Wait for us at the entrance to the haunted forest. I will go in alone. Daniel suggested, it would take one month to enter the underground secret realm. The destruction of the steel gauntlet had caused Daniel to lose a powerful tool. And in a short one month's time, Daniel would not be able to make any breakthrough in other areas. If he wanted to have enough confidence to suppress the other powerful awakened practitioners from the E-grade tribe, the only way Daniel could do it was to fuse the third gene chain. After completing the third gene chain, Daniel's strength would experience another leap. Only by letting the third gene chain take effect could Daniel have enough confidence to ensure that he could obtain benefits from the underground secret realm. The light armored vehicle was still moving smoothly on the rugged sand road. Occasionally, it would be a little bumpy, but no one paid attention. After all, Daniel and Nala were both awakened practitioners. Although they were not very old, their physiques were far beyond ordinary people. 
These mercenaries, who fought mutated beasts all year round, did not have better physiques than them. Awakened practitioners had already transcended the category of mortals. After another hour or so, they finally arrived at the border of the haunted forest, following a full day's journey. Here, the light-armored vehicle stopped. The mercenaries and warriors of the wild lion family also stopped. The road in the haunted forest was rugged and uneven. The gaps between the trees were small. With the scale of the light-armored vehicle, it was impossible to enter. If they wanted to enter the haunted forest, they could only enter on foot. Daniel walked out of the light-armored vehicle. He raised his head and looked at the tall trees in front of him, feeling emotional. After that, Nala also put on her military uniform and followed Daniel down. Daniel, why do you have to enter the haunted forest? Nala frowned and asked in confusion, What do you want? Can't the wild lion family give it to you? When Daniel heard what Nala said, he felt even more emotional. In the past, Daniel had always fantasized about when he would find a rich wife, but he didn't expect it to come true now. But now, Daniel no longer had the lazy thought in his mind. In this dangerous world, Daniel had to constantly improve his strength in order to survive. In the wild lion family, Daniel didn't think he could always ensure the safety of him and the people around him. There was no law and order in this world. If he wanted to ensure his safety, he needed to have great strength. Actually, I came to the haunted forest for the sake of my family. Daniel slowly raised his head and said earnestly, There is a terrifying existence in the haunted forest that can threaten the entire Roaring Tribe. It will not live in harmony with us all the time. What if it comes out of the haunted forest one day? Nala panicked and revealed a nervous look. So I have to find out what exactly exists in the haunted forest. If there's a monster that can destroy us at any time, how can I feel at ease? Daniel stood with his hands behind his back. His hair was fluttering in the breeze. He seemed to be isolated from the world, and the outline of his body had become much more blurred. This move touched Nala. Daniel was doing this for the sake of the entire wild lion family, for the sake of the entire roaring tribe. For him to have such noble behavior, he could be called a hero. Daniel, Nala called out softly. Daniel secretly glanced at Nala. When he saw that she was fooled by his words, she looked worshipfully at him, and his heart was filled with pride. She wouldn't stop him anymore, right? Daniel thought to himself. I've decided. I want to go with you. Nala's face revealed a resolute expression as she spoke. Daniel almost stumbled and fell to the ground when he heard that. Haunted Forest was a forbidden area of the three great families. If Samson suspected I kidnapped his daughter and took her into the forbidden area, he would fight me with his life. Nala, I will go in alone. Daniel really didn't want to bring her into such a dangerous place. Daniel had the ability to protect himself, but he might not be able to protect Nala. No, you are already a member of the Wild Lion family. I can't let you take the risk alone. Nala's face was red. She clenched her fist and said excitedly, Daniel wanted to cry, but had no tears. He felt that his words had the opposite effect. In the end, Nala still followed Daniel into the haunted forest. It was not because Nala persuaded Daniel, but because Nala took out the wild lion family's inheritance armor from the light-armored vehicle. Daniel immediately guessed that this was probably arranged by Samson. Otherwise, with Nala's reaction speed, she would not have blocked Daniel before he went out. With the Wild Lion family's inheritance armor, Nala's safety shouldn't be a problem anymore. When Daniel activated the inheritance armor in the Gladiator tournament, he unexpectedly discovered a secret. Even when Samson asked, he didn't reveal any clues. That was why Daniel was sure that the inheritance armor was enough to protect Nala's safety. It wasn't only the bloodline of the Wild Lion family that could activate the inheritance armor. As long as a person possessed the Berserk Lion gene, they could communicate with the armor and unleash great power. This inheritance armor was alive.
Episode 60 Living Together The mercenary team led Daniel and Nala into the haunted forest. Initially, the soldiers of the Wild Lion family were going to follow them in, but Nala ordered them to wait in the armored vehicles outside the haunted forest. No one dared to disobey the order of the princess. Even if they were on tender hooks, they could only wait obediently. As they walked, there was a faint sound of weeping and wailing in the forest. It was like the sound of a woman crying coming from all directions. Nala heard this strange sound and felt very nervous. Even though she was wearing the inheritance armor, her small hand was still lightly grabbing onto the corner of Daniel's clothes. Her frightened look made Daniel chuckle to himself. He didn't expect that as an awakened practitioner, Nala was actually afraid of ghost sounds. Probably because the leader of mercenary team noticed Nala's condition, he turned around and comforted her with a smile. Princess Nala, you don't have to worry. This is only the sound of the ghost tree rubbing. You will get used to it. The mercenary team specialized in hunting mutated beasts and collecting useful materials at the border of the haunted forest. They have been dealing with the haunted forest for many years and had gotten used to the environment here. Nala's fear and tension eased a little when she heard what the mercenary leader said. However, she still tightly grabbed Daniel's clothes, as if holding it like this could give her a sense of security. Is the ghost tree of no use? Daniel came to the side of a ghost tree and used his palm to feel the material of the ghost tree. He asked doubtfully. Nowadays, energy and resources are scarce. Logically speaking, they should do everything they could to make use of all resources they found. There was such a large haunted forest in the vicinity of the Roaring Tribe. Why didn't they make use of the ghost tree here? Of course, Daniel had thought about whether the three families of the Roaring Tribe were afraid that destroying the ghost tree in the haunted forest would attract the attention of other terrifying monsters they had yet to discover. However, judging from the hints given by Samson, they were not afraid of the terrifying mutated beasts in the haunted forest, but other things. Otherwise, Samson would not have asked Nala to go with Daniel, and he would not have given her the inheritance armor of the wild lion family to protect her. Samson was sure that he wanted Daniel's help to find out what kind of mysterious monsters lived in the haunted forest. Daniel, it's not that these ghost trees can't be used, it's just that it's too cumbersome to use them. Whether it's used as materials or as fuel, the efficiency is very low. Therefore, the profits provided by these ghost trees are very low. Basically, no one is willing to waste time on these things. The leader of the mercenary team explained to Daniel. Daniel nodded in agreement. The mercenary team was determined to get through the haunted forest, which had almost no normal roads. They took out huge instruments, half the height of a person, that Daniel had never seen before and opened a narrow path in the haunted forest. They broke through all the obstacles and advanced. Without the guidance of the mercenary team, Daniel was afraid he would easily lose his way. Under the guidance of the mercenary team, Daniel and the others advanced in an orderly manner. During their track, they encountered small troubles, such as the appearance of weak mutated beasts or obstacles blocking their path. However, these small troubles were not a problem at all for a mercenary team with awakened practitioners. Nala had been in the haunted forest long enough to have gotten used to the sounds and environment. She even cooperated with the mercenary team to kill two spiked tusk boar. The spiked tusk boar was not difficult to kill, but they were very flexible. It took a lot of effort for the mercenary team to deal with these kinds of spiked tusk boars. Nala could not stand it any longer. She ignited the berserker lion gene and killed the spiked tusk boar with a kick. Her powerful strength made the mercenaries in the team full of envy. They walked in the forest for an unknown length of time. The sky was getting dark and the visibility was low. The leader of the mercenary team reported to Daniel and Nala before setting up camp. It was common for these mercenaries to spend the night in the haunted forest. Even though they had traveled in the haunted forest for a long time, they found it very difficult to travel in the haunted forest at night. Mercenaries usually chose to find a place to spend the night and leave the next day. Daniel, Princess Nala, we only have a large tent at the moment. 
the leader of the mercenary tent said nervously. I can only let two of you stay in one tent for one night. Nala heard the mercenary leader's words, and her face slightly blushed, but she waved her hand and said, It's fine. Nala's reaction seemed to have indirectly confirmed something. The mercenary leader's eyes were filled with a strange look. No one knew what he was thinking. Nala actually did not refuse. This meant that she had already tacitly approved Daniel as her future husband. This gave Daniel a headache. I am the only one feeling wronged, Daniel said lightly, feeling helpless in his heart. If it wasn't for Nala, Daniel might have asked the mercenary team to keep going so that they could reach their destination as soon as possible. However, since Nala was also here, Daniel felt obligated to take care of her first. At night, everyone ate simple dry food to feed their hunger. After all, in a place like the haunted forest, where mutated beasts ran amok, igniting the fire was a very unwise choice. The mutated beast was not like any ordinary wild beast. They were not afraid of fire. The bright flames would only draw them into the camp. Nala did not like this kind of compressed food. This was far from the sumptuous breakfasts of the wild lion family. However, Nala did not expect Daniel to journey into the haunted forest so she did not bring any supplies. Seeing Nala frowning as she ate the compressed food, Daniel found it very funny. She was originally the noble young lady of the wild lion family, but now she was eating compressed food that only lower-class mercenaries would eat. Daniel didn't mind it. He even thought that the compressed food here tastes better than the compressed biscuits in his previous life. Episode 61 enemy attack. After night fell, the light in the howling forest became even dimmer. Under such visibility, even mercenaries who were active in the howling forest all year round were not able to move around easily. In a large tent, Daniel and Nala laid down, but away from each other, and almost at the edge of each side of the tent. Even though they were quite some distance apart, their hearts were still uneasy. Nala was very nervous, although they were just lying there. This was the first time she slept with a man in the same room. It was impossible for her not to be nervous as Nala started thinking about Daniel, who was a very masculine and healthy young man. Daniel also started thinking about Nala as she was a beautiful woman lying beside him. Both of their breathing started to become faster. Just then, in the woods around their camp, there was a sudden movement. This movement was very subtle. Even the experienced night mercenaries did not notice it. However, Daniel keenly noticed it. The nether wolf Jean's advantage in the night was displayed to the fullest. It was not only his night vision. Whenever there was any movement, Daniel would immediately be able to detect it. Therefore, Daniel suddenly sat up. This sudden movement shocked Nala, who was already nervous. She had been thinking about what she should do if Daniel did something at night. Daniel was already the son-in-law of the Wild Lion family, and after the engagement ceremony, he would be Nala's fiancé. Nala was still a little nervous and scared about this kind of thing. Because Daniel had made such a big move all of a sudden, Nala's heart tightened. She also sat up crossed her arms and shouted in a low and alert voice. What are you doing? Don't come over. Daniel motioned for Nala not to make any sound. His expression was slightly grave. The unusual movement he heard was not some mutated beast that attacked at night. Daniel heard someone's voice. But Princess Nala had no intention of trying to understand. She thought that Daniel was going to do an indescribable thing and not even let her speak. This was simply the behavior of a beast. Daniel, you can't do this! Nala shouted nervously. She had already prepared herself for this. Daniel looked at Nala as if he was looking at an idiot. He quickly ran out of the tent. As Daniel dashed out of the tent, an attack happened in the mercenary team camp. A crossbow arrow silently shot into the tent in the night of the howling forest, covering the entire camp like a rainstorm. 
In an instant, screams rose and fell in the mercenary horn squad's camp and people died silently under the crossbow arrow. The terrain of the howling forest was complicated. The power of ordinary long-range weapons in this forest was limited. However, this kind of powerful crossbow arrow that was shot from a short distance was very suitable for this kind of terrain. The enemy had come prepared to attack, and they did not make any sound. If it wasn't for Daniel's nether wolf gene having keen insight, they wouldn't have been able to sense danger until they were injured by the crossbow arrows. There were a lot of crossbow arrows, but even though these kind of arrows were convenient and fast, their penetrating power wasn't very strong. Usually, these kinds of crossbow arrows needed to be used together with poison in order to have a strong effect. The mercenaries who were hit by the crossbow arrows hurriedly came to their rescue. They were not in any life-threatening danger, but the unlucky guy who was hit in the vitals died on the spot. The crossbow arrow was shot in front of Daniel's tent and his eyes lit up. In Daniel's eyes, the trajectory of the crossbow arrow suddenly became clear. Daniel used his feet to pick up a wooden stick and shot down all the incoming crossbow arrows. With the enhancement of the netherwolf gene, this level of attack was simply a piece of cake for Daniel. With the sound of metal hitting metal, Daniel quickly knocked down all the crossbow arrows one by one. Daniel's eyes focused. After seeing the human figure, he no longer hesitated. His figure turned into a shadow in the night sky and instantly dashed into the forest. Nala, who finally realized what was going on and no longer cared about the awkwardness from before, put on the inheritance armor and ran out of the tent. But she did not have the netherwolf gene, so she could not move freely at night. After Nala came out, she did not see Daniel and knew she could not call out his name loudly. Instead, she rushed to the chaotic mercenaries. Daniel was stronger than Nala, so she was not worried that something would happen to him. After all, using the crossbow arrows to launch a sneak attack proved that their enemies were not very strong. Otherwise, they would have crushed them. There was no need to use such a despicable method. Such a powerful attack was dangerous and fatal to ordinary mercenaries, but to awaken practitioners, it was just useless harassment. Enemy attack! Quickly set up the steel shield! Everyone, find a place to hide! Did you see who they are? The mercenary team began to take action. These were people who roamed the Howling Forest all year round. Although they rarely fought with others, they were very experienced when it came to dealing with all kinds of mutated beast attacks. Under the command of the leader of the mercenary team, two steel shields that were as tall as half an adult were erected on both sides. These shields were originally prepared to deal with the impact of a large mutated beast. Their defensive abilities were extremely strong. They could also display a relatively strong defense when used to deal with this weak crossbow arrow. The leader of the mercenary team was just about to send someone to check on Daniel and Nala when he saw Nala wearing ancient-looking armor. Princess Nala, this place is dangerous. You should return to the tent, said the leader of the mercenary team anxiously when he saw Nala running to the place where the two parties were fighting. It's fine. They still can't hurt me. What's the situation now? Nala said confidently. As the princess of the wild lion family, even if she only had one gene chain, she was a warrior who did not fear danger. Episode 62 Night Daniel was shuttling back and forth in the forest. The crossbow arrows flew past him, but didn't affect his speed at all. The night vision provided by the netherwolf gene allowed Daniel to clearly determine his path. Soon, Daniel saw a group of people attacking them in the forest. These people were wearing the same dark red battle uniform and were hiding in the forest. They blended into the forest with the night sky, and even the most experienced mercenaries would not be able to guess their location. They all wore strange beast masks on their faces, and a cloak covered their bodies. The mechanical crossbows in their hands continuously released crossbow arrows. Without saying a word, Daniel rushed towards the enemy. He punched someone, shattering that person into pieces. That person didn't even make a sound before falling down silently. 
After Daniel killed one man, he didn't stop and continued to move towards his next target. Daniel's speed was extremely fast. He killed the enemies before they could react. When Daniel arrived in front of the seventh man, his trail was finally exposed. Who is it? Asked the man wearing the beast mask. The mechanical crossbow in his hand instantly aimed at Daniel. He pulled the trigger without hesitation. A few crossbow arrows shot out at close distance, and it shot towards Daniel's face. On the arrowhead of the crossbow arrow, there was also a trace of a strange color. It was obvious they had smeared poison on it in order to increase the lethality of it. Even though Daniel's speed was very fast, he was unable to dodge it. As a few crossbow arrows shot towards him, Daniel reached out his hand to grab it. When the attacker who shot the crossbow arrow saw that Daniel used his hand to grab it, a cold sneer flashed across his eyes. This crossbow arrow was forged from steel, and it had a strong penetrative force at a close distance. Not only could it pierce a human's hand, it could even pierce through a thin steel plate. Moreover, the crossbow was smeared with poison. As long as the crossbow arrow pierced through the skin, it would quickly cause the person who was shot to lose all ability to fight. The veins on Daniel's hand bulged and his joints were visible. He clenched his fist tightly and directly grabbed the crossbow arrow into his hand. After a crisp sound, a few crossbow arrows were broken by Daniel's hand. Daniel's hand was still intact. Seeing the unbelievable scene, the attacker was in shock. He could not believe that the scene he saw with his own eyes was real. These were all fine steel crossbow arrows. How could someone use their hand to catch the penetrating power of the fine steel crossbow arrow and use such brutal force to bend it? The attacker quickly thought about the possibility that there was a kind of power that surpassed mortals in this world. Awakened practitioner. You are an awakened practitioner, the attacker shouted. His voice filled with fear, and the attackers in the other direction became alert. You're too late, said Daniel with a look of intent to kill in his eyes. Hearing their companion shouting, all attackers immediately looked towards Daniel. Although they were the ones who initiated the attack and were prepared, they obviously didn't expect an awakened practitioner to be on the mercenary team's side. For a moment, they couldn't determine Daniel's exact location. They could only estimate the approximate range based on the cries of their companions. When the attackers nearby heard the cries, they immediately formed a fan shape and surrounded him. The group of attackers had more than one level of discipline than the mercenary team. Even if they didn't have the advantage of equipment and sneak attacks, they would still be able to defeat the mercenary team in a head-on clash. Unfortunately, they didn't expect Daniel. No matter what the reason was, Daniel had been targeted by them and they had even threatened him. Therefore, Daniel didn't hold back. Being merciful to his enemies was being cruel to himself. They all wanted to kill him and Daniel was not going to let them go. You just need to leave one alive to ask. Daniel looked at the attackers who were getting closer to him and said to himself, let's kill the rest of them. Daniel dashed out like a bat. Under the night sky, they couldn't see any trace of him. A cold light flashed, and one of the attackers felt a chill on his neck. Blood spurted out, and his life force was quickly drained from his body. Daniel's figure kept moving, and more and more attackers fell to the ground. The most terrifying thing was not the invisible enemy but the fact that they were about to be slaughtered before they could even see what the enemy looked like. Even the well-trained attackers could not help but panic. One by one, they shot the crossbow arrows, and they accidentally landed on their own people. Their miserable cries rose and fell within the forest. Their voices had been overshadowed by the voices of the mercenary team. It's Daniel! The mercenary team immediately felt less pressure on them. Nala had already witnessed Daniel's strength, so when they encountered an enemy attack, Nala didn't panic at all. As long as Daniel was here, he would definitely ensure their safety. But Nala didn't really think that Daniel would be able to launch such an effective counterattack under such harsh conditions. 
As an awakened practitioner, she could not see where the enemy was at night in the Howland Forest, not because she wanted to, but because she lacked the strength to do so. She had a powerful genetic power but could not use it, which made her unhappy. The attack coverage gradually weakened and there was some shouting in the forest. Nala saw the opportunity and wore an ancient inheritance armor. The gene energy exploded and she was like a small sun in the night and rushed into the forest from the mercenary camp. The attackers were in disarray and even if they noticed Nala, they did not have time to care about her. Seeing Nala so brave, even though she was an awakened practitioner and was more powerful than all the mercenaries present, she still arose the courage of the mercenaries. In the surprise attack, a lot of people from the mercenary team were killed and were very angry. Episode 63 Strange the leader of the mercenary team shouted when he saw Nala rushing out, Counterattack! Hearing the order, the mercenary team roared. They picked up their weapons and followed Nala closely into the forest. Because of Daniel, the formation of the attackers was in a disarray, and they felt a lot out of pressure. Nala activated the berserk lion gene to charge. Because of the activation, a small number of fine steel crossbow arrows were unable to cause any hindrance to Nala. Nala did not even need to take any action. When these fine steel crossbow arrows approached her, they were bounced away by the powerful gene energy on her body. The group of mercenaries following behind Nala were full of fighting spirit as they rushed into the forest. The assaulters were stunned by this powerful attack. They did not think that such a small mercenary team had two awakened practitioners. Just the elusive Daniel alone was enough to tire the whole team of attackers, but now another awakened practitioner came out. What shocked these attackers even more was that the shiny gene energy on Nala's body was very familiar to them. This was a berserk lion gene. She's from the wild lion family. Retreat! Let's go! The people from the wild lion family are here! The attackers cried out in panic, and then the whole team started to retreat. Each of the attackers looked as if they had seen a ghost. They ran as fast as they could in the forest, and some of the attackers even threw away the weapons in their hands. Nala, who thought that she would still receive some resistance, was stunned. These people looked like they were well-trained. Why were they so flustered when they heard about the wild lion family? Nala did not have time to think about these questions. She rushed to the back of one of the attackers and knocked him to the ground. Then she chased after the next fleeing target. The mercenaries caught the attacker, who was knocked down by Nala. Daniel moved quickly through the forest and cautiously followed a person with a different face mask. In the dark, only Daniel could see the difference between this person and the others. This person was very agile. Even on the road of escape, he was the fastest and completely left the others behind. Daniel could feel a trace of genetic fluctuation from his body, but was sure that this person was just an ordinary warrior, not an awakened practitioner. Perhaps this person had some special item that carried a gene energy on him. This person quickly left the people behind him. He shuttled back and forth in the forest, as if he was very familiar with this place and he did not stop at all. Daniel followed this person all the way through the forest, turning and turning. After passing through many hidden paths, he finally arrived in front of a huge ghost tree. The man finally stopped and looked around. After making sure no one was following him, he came to the thick ghost tree and squatted down. He dug out layers of leaves from under the thick tree trunk and found a narrow hole that could barely accommodate a person. He slowly crawled in, buried the traces on the hole with the leaves, and then disappeared. Daniel, who was squatting on the tree branch, saw all of this. Daniel was not in a hurry to go down and investigate the situation. He made a mark on the tree and recorded the route before turning back. Nala and the mercenaries were still chasing the attackers who were running away. Nala's strength was enough to deal with the remaining attackers, even though none of them were powerful so Daniel decided to return to the camp. About an hour later, everyone gathered in the open space of the mercenary team's camp. 
A total of seven attackers were tied up tightly by ropes. Their dirty appearance made people feel a little strange. Because of the existence of having two awakened practitioners, the mercenary team turned defeat into victory and completely defeated the attackers. Sir, all of the living enemies that we have captured are here, said the leader of the mercenary team with a gloomy look. Although they didn't lose many of them, a few mercenaries were accidentally shot at by the crossbow arrows and died. The mercenary team did not have a large number of men to begin with, but now that they had lost a few men, the mercenary leader was very unhappy. Because of the losses, I will provide you with some extra beast core, said the mercenary leader, but Daniel had no interest in that. The leaders of this attack had already fled, so they could not get any useful information. Therefore, he might as well have a good sleep. So he walked towards the tent and prepared to rest. A hand suddenly grabbed Daniel's wrist. The soft skin rubbed against Daniel's hand, creating a pleasant feeling. Daniel, don't you want to know who attacked us? Nala frowned slightly. It was hard for her to understand why Daniel was not interested in the reason why these people attacked him, or had no patience at all. I just want to sleep now. Daniel rolled his eyes and grabbed Nala's wrist with his hand, dragging her away from the camp. Captain, I'll leave this to you. If you get any information, just tell me, said Daniel as he was leaving and waved to the mercenary leader. Nala struggled for a while but did not get rid of Daniel's hand. Her face was red. She could only follow him back to the entrance of their tent. What are you doing? Nala said angrily, when Daniel did not hold her hand anymore. You should rest. I will take you to a good place tomorrow, said Daniel. Daniel's lips curled up. Thinking back to the time when he followed the leader of the attackers to the ghost tree, he already had a plan. Where? said Nala, as she was instantly curious, because even Daniel said it was a good place. If you sleep with me, I will tell you, said Daniel in a teasing manner. Episode 64 The Plan The next day, the leader of the mercenary team requested that Daniel and Nala rest for the day. After all, they hadn't rested after being in a battle last night. Even though mercenaries had more combat experience than ordinary people, they were still mortals. Even if the mercenary team were to set off today, they would not be very effective after a night of battle and not sleeping. Daniel agreed. It just so happened that he was going to bring Nala along to explore the hidden entrance today. When they left, Daniel asked Nala to put on the inheritance armor of the Wild Lion family. He did not know what kind of unknown danger there would be in this trip, and he wanted to make sure Nala would be safe. Daniel followed the path according to his memory from last night. Soon, he brought Nala to the very thick ghost tree. Is there anything strange about this place? Nala saw Daniel stop walking and could not help but ask, Follow me and you will know. Daniel shrugged his shoulders and went under the ghost tree. He pried open the thick leaves and revealed the hole hidden under the roots that could barely accommodate one person. Nala was shocked when she saw the hole and opened her eyes wide. There were obvious signs of movement in the soil here, which meant that someone had passed through there not long ago. How did you find it? Nala asked subconsciously. Daniel rolled his eyes and ignored her. He went into the cave and waved at her. Nala saw this and quickly ran over and looked down. However, the cave entrance was dark and she could not see anything. There's nothing at all, Nala said doubtfully, but before she could finish, she felt a kick on her butt. Nala immediately fell down. Daniel! Nala said in a surprised and angry voice. Her voice carried all the way down the hole until it disappeared. It seems that this cave is quite deep. Daniel followed Nala and jumped down the hole. The tunnel was very long, about 20 meters long. After emerging from the tunnel, they were in an empty hall. There were piles of huge boxes, sealed with tarpaulin in the hall making the entire hall look like a maze. Nala looked up at the hall and was stunned for a moment. Daniel was also shocked. 
There was actually such a large space under the howling forest. Building this place required a lot of resources. What was even more unbelievable was that no one in the Roaring Tribe knew that someone had built such a huge project in the Howling Forest. What is this place? Nala stared blankly at the roof of the hall that was more than 10 meters tall. A strange look flashed across her eyes. There is actually such a place in the Howling Forest. I have a feeling that Father might know something. Don't worry about what this place is. Daniel looked around and pulled Nala behind him with one hand, he said in a serious tone, take care of yourself first. At this, Nala came back to her senses and found that a group of people wearing ghost masks and dark cloaks had gathered around the two of them. They were holding what was now no longer the steel crossbow from before, but a mechanical heavy crossbow that could barely be lifted with both hands. Each time the mechanical heavy crossbow was fired, it would need to reinstall a crossbow arrow. The firing efficiency was very low, but the power of this heavy crossbow was something that even an awakened practitioner did not dare to underestimate. This kind of heavy mechanical crossbow could directly pierce through the steel shield. Now, there were a total of six or seven heavy mechanical crossbows aimed at Daniel and Nala. Daniel was confident that he could use his speed to avoid the heavy crossbow, but Nala wouldn't be so lucky. Dear guests, you have come from afar. It has been hard on you. How about you stay and have a cup of tea? A voice came from behind the attackers. Hearing this voice, the attackers made way for a path. A figure slowly approached in front of Daniel and Nala. The owner of this voice was a man in his 30s. He was wearing a dark red robe, so Daniel could not see his body clearly. Daniel did not know this person, and neither did Nala. However, judging from his attire and the faint fluctuations of the gene energy on his body, they could guess his identity. Are you from the Crimson Dragon family? Nala asked directly. Awakened practitioners didn't have many people in the Roaring Tribe. Plus, the dark red robe he wore was exactly the same as the robe of the Crimson Dragon family. However, there was no mark on it. You are very smart. Unfortunately, sometimes this isn't a good thing. He said with a smile as he looked at Daniel and Nala. All three major families have a prohibition that no one is allowed to step into the Howling Forest. Your Crimson Dragon family has secretly built such a huge underground base here? What conspiracy do you have? Asked Nala. The Howling Forest was listed as a forbidden area by the three families. Although the mercenaries of the Roaring Tribe were not prohibited from entering, the people of the three families were not allowed to enter. Not only did awakened practitioners from the Crimson Dragon family appear here, but they had also built a huge base under the Howling Forest. The Wild Lion family did not know anything about it. This kind of secretive behavior was the scariest. This is not something you should know. The Patriarch has set up a long-term plan for 12 years for this place. The plan will be completed soon. Princess Nala is lucky to see the success of this great plan before she dies. I'm very honored. The expression on the awakened practitioner's face of the Crimson Dragon family started to show madness and ferociousness. Everyone could feel his excitement. I have stayed in this underground base for several years just to witness the success of this crazy plan with my own eyes. Do you know how grand the chief's goal is? He wants the Shadow Furious Dragon for himself. This huge monster can destroy the Roaring Tribe and will soon be under the command of the Crimson Dragon family. All the monsters will kneel at the feet of Crimson Dragon family and bow their heads in submission. Even you will belong to Lord Young of the Crimson Dragon family. Bunch of lunatics, Nala frowned and said. Her eyes were fixed on the awakened practitioner from the Crimson Dragon family. Episode 65 One Slap As the princess of the Wild Lion family, Nala had never been humiliated like this. The fact that he dared to say such words that challenged the dignity of the Wild Lion family proved that the Crimson Dragon family had the confidence to fight against the two major families. 
Otherwise, the Crimson Dragon family wouldn't dare to break the balance. Nala had never seen this awakened practitioner before. He must have been secretly arranged by the Crimson Dragon family and never exposed to the public. The Crimson Dragon family had gone crazy. Luckily, Daniel broke the prohibition and brought Nala to the Howling Forest. Otherwise, everyone in the Roaring Tribe would have been kept in the dark and never known this existed. I will go back and tell my father that the Crimson Dragon family will face the true fury of the Wild Lion family. Nala gritted her teeth and shouted, You are too naive. Do you think you can walk out of here? The awakened practitioner of the Crimson Dragon family let out a wild laugh. After that, his eyes fell upon Nala, revealing a look of evil. He then slowly walked towards Daniel and Nala. You only have one gene chain, and you dare to run around? Anyways, once the plan succeeds, the Wild Lion family will no longer exist. Why don't you marry me now? I can guarantee your survival in the future. His words made Nala's face turn red. If it wasn't for Daniel holding her back, Nala would have tried to attack him. Just as the awakened practitioner of the Crimson Dragon family was about to step in front of Nala, Daniel took a step forward and blocked his path. You'd better worry about your own survival, Daniel said faintly. His tone was filled with an intent to kill. He looked at the awakened practitioner of the Crimson Dragon family coldly. The awakened practitioner from the Crimson Dragon family noticed the young man who looked like a guard in front of Nala. He casually looked at him, but he didn't notice any genetic fluctuation coming from Daniel's body. Who are you? Get lost. The awakened practitioner from the Crimson Dragon family stared at him and slapped him. This slap carried some gene energy with it. If he were to hit Daniel and not break his neck, Daniel would still lose his combat strength. Of course, this was only based on the fact that Daniel was just an ordinary guard. Was Daniel an ordinary guard? No. Daniel had no intention of dodging, and he used his arm to block the attack. He borrowed the strength of the awakened practitioner from the Crimson Dragon family and slapped him back. A clear, crisp sound echoed in the hall. The awakened practitioner from the Crimson Dragon family felt as if his face had been hit by a huge iron plate. A huge force hit his face, causing him to lose his balance and fly away. He fell heavily to the ground, and the attackers in the hall of the underground base fell into a dead silence. Although these attackers were wearing ghost masks, they were completely shocked, judging from the look in their eyes. All the attackers turned to look at the awakened practitioner from the Crimson Dragon family. He was the real awakened practitioner. Not only was he powerful, but he also had an important position in the Crimson Dragon family. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been the leader of the base. How was he sent flying by a seemingly weak intruder just like that? When the attackers looked at Daniel, a look of fear appeared in their eyes. If Daniel could send the awakened practitioner flying with a slap, he must be very strong. This kind of strength was like a nightmare to them. Daniel, beat him to death, Nala said as she clenched her fist behind Daniel and cheered him on. Nala was not surprised how Daniel had sent the awakened practitioner flying. Daniel could even kill an awakened practitioner who had five gene chains. Nala could not believe Daniel's strength. It seemed like Daniel was just a weak awakened practitioner. However, Daniel's terrifying strength and the unfathomable strength of the gene energy had given him the strength to beat up three gene chains and challenge the awakened practitioner. Challenging someone who had a higher cultivation base than him was a very rare thing amongst an awakened practitioner. If the three great families were to focus on nurturing the genus disciples, even with the support of the family's resources, as well as the matching genetic equipment and weapons, they could barely cross one gene chain to challenge some ordinary awakened practitioner. If Daniel were to kill a five gene chain awakened practitioner, even if he used his genetic equipment and weapon, he would definitely create a miracle. The energy waves emitted from the awakened practitioner's body were only of a three gene chain. He had yet to reach the level of the four gene chains. The awakened practitioner from the Crimson Dragon family got up from the ground. One side of his face was swollen, 
and his face was slightly twisted due to his extreme anger. The gene energy on his body suddenly erupted, and tiny dark red scales emerged on his body. It was as if he was wearing a layer of red blood armor. His entire body was like a cannonball as he rushed towards Daniel. This was the result of the awakening of the Crimson Dragon's gene. The Crimson Dragon's gene was one of the top ancestral genes, and after being activated, scales would appear on the awakened practitioner's body, which could greatly increase the strength of his body. His charge was very fierce. When he was running, the steel floor underneath his feet was vibrating, and the sound of breaking wind could be heard from beside him. Daniel threw a gene extraction at him, adding to his bloodthirsty berserk gene. At the same time, Daniel stomped hard on the steel floor, leaving a deep footprint. Without any fear, he rushed towards the awakened practitioner who had activated the Crimson Dragon's gene. Both of them were extremely fast, like two giant dinosaurs colliding with each other. Even so, Daniel didn't intend to activate the gene energy with such a ferocious attack. He chose to use his pure physical strength to collide with the awakened practitioner, who had activated the Crimson Dragon's gene. The two of them collided fiercely, producing a dull sound like two heavy metals colliding together. It formed a layer of faint ripples in the air. Some of the weaker attackers had difficulty breathing from the shock. They could not help but retreat, and their eyes had a look of pain in them. Daniel only relied on his physical body to face the awakened practitioner who had activated the Crimson Dragon's gene, and he still didn't seem to be at a disadvantage. Episode 66 Daniel's Strength After a violent collision, the awakened practitioner felt a strong force. He couldn't help but retreat. The awakened practitioner took more than 10 steps back before he stopped. The awakened practitioner had to activate the Crimson Dragon's gene to resist this huge force. His powerful force shocked the awakened practitioner. He looked at Daniel, who had become somewhat fearful. The awakened practitioner had three perfect gene chains. His fourth gene chain would be perfected in a short period of time. Even in the Crimson Dragon family, the awakened practitioner was still a very strong person. The Crimson Dragon's gene wasn't any weaker than a top-tier ancestral gene, and it was very helpful to the awakened practitioner's strength. Under such a condition, the battle between him and Daniel had made him realize that his strength was actually weaker than his. Who are you? When did the Wild Lion family produce such an expert? The awakened practitioner from the Crimson Dragon family stared at Daniel with a serious expression. Before this, he thought that Daniel was just a guard protecting Princess Nala. But judging from the current situation, Daniel's identity was not that simple. No matter how strong the Wild Lion family was, it was impossible for them to let such an expert be their guard. Under the impact of this attack, the awakened practitioner kept retreating. Daniel, on the other hand, had a relaxed look on his face. Even when faced with such an intense attack, he still didn't move an inch. Exactly how powerful is his strength? Nala saw that the awakened practitioner was constantly being pushed back by Daniel, and she was beginning to have some doubts in her mind. Ever since Nala knew Daniel, she had never seen him lose in terms of strength. You don't deserve to know, Daniel said. Then he rushed towards the awakened practitioner again. You are going too far. The awakened practitioner instantly felt very angry. He had always been respected in the Crimson Dragon family and had never been insulted like this before. The awakened practitioner roared out wildly. His five fingers began to bend. The gene energy in his hands started to surge, and he grabbed at Daniel. Crimson Dragon Bite! The gene energy that was condensed in his hand gradually formed a huge mouth, and it bit towards Daniel. Daniel smiled. He had no intention of dodging him. Go straight for the dragon. There was still no gene energy erupting from Daniel. This fist technique Daniel used was a very common basic fist technique. Basic fist technique? Daniel's too arrogant. The awakened practitioner's crimson dragon bite is very powerful. His arm is going to break. These snide comments came from the attackers on the side who saw Daniel's attack. 
No matter how strong Daniel was, he couldn't withstand the awakened practitioner's genetic ability. Just then, both of their fists collided. The crimson dragon bite had devoured Daniel's entire arm. Daniel's arm was about to be bitten off by the crimson dragon bite. Without any sign, a gene energy erupted and suddenly burst out of Daniel's arm. With a dull sound, the awakened practitioner's arm exploded and blood spattered everywhere. After that, the crimson dragon bite was scattered in the air. The awakened practitioner let out a miserable cry. The pain coming from his arm made him lose consciousness. Toppling mountains and seas, Daniel took advantage of the victory to attack. He struck the awakened practitioner's chest with his hand. The awakened practitioner from the Crimson Dragon family could feel his internal organs trembling. He spit out a mouthful of blood and was sent flying away. The attackers panicked when they saw the awakened practitioner vomiting blood and being seriously injured. One of them pulled the trigger and a heavy ballista arrow shot out from the heavy mechanical crossbow. The attackers fired the heavy ballista arrow in their hands one after another, and an extremely penetrative and fast crossbow arrow shot from all directions at Daniel. Cover your ears, Daniel shouted. His muscles on his abdomen began to bulge, and a wave of genetic energy came from within his body. Nala did not know what Daniel wanted to do, but out of trust to him, she immediately covered her ears. Roar of the Nether. A roar like that of a giant beast erupted from Daniel's mouth. This sound wave had a strong penetrating ability. A storm surrounded Daniel's body, causing ripples to appear in the air. The heavy ballista arrows that shot towards Daniel in all directions lost their offensive power due to the violent surge of the storm. Before they could even touch Daniel, they had lost all of their strength, and the heavy ballista arrows fell to the ground one after another. The attackers who fired the heavy ballista arrows could not withstand such a powerful roar. The attackers covered their ears in pain. They were in a trance, and their screams kept ringing out. This was the only genetic ability that Daniel could use on his own accord, and it was a very rare spiritual genetic ability. Even if he had a strong physique, but didn't have a strong spirit, he would still be seriously injured by Daniel's roar of the nether. The attackers weren't awakened practitioners after all. They had no way to increase their spiritual force. This roar of the nether had almost made them lose all their combat strength. Some of the attackers had blood oozing out from under their masks. It was obvious that they could not withstand Daniel's roar of the nether. Nala first covered her ears under Daniel's warning, but the penetration of the roar of the nether was too strong. Even Nala felt dizzy from the shock. After finishing off the attackers, Daniel pulled the awakened practitioner, who had lost all of his combat power, up from the ground. I think you should be happy to have a good talk with us now. Daniel sneered at the awakened practitioner. You must have a big plan to build such a huge base under the Howling Forest. Can you share your plan with us? The awakened practitioner was in a daze, but when he heard Daniel's words, he became alert and even wanted to fight back. Daniel gave him a few loud slaps without any hesitation. The awakened practitioner had intentions to kill him from the beginning, and Daniel would not pity such a person. Episode 67 Shadow Furious Dragon After Daniel lectured the awakened practitioner for a while, the awakened practitioner, who had been beaten beyond recognition, was finally subdued by Daniel with his fist. The awakened practitioner's name was Jacob, and he was an elder of the Crimson Dragon family. He was sent by the Crimson Dragon family to the Howling Forest for a mission. When the mission was completed, he would be promoted to a true elder of the Crimson Dragon family. Daniel was very curious about what kind of secret mission it was. After Jacob finished speaking, Daniel and Nala pondered for a long time before they understood what Jacob had told them. There was a very strange rumor in the Mercenary Association. There was a king in the Howling Forest called the Shadow Furious Dragon. It was said that this huge, mutated beast possessed a very powerful strength. 
Even the patriarchs of the three great families might not be able to kill it. The Shadow Furious Dragon could easily destroy the entire Roaring Tribe. It was the king of the Howling Forest, and it had no natural enemies. Of course, this was only a rumor among the mercenaries. No one had actually seen what the Shadow Furious Dragon even looked like. Because the mercenaries were only active at the periphery of the Howling Forest, no one dared to go into the depths of the Howling Forest to see if it was true. An awakened practitioner, who once had three gene chains, died in the Howling Forest, so ordinary mercenaries did not dare go in. Wouldn't that be courting death? Therefore, the Shadow Furious Dragon had always been a rumor. However, Jacob told them that the Shadow Furious Dragon did exist, and the Crimson Dragon's family plan in the Howling Forest was related to the Shadow Furious Dragon. Although the Crimson Dragon's gene is only one gene, this gene still has a trace of the bloodline power of the dragon race. If we use the special performance of the Crimson Dragon's gene, the Crimson Dragon family can slowly control the Shadow Furious Dragon through the formation. Jacob said weakly, The original purpose of this base is to control the Shadow Furious Dragon. Even if the Berserk Lion and the Ferocious Tiger families join forces with the three families, they wouldn't be able to stop the rise of the Shadow Furious Dragon and the Crimson Dragon family. Where is the Shadow Furious Dragon? Daniel asked. What do you want to do? It's too late. The Shadow Furious Dragon's control plan has already reached the final step. Now that the Shadow Furious Dragon is in its dormant state, you won't be able to do anything. There was a hint of ridicule in Jacob's tone. The Crimson Dragon family had been preparing for the Shadow Furious Dragon's control plan for many years. For this reason, in order not to expose the Crimson Dragon family's plan in the Howling Forest, they even killed the three gene chain awakened practitioner who had accidentally entered the base. After that, Daniel slapped Jacob again. Cut the crap. Where is the Shadow Furious Dragon? Daniel said in an unfriendly tone. Perhaps Jacob was afraid of being beaten up by Daniel, but he told him the location of the Shadow Furious Dragon. Let's go back to the family and tell father about this. Nala said to Daniel as she was nervous what she heard from Jacob. It's too late. We need to think of a way to solve this problem, Daniel said, his eyes revealing a trace of excitement. The Shadow Furious Dragon was in its dormant state. This was a good opportunity for the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon to fuse with its genes, and he did not want to give up this opportunity. If he woke up the Shadow Furious Dragon, or if he told Samson about this news, Daniel was afraid that he would not have the chance to come in contact with the Shadow Furious Dragon. Although his strength was good, it would be insignificant in front of the real Five Gene Chain Awakened Practitioner. If he missed this opportunity and tried to perfect the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon Gene, he didn't know how long he would have to wait. Therefore, even if the risk was huge, Daniel still had to go. If he did not take the risk, he would not gain anything. Nala saw that she could not convince Daniel, and there was no other way. She would definitely not go back alone. She had already followed Daniel all the way here, so she could not go back easily. After settling Jacob down, Daniel brought Nala along the route that he had told them to take. In the hall, the attackers who surrounded them were all the forces of the entire base. All the obstacles they encountered along the way were easily taken care of by Daniel. About ten minutes later, Daniel and Nala arrived in front of a huge mechanical door. After dealing with the guards easily, Daniel pressed the button. The huge mechanical door, which was more than ten meters tall, let out a roar and slowly opened. As soon as the door opened, a cold black gas spread out from the crack in the door. What a strong gene energy fluctuation! Daniel instantly felt the gene energy within the black gas. This was a gene energy that he had never felt before. It was filled with the aura of defeat and evil causing people to feel nauseous. Come, let's go in and take a look, said Daniel as he narrowed. He was very cautious. He tensed up and carefully entered the protective door. The black gas inside the defensive door became even thicker. 
That black gas almost filled the entire space. The cold, damp air made Nala involuntarily take a few steps closer to Daniel. It was as if she had entered a cold graveyard without a trace of life. A trace of dark light flashed in Daniel's eyes. Through the layers of black gas, Daniel saw a huge thing. This creature was lying on the ground. Its body was about 10 meters long and was full of holes that looked like volcanic caves. These holes continuously spewed out black gas. It was like a rock, looking very hard, and its defensive ability was extremely strong. The creature's entire body was dark gray, and its head was huge and triangular. Instead of calling it a dragon, it looked more like a giant weird lizard. This was also a type of dragon-like mutated beast. It was clear that this monster's size, strength, and level were all stronger than all monsters Daniel had seen so far. Its huge body gave off an oppressive feeling that made people feel afraid. Nala finally saw the complete creature in front of her. She could not help but widen her eyes and revealed a very shocked expression. Although her perception was not as sharp as Daniel's, she could still feel the pressure coming from the giant creature in front of her. The level and strength of this creature was something that exceeded Nala's understanding. Gene extraction. Daniel did not hesitate and directly used the gene extraction on the Shadow Furious Dragon. A wave of genetic power flowed into Daniel's body, and the improvement in the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene immediately increased. Episode 68 Thought Daniel's luck was pretty good. He had successfully extracted the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene in one go, and the improvement of the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene had greatly increased. When he extracted the awakened practitioner from the Crimson Dragon family, there was no improvement of that Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene. It was probably because the purity of the Crimson Dragon's gene was too weak. It was the same situation when Daniel extracted John's Sandwolf gene. If the talent of the genes was not pure, the efficiency of the extraction would be very low. On the contrary, when Daniel was extracting the genes from the Bloodthirsty Furious Ant and the Shadow Furious Dragon, the improvement of his genes was extremely fast. Looks like I can only increase my strength faster by coming into contact with the powerful mutated beast, Daniel thought to himself. He did not stop the gene extraction. The energy he had stored earlier was being consumed at a rapid rate. Even so, Daniel's progress was still very slow. After all, Daniel didn't have enough intermediate energy. Now, he could only rely on the lowered level gene extraction and the success rate was very low. At this rate, even if Daniel used up all his energy, he might not be able to complete the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene. He had to think of a way. Daniel frowned slightly. He looked at this huge being that could still bring great problems to people even if it was in a deep sleep. Suddenly, he thought of an idea that even he himself felt was terrifying. The success rate of a simple low-level gene extraction was too low. However, there was one method that could greatly increase the success rate of a gene extraction, and that was to obtain the Shadow Furious Dragon's blood. It was the same for humans, but obtaining the blood of others would always make them feel strange. Even if Daniel didn't care about other people's judgment, the biggest secret about Daniel's body could also be exposed. This was not worth it. However, obtaining the blood of the mutated beast was no big deal. The blood of many mutated beasts were common raw materials. The more powerful the mutated beast was, the more precious its blood would be. For example, although the blood of the bloodthirsty furious ant was not valuable, it could be used as the raw material to brew a low-grade wine. This kind of wine was the favorite drink of the mercenaries. The blood of higher-grade mutated beasts could be used to make some gene drug, and some could be used to make some genetic weapon. Daniel's gene extraction ability was limited. The higher the level of the gene, the lower probability of extracting it. Although the Shadow Furious Dragon was in a deep sleep, Daniel could still feel the enormous pressure it brought. 
Under the enhancement of the netherwolf gene, this kind of pressure was clearly transmitted to Daniel. I never thought that this Shadow Furious Dragon really existed. What kind of strength does it have? Is it really as terrifying as the rumors say? Can it easily destroy the Roaring Tribe? Daniel saw that the Shadow Furious Dragon was in a deep slumber and did not make any movements. Nala's courage increased as she took two steps closer and opened her eyes wide to carefully observe the Shadow Furious Dragon as she muttered to herself, We will know whether or not it is so terrifying until we try. As if answering Nala's question, Daniel slowly walked to the side of the Shadow Furious Dragon. The black gas that was produced from the Shadow Furious Dragon seemed to have its own consciousness. Sensing Daniel's approach, it all swept towards him. This black gas was more like an octopus without a physical body. Its many tentacles stretched out, wanting to wrap around Daniel's body. Daniel, be careful, Nala said as she saw this black gas could actually move on its own. What Daniel said seemed to mean that he wanted to fight the Shadow Furious Dragon. Nala stared at Daniel. Black gas spread out from the Shadow Furious Dragon's body. The black gas surrounded Daniel, but could not get close to him. Daniel was now like a ray of light, walking in the darkness. No matter where he went, the black gas around him would dissipate, leaving a clean circular space. It was as if the black gas was afraid of Daniel. Seeing this, Nala was somewhat confused. After all, she did not even feel a trace of the gene energy fluctuation. Without activating his genetic talent, Daniel miraculously was able to make these black gases not even dare to approach him. Daniel walked to the side of the Shadow Furious Dragon and sized up its thick skin. Daniel stretched out his hand and touched the skin of the Shadow Furious Dragon. Its skin felt hard, as if he had touched a piece of rock. This was enough to prove that the grade of the Shadow Furious Dragon was far higher than all the mutated beasts Daniel had seen so far. Daniel, what do you want? Said Nala in a worried tone when she saw what Daniel was doing. She had just calmed down, but now became anxious again. Daniel did not respond. His eyes were focused on the Shadow Furious Dragon. Daniel's eyes flashed with a gloomy light. He found a weak spot on the surface of the Shadow Furious Dragon. The gene energy was slowly activated from his body. Daniel clenched his fist and pressed his feet against the ground with force. Then he half squatted and used his waist to exert force. Daniel shouted loudly. He circulated all the strength in his body and gathered the gene energy at a point on his fist. He aimed at the weak spot on the Shadow Furious Dragon's skin and hit hard. Nala saw Daniel's action and immediately shouted. His fist carried a strong gene energy and a huge force as it ruthlessly smashed into the Shadow Furious Dragon's skin. Even a powerful person with five gene chains might not be able to withstand Daniel's strength without using the gene energy, let alone a Shadow Furious Dragon with a weak spot on its skin. This punch shattered the Shadow Furious Dragon's rock-hard skin. Dark red blood instantly sprayed out from the spot where Daniel had punched. After Daniel broke the Shadow Furious Dragon's skin, he would definitely awaken it. Fear appeared in Nala's eyes as she covered her face in despair. She did not even dare to look at the scene in front of her. Even though Daniel's powerful punch had injured its skin, the Shadow Furious Dragon showed no signs of waking up. It didn't even make a sound. They didn't know whether it was because the Crimson Dragon family had prepared too well or because the Shadow Furious Dragon was too powerful. Daniel frowned. It seemed like awakening the Shadow Furious Dragon was not as easy as he had imagined. However, he had achieved his goal. Without awakening the Shadow Furious Dragon, it would be more convenient for Daniel to extract the Shadow Furious Dragon's gene. Episode 69 The Awakened Shadow Furious Dragon Without saying another word, Daniel laid down on the Shadow Furious Dragon's wound and continued to devour the blood that was gushing out. Compared to the Shadow Furious Dragon's huge body, 
This small wound was probably the same as a human being bitten by a mosquito. If it wasn't paying attention, it wouldn't even be able to feel it. Nala saw how daring Daniel was and thought, he really is a madman. No normal person would risk waking the Shadow Furious Dragon just to drink some blood. This could even threaten the entire Roaring Tribe. In Nala's eyes, Daniel's actions were of a madman, and this was too dangerous. As the blood of the Shadow Furious Dragon kept flowing into his mouth, a burning sensation that felt like a flame shot straight down his throat, all the way to his chest and abdomen. It was as if a ball of fire was burning fiercely in Daniel's body. Daniel's face revealed a painful expression, but his eyes were flashing with wild joy. After he drank the Shadow Furious Dragon's blood, the improvement of the third Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene chain was increasing rapidly. The speed was much faster than the pure extraction of genes, and it was as if an accelerator had been turned on. With the powerful body and recovery ability of a mutated beast at the level of the Shadow Furious Dragon, the wounds that Daniel had made with all his strength should heal very quickly. But for now, Daniel was sticking to the wound of the Shadow Furious Dragon, continuously swallowing its blood. In addition, the black aura on the Shadow Furious Dragon was very afraid of Daniel. Even if Daniel was absorbing the blood, the black aura could only surround him and it didn't dare to approach him. The progress of the gene improvement was increasing rapidly. Daniel's skin was emitting a faint red color, as if there was a very pure energy swimming in his body. Daniel stayed at the wound of the Shadow Furious Dragon for a few minutes. He drank a lot of blood. The continuous loss of blood finally caused the sleeping Shadow Furious Dragon to have a slight movement. A huge, inverted triangle-shaped dragon head was slightly shaking. Immediately, there was an ear-piercing sound of friction. A thick, black smoke came out of the Shadow Furious Dragon's nostrils and exploded into the air. This smoke had a strong corrosive property and was enough to show that the strength of this Shadow Furious Dragon was indeed very terrifying. Princess Nala was so scared that her face turned pale. Her entire body seemed to be frozen, and she did not dare to move. Her legs were trembling. She silently stood where she was and watched Daniel continue to devour. As the progress was about to be completed, the Shadow Furious Dragon seemed to feel that its power was being stolen by a thief. Its tightly shut eyes suddenly opened, and its lantern-like eyes slowly moved to see Daniel lying beside it and Nala, who was standing not far away with a stiff body. An ancient roar came out of the Shadow Furious Dragon's mouth, and a thick black gas was emitted along with a huge storm. The entire underground base seemed to shake because of this roar. A wild and violent hurricane also stirred up around the Shadow Furious Dragon's body. It immediately surged towards its surrounding, since Nala's body was already stiff, this wild wind swept her away. Daniel did not have any intention of retreating. His gene was more than 90% complete. If Daniel was given another minute, he would be able to complete the third Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene. Daniel grabbed tightly onto the Shadow Furious Dragon's skin. He stuck onto the Shadow Furious Dragon's skin like a leech, and no matter how strong the wind was, it would not be able to blow him away. When the Shadow Furious Dragon saw that Daniel was still on its body, it instantly stood up. Its huge body was like a small mountain, occupying the cage that imprisoned it. The Shadow Furious Dragon was a high-grade mutated beast. It was different from a lower-grade monster like a bloodthirsty furious ant. Compared to ordinary beasts, those low-level beasts were only slightly stronger and had evolved into some other abilities. Other than that, there was no difference between a lower level beast and an ordinary beast. As for the Shadow Furious Dragon, it already had a basic intelligence. Its rich and high level genes allowed the Shadow Furious Dragon to have powerful strength, and at the same time, it also had a human intelligence. This was the most terrifying part of the Shadow Furious Dragon. 
If it only had power, it wouldn't be able to threaten the Roaring Tribe, which had the support of the three big families. The most important thing was that the intelligence of the Shadow Furious Dragon wasn't any weaker than that of humans. Daniel was lying on top of the Shadow Furious Dragon. Although the Shadow Furious Dragon had awakened, Daniel was in a blind spot. The Shadow Furious Dragon could see Daniel, but due to the limitation of its size, it was unable to catch Daniel. The Shadow Furious Dragon tried to release a large amount of black gas containing the gene energy to drive Daniel away, but it was not sure if he carried a special item with him, so a large amount of black gas could not get close and only surrounded him. As Daniel's third gene tain was about to be completed, the Shadow Furious Dragon seemed to have sensed the terrifying aura coming from Daniel's body. Its huge eyes revealed a trace of ferociousness. Its feet left deep footprints in the steel floor of the room, and it crashed into the nearest steel wall in the room. This clearly showed that the Shadow Furious Dragon had intelligence. Although it could not reach Daniel, it wanted to use the powerful impact to squeeze Daniel to death. The Shadow Furious Dragon violently crashed into the steel wall, causing the extremely hard wall to cave in and crack. The underground base that the Crimson Dragon family had built at a huge price was as fragile as a paper shell compared to the enormous strength of the Shadow Furious Dragon. The tremendous force crashed into Daniel's body. Even though Daniel's strength was extraordinary, it was still impossible for him to compare it to the giant-like Shadow Furious Dragon. Daniel's body was injured from the impact. His skin was seriously injured, and a few of his bones were broken. Daniel fell from the Shadow Furious Dragon's body and landed heavily on the ground. When the Shadow Furious Dragon saw that Daniel had finally fallen, it immediately prepared to attack him. The Shadow Furious Dragon's bloody mouth could completely devour Daniel. It didn't even need to chew. But when the Shadow Furious Dragon was about to bite Daniel, it seemed to feel something, and its movements immediately stopped. Daniel's eyes were emitting a frighteningly scarlet light, and an incomparable violent aura was being emitted from his body. Episode 70 The Dragon's Might Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon Gene Progress, 100%. Skill Endowed, Frenzy Dragon Killing Fist. Skill Endowed, Dragon's Might. Under Daniel's desperate absorption, he finally perfected the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon's gene before the Shadow Furious Dragon could knock him off its body. Once the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon's gene was perfected, it immediately showed its uniqueness and strength. Putting aside the huge increase of attributes brought by the complete Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene, the complete gene chain alone gave Daniel two skills. This was enough to prove that the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene was definitely a top-tier gene. Even top-tier genes, like the Crimson Dragon, the Ferocious Tiger, and the Berserk Lion did not have such an effect. After the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene was perfected, it gave Daniel two genetic ability genes. This was something Daniel had never heard of before. This was absolutely shocking. Daniel used his body to resist the violent force of the Shadow Furious Dragon. He was violently smashed into the steel wall, and a few of his bones seemed to have broken. The terrifying force contained in the Shadow Furious Dragon's huge body was far greater than the powerful attack unleashed by the Awakened Practitioner who had five gene chains. When Daniel fought against John's genetic ability, he had never suffered such a huge injury. However, Daniel made a prompt decision and used the dragon's might skill that was given to him by the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene. A vast and violent pressure surged out from Daniel's body. A bloodthirsty red light exploded in Daniel's eyes. The ferocious and majestic aura made the Shadow Furious Dragon become fearful. It was so afraid that the Shadow Furious Dragon didn't dare do anything to Daniel. The Shadow Furious Dragon could not understand why Daniel's body would emit such a terrifying feeling. This kind of fear wasn't something it could resist with its own will. It was the kind of fear that originated from its bloodline. 
It had completely imprinted into its soul. Scram, Daniel shouted. Daniel's voice was like thunder from the nine heavens. The fear in the Shadow Furious Dragon's eyes could no longer be concealed. The Shadow Furious Dragon let out a low, non-threatening roar at Daniel. It was a type of roar like when it encountered an enemy it could not fight. The Shadow Furious Dragon's huge foot stepped on the steel floor, but it didn't step on Daniel's body. It slowly took a step back since it was scared. After letting out a few low growls, the Shadow Furious Dragon's figure became further and further away from Daniel. Finally, after reaching a safe distance, the Shadow Furious Dragon turned around and ran away. It did not even look at Nala, who was slowly getting up. It did not have any attachment to this place and left without looking back. After waiting for a long time for the Shadow Furious Dragon to leave, Nala nervously came to Daniel's side. She saw that his body was full of wounds and blood was flowing nonstop. Her face revealed a very nervous expression. Daniel, are you all right? Asked Nala as she came to Daniel's side and helped him up. I'm fine. It's quite powerful, said Daniel as he wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and smiled awkwardly. Why did you wake up the Shadow Furious Dragon? Do you know what kind of consequences this will bring? Nala said scoldingly. After the Shadow Furious Dragon woke up, the ferocious aura on its body made Nala tremble uncontrollably. She had never seen such a powerful creature. If such a violent mutated beast escaped from this cage-like underground base, who knew what kind of storm it would stir up? The roaring tribe that was closest to the howling forest would definitely be impacted. The situation might even become like the rumors among mercenaries. The Shadow Furious Dragon would destroy the entire Roaring Tribe. The power of the Shadow Furious Dragon could cause the entire Roaring Tribe to be plunged into misery and suffering, and was not something that an awakened practitioner, who had five gene chains, could defend against. Do you think your father knows? Daniel couldn't help but to ask Nala, who appeared to be very angry. The Crimson Dragon family has built such a huge underground base in the Howling Forest. The other two families will receive the news. Nala was stunned when she heard Daniel's words. She wanted to refute him. You underestimate your father. Otherwise, why would he reveal my whereabouts to you? And why did he ask you to bring the inheritance armor? All of this has a purpose. Nala looked cute with a blank face, and Daniel couldn't help but rub her nose and continue. Besides, the three big families of the Rowing tribe have existed for such a long time. You have only seen a part of their foundation. Just the Crimson Dragon family alone is enough to build a base and imprison the legendary Shadow Furious Dragon that could destroy the Roaring Tribe. The other two families will have their hidden trump cards. After Daniel's analysis, Nala revealed a look of realization. The despair she felt had now been greatly lifted. The three great families restricted each other, and at the same time, they also cooperated with each other. The strength of each family was constantly increasing. The Roaring Tribe had existed in the land of the mutated beasts for such a long time that they must have some strength. Even if they really didn't have any trump cards, with the combined strength of the three patriarchs of the three major families who had five gene chains, they could definitely resist the Shadow Furious Dragon and protect the peace of the Roaring Tribe. The rumor that the Shadow Furious Dragon could destroy the Roaring Tribe was just a rumor spread by some unknown mercenaries. Of course, there was also a possibility that the Crimson Dragon family was adding fuel to the fire behind the scenes in order for their plan to proceed smoothly in the Howling Forest. It's not a huge loss to awaken the Shadow Furious Dragon. On the contrary, if the Shadow Furious Dragon is allowed to stay here and be controlled by the Crimson Dragon family using a secret technique, it would be very beneficial. As he was explaining everything, Daniel took the healing gene medicine from Nala's hand and swallowed it. The Crimson Dragon family has added a Shadow Furious Dragon. Such a combination is more than enough to destroy the Roaring Tribe. At that time, the Roaring Tribe might have to change its name, and you'll have to stay with the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family. Daniel's teasing made Nala's face turn red, and she stared at Daniel with her eyes wide open. If she didn't know that Daniel had some serious injuries, she would have definitely hit him. Then what should we do now? 
asked Nala after she calmed down and stared at Daniel. This is such a big base, we can get a lot of benefits from it, said Daniel as his eyes lit up. Episode 71, Wild Beast Attack The mercenaries who were resting in the howling forest were on high alert. Without Nala and Daniel in the group, they became more cautious, even though they were the team that escorted the two of them. After the sneak attack last night, the mercenaries were extremely nervous because of a few of their compatriots were killed. Some of them were slightly injured. The steel crossbow arrow was smeared with poison, making the mercenaries who were hit by the crossbow arrow unable to move today. Boss, what do you think those two Master Awakened practitioners went to do? They are not familiar with the geography of the Howling Forest, right? Asked a mercenary who was standing guard and had nothing to do. The mercenary leader shook his head when he heard that, indicating that he did not know either. It was true that the two Awakened practitioners were powerful, but in this completely unfamiliar forest, what could the two of them do? They couldn't get lost, could they? The mercenary leader was also very confused, especially since these two awakened practitioners were not ordinary awakened practitioners. Both of them had great backgrounds. They came from the Wild Lion family, one of the three big families of the Roaring Tribe. What can a man and a woman do? You don't want to think about what they are doing. A mercenary casually teased. His words immediately attracted the laughter of the other mercenaries, which made the mercenaries relax a little bit. Shut up. The awakened practitioner's hearing is much better than ordinary people's. These two are awakened practitioners from the wild lion family. If they heard what you said, you will end up miserable, said the captain of the mercenary team scolding him. The mercenary rubbed his head and remained silent. In their eyes, the awakened practitioner from the Wild Lion family was a symbol of an unreachable noble status. If mercenaries like them teased an awakened practitioner verbally, and the awakened practitioner heard them, they would definitely pay a heavy price. Just as the mercenaries became quiet, a long roar came from the depths of the howling forest. The voice was a little low, mixed with the sound of the ghost tree, making people unable to hear it clearly. These mercenaries lived in the Howling Forest all year round. They interacted with the mutated beast every day, so their hearing was naturally trained to be very sensitive. Many of them heard this low roar. Boss, there seems to be a monster's voice, said a mercenary uncertainly. I heard it. Everyone, be on alert and prepare for battle, shouted the leader of the mercenary team without hesitation. He prepared the weapon in his hands. I hope it's not some powerful monster. They haven't come back yet. The leader of the mercenary team ordered the mercenaries to build temporary fortifications. He frowned and prayed in his heart. After a while, when the mercenaries finished building all the fortifications, he felt relieved and safer now. There was a deep sound of footsteps coming from the howling forest. This sound was like a slow beating of a drum. As the footsteps became clearer and clearer, each muffled sound, the mercenaries became more nervous and scared. The leader of the mercenary team suddenly had an ominous feeling. Finally, when this huge creature appeared in their field of vision, every mercenary who saw the full appearance of the mutated beast was stunned. The weapons in their hands fell to the ground. They were deeply shocked and did not have the slightest intention to resist. It had a huge body, a violent aura, and a ferocious face. It's a shadow, furious dragon. The weapon in the mercenary team captain's hand fell to the ground. He could not even speak clearly, and his head felt dizzy. He had never seen what a real shadow, furious dragon looked like. After working in the howling forest for so long, he had never seen such a fierce monster and did not want to resist. It walked over, step by step with heavy steps, carrying with it a majestic pressure. The mercenaries became even more nervous and lost all confidence. The mercenary captain was almost certain that this mutated beast that he had never seen before was the legendary Shadow Furious Dragon. The Shadow Furious Dragon slowly arrived in front of the mercenary team's camp. Under its pressure, the mercenaries could not even muster up the courage to escape. Everyone's eyes were filled with despair, 
as they stared at the gigantic creature they had never seen before. The Shadow Furious Dragon slowly opened its mouth. It raised its head and let out a roar that shook the sky. The roar resounded through the entire howling forest, creating a sound as the ghost trees rubbing against each other. It shocked countless mutated birds that lived in the howling forest. It was as if the king of the howling forest was declaring its sovereignty, the Roaring Tribe. There was a long distance between the howling forest and the Roaring Tribe, but the howling forest was the closest forbidden zone to the Roaring Tribe. The Roaring Tribe had never stopped watching over the Howling Forest. The person on duty monitoring the tower of the Roaring Tribe heard some movement. He immediately jumped up and looked in the direction of the Howling Forest through the telescope. A large group of mutated birds escaped from the Howling Forest from above. What happened in the Howling Forest? Wondered the person on duty as he frowned and continued to watch. He continued to observe the situation in the Howling Forest because the flight trajectory of the birds flying out of the Howling Forest made him cautious. These mutated birds flew in the sky above the Howling Forest in a disorderly and chaotic manner. After circling the sky for a while, they actually formed a group in the sky and flew towards the direction of the Roaring Tribe. The person on duty confirmed the trajectory of the mutated birds again and again and turned pale with fright. There were no ordinary birds in the world now, and the mutated birds were as fierce as an ordinary mutated beast. If this group of mutant birds rushed into the Roaring Tribe in that manner, there must be something seriously wrong, and he could only imagine what was making this happen. When he started thinking about it, the man on Dooney panicked and quickly sounded the alarm. An unfamiliar alarm that had not been heard for a long time sounded throughout the Roaring Tribe. When the people in the Roaring Tribe heard this sound, they were stunned and their faces revealed some confusion. They didn't know what this alarm meant, until the sound of a broadcast rang out in the Roaring Tribe. The Beast Tribe is here! Episode 72, An Impasse the Beast Tribe was the general term for the large-scale activity of the mutated beast after the era of the spiritual forces recovery. Every time the Beast Tribe happened, the human side would suffer varying degrees of losses. Therefore, when people heard the term Beast Tribe, their minds went blank. The Roaring Tribe had existed for many years, so naturally, they had experienced the baptism of the Beast Tribe. However, it had been a long time since the Beast Tribe had appeared. The sudden appearance of the Beast Tribe made the people of the Roaring Tribe at a loss for what to do. They started to panic. Even so, no one was too nervous because the Roaring Tribe was an E-grade tribe. There were three major families and three patriarchs here. It was unrealistic for the Beast Tribe to break through the defense of the Roaring Tribe. There's an actual Beast Tribe here? That's impossible, right? This isn't the time when the mutated beast is active. Regardless of whether it's true or not, let's make preparations. The people from the Roaring Tribe started to run and became flustered. Around the walls of the Roaring Tribe, the warriors ran quickly, forming groups and began gathering together. The captains of each team led them to form a defensive formation. Along with the first batch of mutant birds that rushed over from the sky, there were also waves of riots in the forest. One could vaguely see some shadows running in the howling forest. Just then, the violent mutated beast rushed out from the howling forest. This time, the scale of the beast tribe was larger than the previous beast tribe. The first batch of mutant birds had quickly reached the sky above the roaring tribe. The soldiers of the roaring tribe, who had been specially trained, had already prepared heavy crossbows. After the mutant birds entered the shooting range, they pulled the triggers without hesitation. Sharp, heavy ballista arrows shot out from the walls of the Roaring Tribe like a meteor shower. Even the strong mutant birds could not withstand such an attack. The reason why the mutant birds could make people tremble in fear was not because of their strong physique and strength after mutation. It was because these mutant birds already possessed the initial intelligence like other high-grade mutated beasts, even though they were not as intelligent as humans. However, they were more than enough to deal with the attacks of ordinary people. 
under the barrage of heavy armor-wearing arrows, this large group of different kinds of mutated birds tightly shrank into a ball, forming a black mass like a dark cloud. Although they could not resist the power of the heavy ballista arrows, they were able to minimize the damage. Each mutant bird that was in the outermost layer had to have four or five heavy ballista arrows inserted into its body before it died. They began to form a group and gathered round. This caused the Roaring Tribe warriors to shoot out their first round of attacks, and they only managed to shoot down a circle of mutant bird in the outermost layer. The number of mutant birds was huge, and the losses were so few that it did not have much of an impact on them. When the warriors of the Roaring Tribe saw this scene, their eyes revealed a look of disbelief. Although the mutant birds had some intelligence, it was very difficult for them to form such a gathering. Just then, the performance of the mutant bird flying in the sky had completely exceeded their understanding of them. It was as if someone was controlling this group of mutant birds behind their backs. This caused an inexplicable panic to arise. This behavior of beasts is too strange. I've experienced the beast tribe twice, but I have never seen such a phenomenon. On the wall of the Roaring Tribe, a captain who was leading the warriors looked at the scene in front of him. His eyes were dull, and he muttered to himself. Under the attack of the Roaring Tribe warriors, the mutant birds did not lose many due to their teamwork. The remaining mutant birds that had formed a group and approached the Roaring Tribe were like a dark cloud with a terrifying atmosphere. Everyone, prepare to raise your shields! An orderly low shout came from above the city wall. The Roaring Tribe soldiers put away the heavy crossbows in their hands. They picked up the steel shield from the ground behind them and raised it above their heads. This kind of steel shield was different from the shields used by the mercenaries on the market. It was a customized product of the Roaring Tribe. Not only was this steel shield light, but it was also made from a very solid material. Ordinary sharp weapons would not be able to affect this shield at all. Even in the face of the mutant bird's fierce attack, this shield still had a certain degree of resistance. The instance the steel shield was raised above their heads, a crisp sound rang out in unison. The shields reflected a bright light, and even the black cloud formed by the mutant birds was unable to make the shields dim. As the mutant birds approached, all kinds of strange sounds came from above the heads of the Roaring Tribe warriors. The mutant birds swooped down like a ball. Their sharp claws were like blades as they struck the steel shields. The steel shields produced a loud noise as sparks flew out from them. This was enough to show how sharp the claws of the mutant birds were. If they were to attack a human, even their bones would be penetrated. The powerful impact pressed down on the warriors of the Roaring Tribe. They used all their strength, but they couldn't even lift their heads. Hold on! shouted each of the squad captains from the top of the wall. The warriors of the Roaring Tribe were continuously being killed or injured because of the mutant bird's attack. The force of the mutant birds diving down from the sky was so strong that even the soldiers of the Roaring Tribe who had experienced hundreds of battles could barely resist it. The attack of these mutant birds showed a sense of discipline and organization. They charged at the defensive line formed by the warriors of the Roaring Tribe. Although they had gone through a long period of training, they were still ordinary people. They could only withstand the attacks of the mutant birds for only a short period of time. These mutant birds were not low-grade mutated beasts. The performance of these mutant birds was very strange. They had actually become organized and disciplined. This was the biggest threat to the Roaring Tribe Warriors. Episode 73 A Strange Beast Tribe The Warriors of the Roaring Tribe couldn't hold on any longer, just as the mutant birds were about to break through the walls of the tribe. Another group of elite warriors wearing family uniforms arrived. These people were the elites of the Crimson Dragon, the Ferocious Tiger, and the Berserk Lion. They were the reinforcements, and there was an awakened practitioner in each team. With these reinforcements, the situation had turned around. Although there weren't very many of them, 
As the elite warriors of the three families, each of them was at least an intermediate warrior or above. Not only did the three families have elite equipment, but they also had awakened practitioners. Therefore, even if the mutant birds attacked in an orderly manner, it would still be futile. As a result, the mutant birds that charged down began suffering many casualties. Waves of gene energy fluctuations erupted from every part of the wall. The energy that awakened practitioners unleashed was even more powerful than an elite squad of the family. It could even be said that all the elite warriors in the family were only helping the awakened practitioners. The awakened practitioners were very useful when fighting against mutated beasts. Damn it! The mutated beast has also rushed over from the howling forest! We can't even deal with these mutant birds, but there's still other mutated beasts attacking us! If this continues, even with the awakened practitioner's help, we won't be able to defend against them. What should we do? Another group of mutated beasts rushed out from the direction of the howling forest. These mutated beasts formed a long line, like a black iron army. Watching them in the distance, they looked intimidating and invoked fear amongst everyone. Seeing the endless number of mutated beasts moving toward the roaring tribe, the soldiers who were guarding on the wall had despair in their eyes. With the help of the awakened practitioners and the elite warriors of the three families, they could barely defend against the attack of the mutant birds. Now, with another group of mutated beasts, it was basically impossible for them to defend the wall. Contact the Patriarch of the Three Families immediately and ask them to gather the people of the F-Class camp nearby to reinforce us, shouted the captain of the Roaring Tribe's guards. He stared at the beast tribe that was rushing towards him, and his body was trembling. As a veteran who had experienced the beast tribe several times, he had never seen such a huge and strange beast tribe. This time, the scale of the beast tribe had far exceeded any of the previous beast tribes. He was afraid that the Roaring Tribe alone would not be able to stop them. When the warriors saw the Beast Tribe formed by the mutated beast, most of them had already lost all hope. Even if the F-Class camp came to help them, they might not be able to defend against it. Just when everyone was in despair, a figure emitted a golden light that illuminated the entire city wall. He gave off the aura of an expert. He's the patriarch of the Wild Lion family. Samson, we are saved. Samson looked at the mutated birds that kept attacking the wall of the Roaring Tribe. Not only were they orderly, but they were also not afraid of death. The unusual behavior of these mutant birds made Samson frown. Why is the movement of the mutated birds so strange? Samson thought to himself. Just then, a strong wave of gene energy fluctuation burst out from his body. A faintly discernible roar of the Berserker Lion resounded in the air. Berserker Lion Punch! Samson threw a punch at the mutant birds that were diving down from the sky, and then threw out a fish shadow. The mutant birds exploded into a cloud of blood mist under the fierce attack of the fish shadow. The blood of the mutant birds sprayed into the air like a rainstorm. When the warriors of the Roaring Tribe saw the mutant birds being attacked by Samson, they started cheering. Long live the Wild Lion family! Long live Patriarch Samson! Samson is too strong! With Samson guarding the wall, even if the mutant birds dived down, they would not be able to cause an effective attack. Samson casually threw a fish shadow made of golden stellar energy. He effortlessly killed a lot of mutant birds. The strength of the five gene chain could be seen from this. Very quickly, under Samson's pursuit, the number of mutant birds in the sky gradually decreased. Not long after, there were only a dozen or so mutant birds left. After that, the mutant birds finally stopped attacking. They circled a few times in the air before flying in all directions. The first wave of attacks from the beast tribe was blocked by Samson with his powerful strength. But this was only the first wave. Although the mutant birds in the sky were flying around unorganized, they could still pose a threat to the Roaring Tribe. A large group of mutated beasts that were rushing towards the Roaring Tribe on the ground were the main force of the Beast Tribe this time. Even Samson could not block so many mutated beasts. Although the awakened practitioner, who had five gene chains, was powerful, 
Samson could also protect himself in the beast tribe. There was no mutated beast that could pose a threat to an awakened practitioner who had five gene chains. Unfortunately, the people of the Roaring Tribe didn't have the ability to block the mutated beast. Even if Samson could block part of the mutated beast's attack, the people of the Roaring Tribe wouldn't be able to block the rest of the mutated beasts. Old lion, what's going on? At this moment, a white figure jumped onto the wall like a cat. This person had silver hair and an aged face and wore a white robe. A very powerful aurora was emitted from his body. There were fluctuations of gene energy on his body, and his energy waves were not any weaker than the energy waves of the gene energy on Samson's body. He is the patriarch of the fierce tiger family. The patriarchs of two major families are here. They should be able to stop the beast tribe. This is the first time I've seen two awakened practitioners with five gene chains standing together. When the crowd saw the patriarch of the fierce tiger family, they couldn't help but silently rejoice. They wouldn't reveal themselves in front of someone with such a prestigious status like the patriarch. Only in the gladiator tournament, which happened once every three years, would the patriarchs of the three major families gather together at the same time. They were rarely seen. This time, the beast tribe is a little strange. Something might have happened in the howling forest. Samson said, as he looked in the direction of the howling forest, there was a trace of worry in his tone. Episode 74 They Were All Killed The Flame Tail Python's Fire Core, Sky Shattering Tiger's Sharp Teeth, Black Striped Panther's Eyeball, Power Booster, Spirit Medicine, Gene Drug. Because of the escape of the Shadow Furious Dragon from the underground base of the Howling Forest, all the people who lived there who were loyal to the Crimson Dragon family saw that there was no way to deal with this matter, so they all fled. After all, no one knew whether the Shadow Furious Dragon would come back or not. Daniel and Nala strolled around the entire underground base. The huge underground base had already become riddled with holes after the destruction of the Shadow Furious Dragon. No matter how tough the wall was, it could not withstand all the damage. After strolling for a long time, Daniel and Nala finally arrived at the underground base's treasure vault that stored items. There weren't many items in the underground treasure vault, and they were much rarer than items Daniel had seen when he went to the Wild Lion Family Treasure Vault. Fortunately, the underground base was built in the Howling Forest. Even if they were to pick materials here, they would still be able to find a lot of good stuff. There are so many precious medicines stored here. When Daniel saw the various medicinal ingredients in the glassware, he was slightly taken aback. There were many medicines in the Wild Lion family's treasure vault, but they were all the property of one of the three great families, the Wild Lion family. The underground base in the Howling Forest had so many drugs, and this surprised Daniel. Indeed, it is a little too unusual for a base to store so many precious potions, said Nala, who was also surprised as she looked at the glass containers. This was just not normal, Daniel thought. He went in front of the potions, broke the glass container, and put the potions into his bag. I'm not wrong. Apart from the main purpose of dealing with the Shadow Furious Dragon, this place should also be a training base, Daniel said as he stuffed the medicine into his pocket. In this howling forest, mutated beasts are everywhere. The density of monsters is higher than anywhere else outside. It is undoubtedly very suitable as a training base. What you mean is... Nala heard what Daniel said and was stunned. There was a flash of light in her eyes as she guessed something. This is the Crimson Dragon family's warrior training base, and perhaps even more than that. They might even want to train awakened practitioners, but their conditions are too harsh, so they haven't been trained for the time being. Although Daniel was injured and hadn't fully recovered, with the powerful recovery ability of the tenacity, he wouldn't have any problem with his normal movements. Daniel quickly put all the medicine into his pocket, turned his head, and spoke to Nala. 
then walked towards the ingredients area. Ever since the steel gauntlet was destroyed in the battle in the arena, Daniel had been deep in thought. He had always wanted to fuse a new genetic weapon that was suitable for him. A truly good genetic weapon could not only increase the power of the user, but it could also provide additional skills, allowing the user's strength to increase by leaps and bounds. In terms of function and power, the skills that the genetic weapon carried might be weaker than the real genetic ability. However, at certain times, having an extra skill could give him more confidence. No awakened practitioner would think that he had too many genetic abilities. Just like the steel gauntlet from before, it also carried a gene beam cannon skill, which could transform the gene energy into a beam of light and shoot it out. For Daniel, who currently did not have any long-range attacks, the gene beam cannon on it could make up for his weakness in close combat every time. What are you standing still for? Come help me get the materials. These materials are very precious, said Daniel, as he saw that Nala was still standing there in a daze, so he called out to her. Daniel's hands were already full of items, and he could not stuff any more in them. Even though the items stored in the underground treasury were rare, it was not something that two people could take. After all, it was all the savings of a huge underground base. It was very obvious that it was unrealistic to want to take everything with just two people. Daniel, why don't we throw these materials away? No matter how precious the materials are, without a gene refining expert, it would be useful. We just need to take the medicine away. Nala said to Daniel. Nala's hands were also filled with ingredients, and she could no longer stuff anything else in them. A gene refining expert was a very magical profession. They could take the various materials from the mutated beast and combine them to create a powerful genetic weapon. They could also extract and refine all kinds of gene drugs that could increase an awakened practitioner's strength. With the existence of these gene refining experts, the various materials from the mutated beast could become useful to us. The reason why the materials are so precious is because of a gene refining expert. Without a gene refining expert's existence, even if it is a rare and expensive material, it would not be able to be used effectively, and it would be of no use at all. Therefore, these potions that had already been refined could steadily increase an awakened practitioner's strength at any time were the items that should be taken away first. Nala thought about this very carefully and felt this was the correct thing to do. After all, a gene refining expert's occupation was really rare. Even the most basic gene refining expert would be very welcome in a D-class city. The E-grade tribe did not have any attraction or competition for a gene refining expert. Unless they had some special mission, they would basically not see a gene refining expert in the E-grade tribe. Even in the annual trading market of the Roaring Tribe, where there were all kinds of mutated beast materials, no gene refining expert could be seen. Of course, there might be some gene refining experts who concealed their identities and didn't let anyone find out about them. Hearing Nala's words, Daniel glanced at her. The genetic fusion ability Daniel possessed was much better than a gene refining expert's. With the fusion function, he was an excellent gene refining expert. The rare materials on these mutated beasts were much more useful than those potions that could increase one's strength by a limited amount. It's impossible for me to give up on these materials. Humans must be greedy. Daniel smiled. He put the materials on the ground and put all the potions in front of him. Since I can't take them away, I'll drink all of them on the spot. Daniel said and drank a tube of the potion. Episode 75 Mysterious Cyclone Daniel? Nala saw Daniel's actions and was deeply shocked by his insatiable greed. She widened her eyes and saw Daniel drink a bottle of medicine in one gulp. Yeah, it's really hard to drink. Daniel spat out a mouthful of saliva. He could feel gene energy flowing down his throat into his body, 
His body temperature immediately began to rise. You still need time to stabilize your digestion after drinking the medicine. When you finish drinking all of the medicine, it will probably be half a month. Nala rolled her eyes when she saw Daniel's expression. She could not say anything and laughed at him. Usually, after an awakened practitioner used some kind of medicine, there would be a stable digestion process of one to three days. According to the individual's body, he would not be able to use any type of gene drug for a period of time. Otherwise, different types of gene energy might cause conflict within his body, resulting in very serious consequences. Even if Daniel's powerful physique allowed him to quickly stabilize the gene energy, it was impossible for him to drink all of the medicine in such a short period of time. Therefore, Nala was not interested in what Daniel said about drinking all of the medicine because this was simply impossible. Just as Nala thought that Daniel wanted to stabilize the gene energy in his body, he picked up another vial of medicine. Daniel, what are you going to do? Nala was stunned when she saw what Daniel was about to do, and her eyes were fixed on his hand. I said that I will drink all of them. Daniel smiled confidently, and immediately he opened the second bottle of medicine and drank it in two mouthfuls. You're crazy! Nala cried out in shock as the precious item in her hand fell to the ground. Even if they were the same type of gene drug, a gene refining expert would refine different types of gene drugs according to the different materials. For example, the two strength enhancement serums refined from the two types of strength were from the mutated beast materials. It seemed like the two strength enhancing serums were the same. However, the gene energy contained within them was completely different. Conflicts between different gene energy were like two awakened practitioners using all their strength to launch an all-out attack. This kind of explosive collision would be carried out within Daniel's body. After thinking about it for a while, she knew what would happen to Daniel. He would most likely die because of the violent collision of the gene energy in his body. Even if he didn't explode, the rebound from the collision was enough to blow up all of his internal organs. It was almost impossible for him to survive. The gene energy he drank was relatively mild, but when two different kinds of gene energy came into contact with each other, they immediately surged violently within his body. Daniel let out a muffled groan. His face was somewhat red, as if he was enduring a tremendous amount of pain. Daniel, how are you? Nala nervously said as she quickly ran to Daniel's side. However, the pain and flush on Daniel's face only lasted for a moment before it quickly retreated like the tide. I'm fine. A smile appeared at the corner of Daniel's mouth. He casually picked up a small bottle of medicine and poured it into his mouth without saying a word. This time, Nala couldn't believe her eyes. She pointed at him and could not say a complete sentence for a long time. Did he think this was wine? Nala, who was still in shock, looked at Daniel who drank the third tube of gene drug as easily as drinking wine. She was completely stunned. Daniel's actions had completely exceeded Nala's understanding of the gene drug and awakened practitioner. It was as if someone had told her that the earth was square and presented the evidence in front of her. She had never seen such a thing before. At the same time, a different gene energy in Daniel's body collided with each other. There was an unknown cyclone in Daniel's lower abdomen. This vortex was like a black hole that produced an endless suction force. The violent gene energy that intertwined within Daniel's body seemed to have found a vent, and it surged crazily towards the vortex. A large number of different gene energies were absorbed into the vortex, and there were no problems with that. This vortex was like a bottomless hole, absorbing large amounts of gene energy. Different gene energies did not clash and cause accidents. The vortex's absorption speed was very fast. The gene energy would soon be devoured by the vortex in Daniel's body. Daniel kept grabbing all kinds of the gene drug on the ground. He was like an old drunkard, constantly drinking the gene drug. Precious and rare gene drugs were constantly being consumed. 
In just a few minutes, the original small amount of the gene drug on the ground had already been used up by Daniel. Just like what Daniel said, he had eaten all of the gene drug. Nala watched Daniel's actions from the side and completely froze. She stared blankly at Daniel drinking all of the gene drug, leaving behind expensive containers on the ground. After all of the gene drug had been absorbed by the vortex, Daniel laid on the ground with his face facing the sky. He slowly burped and patted his stomach as if he had had not enough. In fact, most of the gene energy had not been absorbed into his body. Instead, it had been absorbed by the vortex. But after Daniel drank so much of the gene drug, he still felt satiated. What kind of monster are you? Nala asked Daniel as she was still in shock and disbelief. There were at least a dozen kinds of gene energy mixed together in so many different kinds of gene drugs. Even if the Shadow Furious Dragon drank these medicines, not to mention an awakened practitioner, its body would probably be destroyed and it would die on the spot. Daniel drank all of the gene drug as if nothing had happened. I still can't take all the gene drug away. Daniel ignored Nala as he looked at the floor full of precious materials and did not want to give up on them. He quickly picked out a few ingredients that did not have such strong functions and held them in his hands. I'll make a genetic weapon for you, he said to Nala, who was sitting on the ground in shock. Episode 76 a magical cushion. Nala heard Daniel say he wanted to concoct a genetic weapon. She immediately rolled her eyes and revealed a look of disbelief. It was as if the words, I don't believe it, were engraved on her face. Only a gene refining expert could produce a genetic weapon. The success rate of an ordinary gene refining expert's genetic weapon creation was very low. Each time he produced a genetic weapon, a huge amount of gene materials would be consumed. Hence, a true genetic weapon was very expensive. Even her father Samson, the respected patriarch of the wild lion family, had to treat a beginner gene refining expert like a distinguished guest. The so-called genetic weapon that appeared in the training market that could enhance an awakened practitioner's combat strength was just a common weapon made with a basic enhancement method. The real genetic weapon had the genetic ability. Although the number of genetic abilities could not represent an awakened practitioner's absolute strength, it would definitely directly affect an awakened practitioner's combat strength. If an awakened practitioner had one more genetic ability, his chances of winning in a battle would be higher. Therefore, the genetic weapon that carried the genetic ability was something that couldn't be seen even in the Roaring Tribe. Except for the genetic weapon that occasionally appeared in the three big families, an awakened practitioner and the rest of the people in the Roaring Tribe's market couldn't see the genetic weapon at all. When Daniel told Nala that he wanted to concoct the genetic weapon, was he trying to fool her? Daniel did not stop because of Nala's doubts. Instead, he took out the gene materials that was not very functional and slowly left. I'm going to start producing a genetic weapon. Don't come over here and peek. Daniel said casually. Nala curled her lip. She did not believe that Daniel could make a genetic weapon at all. Even if he invited her over to take a look, she would not go. Daniel walked to a corner and arranged the materials in his hands neatly. He silently tried to merge them together. In an instant, the materials turned into colorful balls of light and began to merge together. Last time, he was able to successfully fuse the steel gauntlet. The only reason he was able to succeed was because he used the gene materials he had fused for the first time to produce the genetic weapon. Moreover, the fusion material of a steel gauntlet was a semi-finished genetic weapon mechanical arm. With the foundation of a semi-finished product, it was extremely easy for him to produce the steel gauntlet. A bunch of scattered gene materials were placed in front of Daniel, and it was not that easy for him to fuse them together. 
his success rate was definitely very low. Sure enough, after a few seconds of fusion, Daniel's fusion failed. However, after the fusion failed, all the materials didn't disappear. Instead, they formed a very strange gel. Its color was very mixed, just like a five-colored stone. What is this thing? Daniel was slightly stunned. Then he understood what this unknown object was through the interface. This was the cushion after the fusion failed. It was the remaining essence of the gene materials after the fusion failed. If he were to fuse with this cushion again, his success rate would increase. Daniel was very curious. He had never seen such a thing before. So Daniel went to the ground filled with genetic materials and picked up a pile of materials. Where is the genetic weapon you produced? Is it invisible? Nala saw Daniel walking over empty-handed and could not help but laugh and tease him. Don't worry, I need sufficient time to make the genetic weapon. Daniel said casually, completely ignoring Nala's mocking words. Daniel started to merge again in the corner. Even though this time it lasted a little longer, he still did not succeed. The fusion failed. However, the remaining essence of the gene material had become even more transparent. Clearly, some changes had occurred. I feel like I'll be able to succeed if I try again. Daniel muttered to himself. Once again, he went to the front of the gene material and carefully selected a few extremely rare and functional gene materials. Nala looked at Daniel and wanted to say something, but stopped herself. She was actually a little worried about him. After all, he drank so many different types of gene drugs. Different gene energies clashed with each other in his body. It was as if he had swallowed a bomb that could explode at any time. Daniel was acting like it had nothing to do with it. The gene drug that he drank was like plain water, and it didn't have any effect on him at all. What Nala did not know was that the mysterious vortex in Daniel's body had slowly settled down, turning into a strange black ball that settled in his abdomen. Daniel could feel that this black ball contained a shocking gene energy. Daniel did not know what was going on. He began to drink the second tube of the gene drug. A different gene energy clashed in his body. Daniel felt that he could only bear two different kinds of gene drugs at the same time. The conflict between the different gene energies wasn't a joke. Even with his powerful body, he could only bear the conflict between two types of gene energies in his body. He still needed a long time to digest them. The appearance of this mysterious vortex sucked all of the gene energy into it. Although Daniel did not know how this mysterious vortex appeared, he could feel that it should have come from his body. It did not pose any threat to him. After confirming that the mysterious vortex could absorb the gene energy that clashed violently with each other, Daniel finally let go of all worries and drank the gene drug. After these different gene drugs were absorbed by the mysterious vortex, they returned to their calm state. During this period of time, Daniel's body also took the opportunity to absorb quite a number of gene energies. His injuries still looked rather miserable on the surface. However, under the recovery of the gene energy, Daniel's combat strength had recovered by at least 80%. Of course, compared to the black sphere, the amount of gene drug he had absorbed was nothing. Episode 77 The Flying Dragon Daniel went to the corner for the third time and started the integration process. The essence of the gene energy that had been refined twice contained a very pure gene energy. The energy waves it emitted when it was being fused shocked Daniel. I feel like I'm going to obtain something incredible. Daniel muttered to himself as he felt the ever-changing light mass in front of him. His expression became somewhat serious. Perhaps it was because Daniel did not feel anything when he used these gene materials. The items stored in this underground base were all valuable. Only a large family like the Crimson Dragon family could accumulate so many precious gene drugs and genetic materials after operating for several years. 
Every time a rare genetic material was fused, the amount of resources consumed was equivalent to the wealth that of an ordinary Waken practitioner who would accumulate after working hard for a year. However, Daniel had fused three times in a row. He had no idea what the amount of genetic materials required for fusing three times was. Nala, who was beside him, also seemed to have sensed an unusual gene undulation as she looked in the direction of the gene energy. When she saw that it was in Daniel's direction, she immediately became displeased. She thought that Daniel must have deliberately created the gene energy fluctuation to attract her curiosity. She would not fall for it. Nala was angry, and her face revealed a look of disdain. The ball of light kept changing in front of Daniel. The speed of integration also increased bit by bit in front of Daniel's eyes. As the speed of integration increased, Daniel also took a deep breath and held it as he concentrated. He didn't even dare to breathe loudly. After a long time had passed, Fusion successful. Please choose the genetic weapon style that you like. Daniel suppressed the wild joy in his heart and stretched out his hand. He carefully placed the spiritual force into the ball of light that was floating in the air. The first thought that appeared in Daniel's mind was to fuse a stick. He had mastered the basic staff technique very well. Back then, he could resist John's attack with the golden banded staff. If he had the long stick of the genetic weapon, he was confident that he could resist the impact of the Shadow Furious Dragon. However, Daniel thought about it and realized that he already had the genetic ability of the tenacity. Although this was not a skill that he had used on his own initiative, Daniel felt that this tenacity skill was actually the genetic ability with the highest cost-effective ratio. If it wasn't for this tenacity skill, Daniel would have died countless times by now. The tenacity skill had helped Daniel overcome many difficulties. The strongest defense is to take the initiative to attack. If I kill the enemy first, my life won't be threatened anymore. Daniel thought for a while and gave up on his original idea. He chose a weapon that was similar to a stick, but this weapon had more advantages in attacking. The Long Spear The Long Spear could completely execute the moves that a stick could use. As for the moves that a rod could not use, the Long Spear could do it too. After making up his mind, Daniel used the spiritual force to control the ball of light in front of him that was filled with gene energy fluctuations. He slowly stretched the ball of light. When he first fused with the genetic weapon, Daniel couldn't control the final product because he already had a semi-finished mechanical arm. Currently, there was no genetic weapon that was purely produced using gene materials. However, during the process of stretching and forming, Daniel encountered another problem. After about three combinations, even after refining a lot of impurities, there was still a lot of the remaining essence of the gene materials. If he wanted to condense a spear, it would be a bit too long. It was more like a heavy cavalry spear used in ancient times. It was too long and heavy, and could only be used as a charging weapon on a horse. It was very inconvenient for him to use it. Daniel thought for a while, and a light flashed in his mind. He immediately thought of a better idea. The ball of light condensed, and a subtle change occurred in the spear. Were there a lot of gene essences? In that case, he might as well change it to a halberd. Fierce, vain patterns slowly appeared on the body of the genetic weapon. Its aura was unparalleled. It was like a divine dragon spitting out flames. It wanted to burn everything in its path to ashes. As Daniel watched, the five-colored luster on the ball of light slowly dimmed and condensed into a domineering long halberd that was two meters long. The long halberd immediately let out a dragon-like buzzing sound, shaking people's hearts. Nala was also attracted by the commotion and turned her head to look over. When she saw the long halberd in Daniel's hand, her watery eyes widened in extreme shock. She stared at the long halberd in Daniel's hands as if she had seen a ghost. Judging from the gene energy fluctuation emitted from the long halberd, 
It was obvious that this was not an ordinary long hellbird. Although Nala was unwilling to admit it, in her heart, she thought that this was a real genetic weapon. This rich gene energy fluctuation had clearly proved that his long halberd was indeed a real genetic weapon. Nala slowly raised her small hand and pointed at the long halberd in Daniel's hand. She could not even speak properly. Daniel looked at the long halberd in his hand and nodded his head in satisfaction. He shouted loudly and began to wave the long halberd. The long halberd spun in Daniel's hand and a deep dragon's roar was heard as it sliced through the air. I will call you the Flying Dragon Halberd. Daniel shouted very loudly as he was very excited. He looked at Nala, and a smile appeared on his face. Now, do you believe that I am a gene-refining expert? I can still make a genetic weapon. Nala was still dumbfounded. She stared at the Flying Dragon Halberd in Daniel's hand, completely ignoring Daniel's words. How is this possible? Episode 78 The Dragon in the Sky Even though Nala could already feel the waves of the gene energy coming from Daniel's halberd, she still didn't believe that this was a genetic weapon. She had also seen the process of a gene refining expert making a genetic weapon before. The process of making a genetic weapon was not only very long, but also very cumbersome. A wrong step would not only destroy the raw materials used to make the genetic weapon, but it might also cause a gene refining expert to be in danger. The reason why a gene refining expert was so popular was because he could make a genetic weapon and a gene drug. Furthermore, the difficulty of their work was very high. This was not something that an awakened practitioner could imitate after knowing the method. One had to know that the process of a gene refining expert making a genetic weapon was usually as long as a few days or even a month. Moreover, even an awakened practitioner could not bear the consumption of a spiritual force during this process. It was very rare for a gene refining expert to be able to continuously make a genetic weapon. Making a genetic weapon consumed a lot of gene refining expert spiritual force, and it would take a long time for the spiritual force to recover. How long did it take Daniel? Did he take more than 10 minutes? How could he possibly create a genetic weapon in such a short period of time? Furthermore, Daniel did not look like the exhausted gene refining expert that Nala had seen when he finished making the genetic weapon. He was still very energetic. This meant that although this halibird had the fluctuations of the gene energy, it might not be a genetic weapon. Or perhaps Daniel had already discovered this genetic weapon a long time ago and he was just lying to Nala. If it was the first case, Nala could still forgive him. If it was the second case… I don't believe that this is a genetic weapon. Every genetic weapon carries a skill. You have to prove it to me. Nala lightly snorted and said to Daniel. Perhaps it was because of what Nala said to him had worked, and perhaps it was because Daniel wanted to show Nala the skill that the flying dragon halberd carried. Then you'll have to watch me carefully. Daniel smiled slightly and did not have the slightest intention of retreating. He held the flying dragon halberd with both hands and waved it in the air. The flying dragon halberd flew across the air. It was a very obvious mark in the air, which was enough to show the sharpness of the halberd. If the attack landed on the mutated beast or the human's body, its lethality would certainly be shocking. However, this could only show the sharpness of the halberd itself. Apart from that, the flying dragon halberd had another skill. The reason why the genetic weapon could be called this was because the weapon carried a powerful skill that was comparable to the genetic ability. Daniel waved the flying dragon halberd with both of his hands, and the halberd left behind a series of afterimages in the air. Flying dragon in the sky! Daniel suddenly shouted. All of the gene energy in his body poured into the flying dragon halberd. The flying dragon halberd was filled up with gene energy. Its entire body began to turn red, like a red flying dragon soaring in the sky. 
Following a faint dragon's roar in the air, a scorching red light flew out from the flying dragon halberd towards the ground in the distance. The scorching red light hit the ground of the underground base, which was made of steel and made a huge explosive sound. As the floor trembled, sparks flew everywhere where the light hit. It looked like a small meteorite had fallen from the sky. The skill that the flying dragon halberd carried was somewhat similar to the steel gauntlet from Behor. However, the aura and power unleashed by the flying dragon halberd were completely different from the steel gauntlet. This flying dragon in the sky technique was mixed with a scorching fire element gene energy, causing the power of the skill to greatly increase. This was largely related to the gene materials Daniel had added into the halberd when he fused with it. Moreover, he had wasted a lot of materials and even failed twice. In the end, he had used up two paddles before successfully fusing with this genetic weapon. But when Daniel saw the power of the skill, he felt that it was worth it. Even he was satisfied with this power. This power was much stronger than the gene beam cannon on the steel gauntlet. Nala covered her mouth. She stared at the huge hole created by Daniel on the floor. This was not the Howling Forest. The ground of the Howling Forest was full of soil. Using just a little bit of strength would have caused an exaggerated effect. The underground base built by the Crimson Dragon family was made of steel. It was specially built to trap the Shadow Furious Dragon. Although these buildings made of steel didn't have the slightest effect of blocking the Shadow Furious Dragon, they were still very solid. A huge hole was created on the steel floor by Daniel's strike. When the smoke dissipated a little, Nala walked forward to take a look. On the steel floor, there was a hole the size of a door. The surroundings of the hole were charred black. The high temperature even melted the steel that was resistant to high temperature. One could imagine how rich the fire elements were in that hit. This power was terrifying. Nala was so shocked that she did not know what to say. The power of this skill was even far greater than the real genetic weapon she had seen before. The genetic weapon in Daniel's hand, the flying dragon halberd. Nala knew it was no longer an ordinary genetic weapon. Where did you get it from? Nala carefully sized up the flying dragon halberd in Daniel's hand. A look of shock appeared in her eyes as she asked with a slightly solemn expression. Daniel was slightly stunned by Nala's words, and he immediately answered her truthfully. Didn't I tell you? This flying dragon halberd was just made by me. Daniel, I know you have a lot of secrets. I don't want to ask for details. After all, everyone has secrets. Nala's eyes were stern, but her tone was solemn. But you must tell me clearly about the flying dragon halberd. If you took it from the base, it means that the Crimson Dragon family has probably captured a gene refining expert. Even the lowest ranked gene refining expert could rely on his own strength to arm a small team of awakened practitioners. In the Roaring Tribe, the three families were evenly matched. In each family, an awakened practitioner's combat strength was the same. It wasn't a big deal. The strength of the three families wasn't far from each other. This was the prerequisite to maintain the stability of the Roaring Tribe. If the strength of any family suddenly soared, even if the other two families joined forces, they might not be able to suppress it. Then, the stable environment and situation of the Roaring Tribe would probably change in an instant. Episode 79 He Left A gene refining expert didn't seem to be anything special. He only knew how to refine a gene drug and a genetic weapon. A gene refining expert's strength was not necessarily that great. A gene refining expert with a gene chain of the same strength might not even be able to defeat Nala. A gene refining expert wasn't scary when he was alone. However, if a gene refining expert was allowed to join an awakened practitioner's force, the threat that the gene refining expert posed would be fully unleashed. 
Even if it was the lowest level gene refining expert, he would at least be able to create a genetic weapon and refine gene drug. Whether it was a genetic weapon or a gene drug, it did not seem to have any substantial effect. However, once these things that could slightly increase an awakened practitioner's strength had formed a scale, it would be a completely different matter. It was just like a war between two primitive tribes. One primitive tribe was still holding a wooden stick, while the other primitive tribe was already wearing armor. If an awakened practitioner, who was in the Crimson Dragon family, was fully armed, the growth of one person's strength might be very limited. However, if an awakened practitioner's overall strength was slightly enhanced, it would be very terrifying. Nala was very intelligent. She had thought of many things just from seeing the flying dragon Halberd. Nala could not wait to return to the Roaring Tribe and report everything that had happened in the past two days. Daniel was stunned when he saw Nala's anxious look. After he understood what she meant, he couldn't help but laugh out loud. What are you laughing at? Nala saw that Daniel did not seem to be anxious at all. Instead, he was smiling, which made her a little angry. She widened her eyes and asked, You think too much. The base that they spent so many years building has now been ruined by us. Even the Shadow Furious Dragon has escaped. The Crimson Dragon family must be in chaos now, Daniel said, not knowing whether to laugh or cry. Furthermore, this flying dragon halberd was really refined by me. If you don't believe me, I will use the remaining materials to refine another genetic weapon for you. How about it? Daniel said very solemnly. He was not joking at all. For a moment, Nala was stunned. Nala's gaze towards Daniel changed several times, and her expression also became strange. No one knew what she was thinking in her head. But obviously, Nala already believed what Daniel said. Daniel's waving of the flying dragon halberd was very smooth. The flying dragon halberd did not seem like a weapon that he was not familiar with. Daniel was actually a gene refining expert. Nala found this all really hard to believe. She had only been with Daniel for a few days, and she felt that she had been surprised too many times. Daniel always did something that she could not believe. However, Nala did not have any thoughts of letting Daniel make a genetic weapon for her now. She urgently wanted to return to the Roaring Tribe. You have finished drinking the gene drug. Half the genetic material has been wasted by you. We can take the rest with us. It is time for us to leave. Nala said to Daniel and started to pack up the rare genetic materials on the ground. She was ready to leave this place. Nala's status was noble, but she was very obedient. Daniel looked at Nala for a while and agreed. He also prepared to leave this place. They had searched almost the entire base. They took away the most precious thing in the treasure vault. When the two of them were about to leave the underground base and the howling forest, they had no idea that the Roaring Tribe was facing a huge catastrophe on the other side. The source of this disaster was caused by them. Countless mutated beasts kept rushing towards the Roaring Tribe. In front of the wall of the Roaring Tribe, a white, gold, and red beam of light were standing in front of the wall. The three beams of light were the three lanterns in the night shining brightly. The charging, mutated beasts rushed towards the three lights without hesitation. They were not afraid of the enormous gene energy fluctuations coming from these three figures. They rushed towards them without fear of death. They were the top combat strength of the three great families, the patriarchs of the three great families. In front of the wall, the mutated beasts that rushed over were attracted by the three rays of light, reducing the pressure on the wall of the Roaring Tribe. The mutant birds had caught the Roaring Tribe unprepared from the very beginning. Now, it was a group of mutated beasts that were rushing towards the Roaring Tribe. Some people even suspected that all the mutated beasts in the Roaring Tribe had rushed out. Why are there so many of these beasts? This is too strange. In front of the wall, in the midst of the white light, 
An old man in white cursed. His hands did not stop moving, and he killed the mutated beasts that were lunging at him. This old man was the patriarch of the fierce tiger family, a powerful awakened practitioner who had five completed gene chains. The many mutated beasts that came out of the howling forest were incomparably ferocious. However, the large number of them didn't seem to matter and were of no threat to him. In the eyes of ordinary mercenaries, these mutated beasts were extremely terrifying and were very difficult to kill. However, in front of the patriarch of the fierce tiger family, they were no different from ants. No matter how ferocious they were, they were easily killed by him. This is really strange. The howling forest and the roaring tribe have never offended each other. Even the mercenaries are only active in the outer region. Why did these mutated beasts completely go against their instincts and will and launch a suicidal attack on the roaring tribe? Samson was very confused. He could not figure it out for a moment. But the source must be in the howling forest. There was no doubt about it. It's nothing more than a slightly bigger beast tribe. You don't have to worry about it. In a ray of red light not far away, a figure wrapped in a red cloak spoke in a deep voice. Samson and the patriarch of the fierce tiger family looked over at the same time. A strange look flashed across their eyes. Episode 80. The Morale Was High As the leaders of the two major families of the Roaring Tribe, although they didn't know what the Crimson Dragon family was plotting, they had some understanding of the Crimson Dragon family's movement. There was a prohibition imposed by the three major families in the Howling Forest. The people of the three major families didn't dare to openly swagger into the depths of the Howling Forest or be the first one to break this rule. However, that didn't stop them from exploring the Howling Forest in the dark. The huge benefits in the Howling Forest could even change the structure of the Roaring Tribe. Under such circumstance, how could the three major families who controlled the Roaring Tribe and kept each other in check give up on the Howling Forest because of a prohibition? The people of the Wild Lion family and the Fierce Tiger family would arrange for their family members to pretend to be mercenaries and enter the Howling Forest to investigate, so that they could understand the situation there. However, they did not know that the Crimson Dragon family had already gotten ahead of them and established a sufficient advantage in the Howling Forest. The Wild Lion family and the Fierce Tiger family no longer had the chance to obtain the greatest benefits in the Howling Forest. Although they didn't know how the Crimson Dragon family had developed in the Howling Forest, they could guess that the Crimson Dragon family had gained a firm foothold there. Therefore, when the patriarch of the Crimson Dragon family was talking about the Beast Tribe, the patriarchs of both families looked at him with a strange look. The two patriarchs cursed and said, who knows what you did in the Beast Tribe? You actually had the nerve to boast shamelessly here? Even though there were some things that everyone was well aware of, they didn't say it out loud. Crimson Dragon Patriarch, are you confident in defending the Beast Tribe this time? You already know what kind of unusual activity happened in the Howling Forest? Samson smiled faintly at the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. His tone was somewhat strange. Crimson Dragon Patriarch was a thick-skinned man. When he heard Samson's mocking tone, he didn't show any signs of emotion. He replied, I do not know what happened in the Howling Forest, but with your two patriarchs here, can't the three of us defend against this tiny beast tribe? If someone spread this news, wouldn't we be mocked by the residents of the Roaring Tribe? This sentence had pulled the three of them to the same side, making it seem like the three of them were fighting side by side. It was as if they were extremely close to each other. Cut the crap. This beast tribe was very strange. There were many of them. We need to be more serious. We need to strengthen the wall as much as possible to reduce their burden. 
patriarch of the fierce tiger frowned and the gene energy in his body started to fluctuate. He shouted in a low voice, Let's not hold back anymore. Suddenly, a white tiger emerged from behind the fierce tiger family. Even in the huge beast tribe, this ferocious white tiger looked majestic and domineering. With a slight movement, it easily ripped apart the mutated beast that rushed past it. This was the transformation that only an awakened practitioner of the ancestral awakening, who had five gene chains, could use. In order to deal with these ordinary mutated beasts, the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger didn't need to completely transform to enhance his own strength. That would consume a huge amount of his gene energy. He only activated some of the characteristics of the ancestral gene, causing his attack to become even stronger. There was no need for him to do that just now. Even if he only did that, his entire body would be shrouded in a layer of a phantom image of a huge white tiger. The white tiger was filled with a crazy amount of power. The white tiger went against the flow of the mutated beasts and was unstoppable. Seeing the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger didn't hold back, the Crimson Dragon Patriarch and the Patriarch of the Berserk Lion couldn't fall behind. Both of them activated the characteristics of their ancestral gene. Following the intense fluctuation of the gene energy, a golden berserk lion and a red dragon immediately emerged from their bodies. A dragon, a tiger, and a lion. The shadows of three giant beasts mercilessly trampled on the beast tribe that was charging towards the Roaring Tribe. It was as if a wall had been built on the outer perimeter of the Roaring Tribe, immensely reducing the pressure on the warriors who were on the wall. The power of a high-level Awakened Practitioner was very powerful. With just three or five gene chains, the Awakened Practitioners were almost able to stop the Beast Tribe. Furthermore, they hadn't even used their full strength yet. As the Patriarchs of the three major families, they possessed incredible strength, but they wouldn't go all out just to deal with the tiny Beast Tribe. Even so, the formidable combat strength of the three Patriarchs had encountered the warriors of the Roaring Tribe. The three Patriarchs are too strong! The Beast Tribe is actually blocked by the three of them! The three Patriarchs are protecting the safety of the Roaring Tribe at the same time! We have to work hard as well! Is this the power of a high-level awakened practitioner? This is too terrifying! There was a series of exclamations on the wall. The Beast Tribe was blocked by the combined efforts of the three Patriarchs. Whether it was the reinforcements from the three major families, or the warriors of the Roaring Tribe who were guarding the wall, their hearts were burning with fighting spirit. The fighting spirit was high for a moment. As the morale of the army rose, there were three more powerful awakened practitioners with five gene chains in front of them. Although the Beast Tribe seemed endless, the mutated beasts could no longer pose any threat to the wall. There was even a powerful awakened practitioner who jumped off the wall and left the Roaring Tribe, killing his way into the group of mutated beasts. The fear that the Beast Tribe had caused to the people of the Roaring Tribe had completely disappeared. Everyone thought that the Beast Tribe should be under their control this time. An ancient and long roar was heard from the howling forest and it echoed across the sky. Despite the distance, everyone could still hear it clearly, as if it was circling around their ears. Judging from the anger and violent emotions contained in the roar, the owner of the roar must not be someone easy to deal with. After the roar was heard, not only were the warriors on the wall of the Roaring Tribe stunned, but the three patriarchs of the three major families who were fighting against the Beast Tribe at the front line paused at the same time. All of them were stunned. What's that sound? The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger frowned. He felt that the situation wasn't as simple as he thought. There was a trace of worry on his face. Episode 81 An Accident he was the patriarch of the Fierce Tiger family and possessed the strength of five gene chains. 
The patriarch of the fierce tiger could be considered one of the top men in the roaring tribe. However, when he heard this roar, his heart, which had remained calm even when facing the huge beast tribe, trembled for a long time. The pressure coming from the roar even made the patriarch of the fierce tiger feel a little uneasy. What kind of mutated beast could make such a roar? Samson frowned. He had never heard such a roar before. Even though this roar came from the howling forest in the distance, it carried a tremendous pressure and a violent aura. This made Samson feel some pressure. As for the Crimson Dragon Patriarch, even though his face was covered by a cloak and no one could see him clearly, his stiff body conveyed the shock. Could it be that there really is a terrifying in existence in the Howling Forest? There must be something wrong with the sudden outbreak of the Beast Tribe today. Samson took a deep breath and said in a deep voice. At the same time, the worry in his heart became heavier, because he knew that Daniel and his daughter Nala had entered the Howling Forest. It just so happened that there was a sudden change in the silent Howling Forest today. Even Samson, who had five gene chains, started to panic when he heard the last beast roar. If someone said that Daniel and Nala had something to do with the sudden outbreak of the beast tribe, Samson would never believe it. What he was most worried about right now was that the two of them had discovered something in the howling forest. What had caused such a huge commotion? Before Nala left, Samson specifically reminded her that if she discovered something in the Howling Forest, she should not rashly fall into danger. She should hurry back and report the problem to him. In the past, the warriors sent by the Wild Lion family to investigate the situation in the Howling Forest didn't bring any news back. They all had disappeared without a trace. He wanted to send an awakened practitioner who had the ability to protect herself into the Howling Forest, but the other two families were keeping a close eye on him. Even among the three families, awakened practitioners didn't have a lot of people. If he just sent an awakened practitioner, the other two families would soon notice it. Therefore, Samson had no way to investigate what kind of secrets existed in the Howling Forest. How much had the other two families developed in the Howling Forest? Although Samson could infer the general situation through the family's information network, there was very little information that he could confirm. Finally, the awakened practitioner that Nala randomly picked up from the stall market was Daniel. He could actually play a huge role. Not only did Daniel snatch the first place of the Gladiator Tournament from a powerful awakened practitioner with five gene chains, but he also activated the inheritance armor of the wild lion family that Samson thought was useless. Even now, Samson still didn't understand how Daniel had managed to activate the inheritance armor. The day after Daniel had gone to the Howling Forest, a strange beast tribe appeared there. Samson didn't believe that this matter had nothing to do with Daniel. What exactly did he do in the Howling Forest? Up until now, Samson seemed to regret letting Nala follow Daniel into the Howling Forest. He did not know if it was a wrong decision. The worries of the three patriarchs turned into shock as a huge figure emerged from the Howling Forest and ran towards the Roaring Tribe at an extremely fast pace. The black cuticle skin was like rock, and there were countless holes on the skin that were spraying black smoke. This huge figure looked clumsy but it ran very fast. It rushed forward in the beast tribe. The mutated beast in the front of it was either crushed by its foot or sent flying by it. Even the huge, best tribe group couldn't affect the pace of this huge mutated beast. The patriarch of the fierce tiger's eyes were wide open as he stared at the mutated beast that was rushing towards them. He was so shocked that he could not even speak properly. The only thing that could make the five gene chain powerhouse lose control of themselves like this and cause people to panic was this kind of monster. This was an unfamiliar mutated beast that almost everyone had never seen before. It was more than two times larger than the largest mutated beast they had ever seen. 
Its enormous body was accompanied by a tremendous brutal force that caused one's heart to tremble. Shadow Furious Dragon! Samson shouted. All the hairs on his body stood up because of the shock. He had never seen what a real Shadow Furious Dragon looked like. Perhaps this was just a rumor spread among the mercenaries, but he could not help but shout. He wasn't just shouting in a panic. This huge monster that carried a violent aura charging towards them was clearly very similar to the Shadow Furious Dragon that was rumored to be able to bring about a devastating disaster to the entire Roaring Tribe by itself. As a result, Samson blurted out without hesitation. When they heard Samson's voice, the Roaring Tribe soldiers on the wall behind them were so shocked that they could hardly hold their weapons in their hands. The rumors about the Shadow Furious Dragon were first spread by the Mercenary Association, and it slowly spread across the entire Roaring Tribe. However, the three families had issued a ban. Apart from the mercenaries who relied on the mutated beasts and merchants who only cared about profit, ordinary people and even warriors of the Roaring Tribe did not have much interaction with the Howling Forest. They had never seen the Shadow Furious Dragon, nor had they heard of any accidents happening in the Howling Forest. Everyone thought that the Shadow Furious Dragon was just a rumor. They were so close to the Howling Forest. If such a terrifying calamity-grade mutated beast really existed, who would dare to stay here for a long time? Impossible! Why did it come out? The patriarch of the Crimson Dragon family let out a hysterical cry. He stared blankly at the ugly and fierce mutated beast. There seemed to be a trace of despair and anger in his voice. Under such a tense situation, neither the patriarch of the fierce tiger nor Samson noticed the unusual reaction that the Crimson Dragon patriarch had. The two of them stared at the shadow furious dragon that was approaching them at lightning speed and their hearts were filled with shock. This is the first time I've seen such a powerful beast. Let's join hands and fight him. The patriarch of the fierce tiger's temper was very violent. After the shock, his fighting spirit was ignited. He roared loudly, and the gene energy on his body started surging crazily. Episode 82 the transformation of the three clan heads. The Shadow Furious Dragon had a majestic aura, and its huge body carried waves of terrifying pressure that caused one's heart to palpitate. After the initial shock of seeing the Shadow Furious Dragon, the patriarchs of the three great families quickly recovered their mental state. After all, they were the leaders of the great families, but they knew that it would be difficult for them to resist this enormous being with the strength of five gene chains. However, an awakened practitioner wasn't the only one present. All the patriarchs of the three big families and almost all of the top warriors of the Roaring Tribe were present as well. If the three of them joined hands, they wouldn't be afraid even if it was a powerful Shadow Furious Dragon. Hearing the patriarch of the Fierce Tiger's words, Samson and the Crimson Dragon Patriarch looked at each other and saw hints in each other's eyes. Although the three of them were on the same side, the benefits for each of them were all very different. It was impossible for them to work together with all their strength. However, facing the powerful Shadow Furious Dragon, it was impossible for the three Patriarchs not to work together. No one could resist the attack of the Shadow Furious Dragon alone. The Shadow Furious Dragon seemed to have sensed the threat of the three human awakened practitioners. It opened its bloody mouth and let out a deep roar. A thick, black smoke came out of its mouth, and like a long smoke dragon, it rushed towards the three of them. Before the smoke even arrived, first came a pungent smell. It was so pungent that it made people dizzy. This smoke also contained a strong fluctuation of gene energy. Although it didn't seem to have any offensive properties, its power was definitely not ordinary. Samson and the other two felt a pressure, and their expressions became serious. Don't hold back anymore. Form! When the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger saw this, a black word, King, appeared on his forehead. 
His muscles bulged and white needle-like long hair grew out of his hand. His five fingers turned into sharp claws. The three of them were awakened practitioners who had been in the middle of the five gene chain for a long time. It wouldn't take long for them to transform. They were completely different from John, who had taken many seconds to transform in the arena. From this point, the gap could be seen between John and the patriarchs of the three major families. As the patriarchs of the major families of the Roaring Tribe, their strength couldn't be challenged by anyone. Even if Daniel hadn't defeated John, who was an awakened practitioner with five gene chains and had great strength, it would still be very difficult for him to escape from the patriarchs of the three major families. In just two to three breaths' time, the patriarch of the fierce tiger had completed his transformation. His face was twisted and ferocious, like a king of the forest that was ready to devour its prey. Half of his body had turned into the shape of a tiger. His height had increased by more than twice the size, like a small giant. Although the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger's size was still somewhat inferior compared to the huge Shadow Furious Dragon, he had already made a huge breakthrough. It seemed like he had a chance of defeating the Shadow Furious Dragon. At the same time that the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger completed his transformation, Samson and the Crimson Dragon Patriarch did not want to fall behind. Along with two heaven-shaking roars, Samson and the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's figures began to change. What was different from the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger's transformation was that after the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's transformation, the dark red cloak on his body seemed to have been cut apart by a sharp blade, turning into pieces of red bone-like cloth that fell down, revealing his true appearance. Red scales appeared on the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's body. The scales were sharp and reflected a trace of cold light. There were also strange lines on the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's face that were of unknown significance, making him look beyond recognition. It was very hard to see his face clearly. After the Crimson Dragon Patriarch completed his transformation, there was a wave of frosty white air coming out of his mouth and nose. The thick gene energy on his body made people feel like a real sub-dragon was standing there, emitting waves of a powerful deterrent force. What are you dressed like? Samson glanced at the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. The people of the Crimson Dragon family wore red cloaks during their daily activities. They were dressed like thieves. Now that they had taken off their cloaks and their faces were covered with talismans, it was impossible to see what they originally looked like. This mysterious style made Samson very unhappy, as he wanted to beat the Crimson Dragon Patriarch up badly. As Samson began to shout, long golden brown fur began to grow out of his body and a trace of golden light appeared in his eyes. At the same time that his muscles swelled up, circles of golden stellar energy formed by gene energy emerged on his body. Although his body wasn't as strong as the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger, he didn't have the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's mysterious and fierce deterrent force. His imposing manner had been completely overshadowed by theirs. Samson was standing in the beast tribe of the Roin tribe like a small golden sun. He was now very dazzling, making it very difficult for people to not notice him. The black smoke that was shot out by the Shadow Furious Dragon soon arrived in front of the three patriarchs. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger roared furiously. His huge tiger claws struck at the long dragon formed by the smoke. The sharp tiger claws easily tore the smoke apart. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger took the lead and jumped up like a white crane, striking at the ugly and huge head of the Shadow Furious Dragon. This attack broke through the air and left a black mark in the air. Beast, kneel down! The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger shouted angrily. The Shadow Furious Dragon turned its eyes to the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger, who was leaping high into the air. It was very angry at the human awakened practitioner's provocation, so it used its head to attack the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger. After a dull sound, the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger's muscular body was thrown high into the air like a football that had been kicked away. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger who had transformed was sent flying by the Shadow Furious Dragon's head. 
The warriors hiding in the Roaring Tribe were all shocked when they saw this scene. They thought it was unbelievable. He was the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger. He was one of the top experts of the Roaring Tribe. How is this possible? The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger was sent flying! What kind of monster is it? Not even the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger could withstand its attack! The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger is known as the strongest expert in the Roaring Tribe. If he can't withstand the attack of this monster, what should we do? The people of the Roaring Tribe were terrified, and the crowd began to talk amongst one another in fear. In the hearts of the people of the Roaring Tribe, they had always regarded the Patriarchs of the Three Families as gods. Episode 83 The Battle Their god was now knocked into the air by a huge, unknown monster. How could this not make the people of the Roaring Tribe panic? However, this did not cause the confidence of the people of the Roaring Tribe to collapse. Their eyes were immediately attracted by the red and golden figures. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger was sent flying into the sky, and the Shadow Furious Dragon was now in a relatively weak state. Samson and the Crimson Dragon Patriarch were both experienced Awakened practitioners. They naturally saw through this flaw and immediately chose to attack. When they attacked at the same time, their attacks were powerful. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch's claw and Samson's golden fist struck the Shadow Furious Dragon's head at the same time. After all, the Shadow Furious Dragon's skin was hard as a rock. Even if they hit its body, it probably wouldn't have any effect on it. Therefore, Samson and the Crimson Dragon Patriarch wisely chose to attack the Shadow Furious Dragon's head. Their violent gene energy struck the Shadow Furious Dragon's head at the same time, producing a burst of explosive sound. This two experts from the Roaring Tribe attacked at the same time. Even the Shadow Furious Dragon couldn't withstand the attack of both of them at the same time. Its huge body took a few steps back. In just a few steps, it had killed several mutated beasts. Everyone saw the Shadow Furious Dragon's body being forced back a few steps by the combined attack of the two Patriarchs. A loud cheer was heard from the Roaring Tribe's wall. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch is so powerful! How dare a wild beast invade the Roaring Tribe! The Patriarch of the Berserk Lion is so powerful! Get rid of this monster! The cheers continued, as if they had already destroyed the Shadow Furious Dragon. They were just some ordinary warriors, but with the help of their excellent equipment and well-trained formation, they could resist the attack of the mutated beasts. However, if they were facing a powerful monster like the Shadow Furious Dragon that could destroy the entire tribe, no matter how many ordinary warriors there were, they would not be of any use. The only one who could fight against a huge monster was a high-level Awakened Practitioner. In other words, the lives of these soldiers and the lives of everyone in the Roaring Tribe were all in the hands of the Three Patriarchs. When they saw the Shadow Furious Dragon being forced back by the combined attack of the Two Patriarchs, they were even more excited than the Three Patriarchs who were fighting it. After the Shadow Furious Dragon was struck by the combined attack of the Two Patriarchs, he became somewhat sluggish. After continuously retreating, it stabilized its body and shook its head like a human. It raised its head and looked fiercely at the two people who attacked it earlier. This beast really surprises me. Samson muttered, seeing what was happening. A golden stellar energy was floating around him. It's my prey, said the crimson dragon patriarch who was standing behind him. He stuck out his tongue and licked his lips and had a determination on his face. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch revealed a terrifying expression, and before Samson could react, his figure flashed and rushed forward again. He's crazy. Samson showed disdain towards the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's behavior. The Shadow Furious Dragon had been hit once, so it did not dare lower its guard against these few awakened practitioners' attacks. The Shadow Furious Dragon looked at the Crimson Dragon Patriarch attacking it, 
as if it wanted to avoid him. However, the moment the Crimson Dragon Patriarch got close to the Shadow Furious Dragon, the Shadow Furious Dragon could clearly sense the genetic aura emitting from his body. The Shadow Furious Dragon suddenly stared at the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. Not only did it not dodge the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's attack, but it also even raised its claws. The huge beast claw of the Shadow Furious Dragon was not enough to cover the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's entire body. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch saw the Shadow Furious Dragon staring at him. Its ferocious eyes were filled with anger, causing him to panic. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch and the Beast Claw collided violently. He had received the same treatment as the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger. However, the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger had flown into the sky. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch was slapped to the ground by the Shadow Furious Dragon. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch's body crashed into the ground, producing a dull thud. At the same time, he left a deep hole in the ground. A Patriarch couldn't defeat the Shadow Furious Dragon. However, an attack like the Shadow Furious Dragon could only cause limited damage to them. The Shadow Furious Dragon seemed to have some resentment towards the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. It raised its huge foot and stepped on the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. With the weight of the Shadow Furious Dragon, even if it didn't use any gene energy, just its strength alone was enough for the Crimson Dragon Patriarch to suffer. If it succeeded, even the armor of the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's body would be crushed. At this moment, a figure descended from the sky, letting out a wild roar as he smashed into the Shadow Furious Dragon's head. The Shadow Furious Dragon's head was smashed, causing its entire body to shake. I'm preparing to attack you. The white figure cried out loudly. His huge tiger claw fiercely tore at the Shadow Furious Dragon's head. He was the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger, who had been knocked into the sky by the Shadow Furious Dragon. However, the Shadow Furious Dragon protected its eyes very well. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger's attack did not succeed, so he had to turn around and hit the Shadow Furious Dragon's head. The Shadow Furious Dragon felt pain. It let out a furious roar and fell to the ground. If the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger did not retreat in time, he was afraid that he would suffer a very serious injury. Although its attack did not injure the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger, he still felt very uncomfortable. Now that the Shadow Furious Dragon had attacked him again, even someone as violent as the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger did not dare face it head on. I can't beat you. When the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger saw this, he cursed angrily. With a kick, he jumped off the Shadow Furious Dragon's head. Because of the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger's surprise attack in the air, the Crimson Dragon Patriarch had enough time to cushion it. He swung his hand, which was covered with sharp scales, and cut a few mutated beasts that kept running around him. He took a few steps back in front of the Shadow Furious Dragon. Its intelligence is definitely not weaker than a human's. We are in trouble. Samson was observing the Shadow Furious Dragon's movement from the side. His eyes looked very serious as he spoke in a very serious tone. The attack of the Shadow Furious Dragon had just shown that its intelligence was very developed and was not any weaker than a human's. It had the powerful physique of a mutated beast, and it also had the intelligence of a human. The three of them realized the seriousness of the matter and immediately fell into silence. Episode 84, Horrifying Discovery Don't hesitate anymore. Let's join hands and kill it with our strongest genetic ability. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger, who was like a small giant, saw how difficult it was to deal with the Shadow Furious Dragon. Even worse, its intelligence seemed to be higher than a human's. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger's eyes were serious as he suggested this to the other two Patriarchs. They could only suppress the Shadow Furious Dragon if they used all their strength together. Moreover, the physique of an ordinary mutated beast was much stronger than an awakened practitioner who was at the same level. 
The strength of this Shadow Furious Dragon was so strong that it was the highest grade mutated beast they had ever fought. Whether it was in terms of physique or recovery ability, the Shadow Furious Dragon was much stronger than the three Patriarchs. If they continued to delay the fight for much longer, they would definitely not be able to defeat the Shadow Furious Dragon. The best way was for the three of them to join forces. Together, they would use their strongest genetic abilities to kill the Shadow Furious Dragon in this place. Even if they could only severely injure it and force it back to the Howling Forest, it would still be a good ending. At least, they could solve the current crisis. This method was not only simple, but also very effective. However, the problem was that if they unleashed the genetic ability on the fifth gene chain, which was the most powerful of them all, not only would they consume a huge amount of gene energy, but they would also expose their trump cards. Under normal circumstances, a complete gene chain would only carry one genetic ability. Therefore, the number of genetic abilities became very important standard to measure an awakened practitioner's combat strength. With every additional gene chain, the genetic ability would become stronger and stronger. The genetic ability carried by the fifth gene chain must be very powerful. That was the trump card of each of the three patriarchs. Since it was their trump card, they couldn't show it to others easily. They could only use it at the most crucial moment. Up until now, even in the Roaring Tribe, no one had ever heard of a family patriarch using the genetic ability of the fifth gene chain. Because with their strength, there was no need for them to use the genetic ability of the fifth gene chain. Although it seemed like the three family patriarchs were all on the same side, they were still wary of each other. If they consumed too much of their gene energy after using the genetic ability of the fifth gene chain, what would they do if they were attacked by someone with ulterior motives? Even if they were safe this time, once they displayed their strongest genetic ability in front of the other two, the others would definitely figure out how to deal with them. Even though the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger had first suggested it, Samson and the Crimson Dragon Patriarch still didn't respond. This is just a mere mutated beast. Isn't using the strongest genetic ability a bit too much of a fuss? Samson said faintly. In fact, he also understood the formidable strength of the Shadow Furious Dragon. Even if the three of them joined forces to use the strongest genetic ability, they might not be able to kill it in one go. Because the three of them were wary of each other, the Shadow Furious Dragon had already fully recovered its strength. It roared at the three of them, then rushed over. The Shadow Furious Dragon could also feel that the three people in front of it could pose a certain threat to him if they joined hands. Therefore, it directly rushed over. The Shadow Furious Dragon seemed even more violent when it recognized that familiar aura on the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's body. When the three Patriarchs saw the Shadow Furious Dragon rushing towards them aggressively, they had no choice but to treat it seriously. After all, this was a Shadow Furious Dragon. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch's scarlet triangular pupils looked at the Shadow Furious Dragon coldly. He waved his hand decisively, and the gene energy on his body began to surge. The Crimson Dragon Flame Explosion. A fire dragon condensed with the wavering of the Elder's hands. It attacked the Shadow Furious Dragon. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger raised his eyes and twitched his nose a few times as he frowned. Then he crossed his tiger claws in front of his chest and lifted his feet gently. Then, with a sudden step, his body suddenly changed from calm to swift and fierce. A white shadow looked like a lightning bolt. He quickly crossed the Shadow Furious Dragon in front of everyone's eyes. The ferocious tiger hand! The two chiefs with the strength of five gene chains used their genetic ability. Although it wasn't the most powerful genetic ability of the fifth gene chain, its power couldn't be underestimated. As the patriarch of the wild lion family, how could Samson fall behind these two? A fist shadow made of golden stellar energy rushed out violently. The shadow furious dragon's body suddenly paused for a moment. 
His body seemed to have suffered a heavy blow. Its body trembled violently, but it did not retreat like before. The Shadow Furious Dragon had actually blocked the joint attack of the three patriarchs using the genetic ability. How is this possible? Their calm mood was once again lifted up, and a trace of shock emerged in their eyes. They glanced at the huge monster that was struck by the genetic ability. Under such a heavy blow, even the Shadow Furious Dragon would not be able to remain unharmed. Even if they didn't use the strongest genetic ability of the five gene chains, they felt that their attack was enough to stop the Shadow Furious Dragon. However, just as the three of them were feeling somewhat shocked, they unexpectedly discovered that there seemed to be some strange changes in the Shadow Furious Dragon's body. When they saw it clearly, the three of them simultaneously sucked in a breath of cold air. A layer of faint black smoke appeared on the Shadow Furious Dragon's body. There was a fluctuation of the gene energy in the smoke. The skin that they attached to the Shadow Furious Dragon was like an invisible armor and increased the defensive ability of the Shadow Furious Dragon to a whole new level. It was covered by the black smoke and the skin of the Shadow Furious Dragon itself was hard as a rock. Under the joint attack of the three patriarchs, they didn't even injure the Shadow Furious Dragon. The Shadow Furious Dragon was able to withstand three different kinds of genetic abilities without suffering any injuries. In these few seconds, the three patriarchs were shocked to discover a terrifying fact. They found out that the Shadow Furious Dragon actually learned how to use techniques in battle. Although it was only a simple technique to the three family heads, this was like a bolt out of the blue. When a high-level mutated beast was intelligent as a human, would humans be able to return to the surface and fight for their own land? This kind of terrifying mutated beast that had the ability to learn caused the three people to become extremely upset. Episode 85 Strongest Gene Skill We must get rid of it as soon as possible, Samson said with a shocked expression. When he saw the Shadow Furious Dragon filled with intelligence shake its body, he couldn't help but mutter. I can't hesitate anymore. Its voice is too terrifying. I have never seen such an evil mutated beast before. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger was the closest to the Shadow Furious Dragon. He raised his head and stared at the Shadow Furious Dragon. At the same time, he slowly retreated, carefully not to attract its attention. He stood in front of the other two patriarchs and said worriedly, This is like a person's soul is residing in the body of this mutated beast. The patriarch of the fierce tiger, what you said makes sense. We can't hesitate anymore or we will be in danger. Upon hearing the patriarch of the fierce tiger's solemn words, Samson, the patriarch of the wild lion family, who was one of the three families of the roaring tribe, agreed with what he said. When the Crimson Dragon Patriarch heard what the two of them said, he recovered from his shock. He thought for a moment, then looked at the two of them and said, Then let's reveal our trump card. The trump card was referring to the genetic ability of their fifth gene chain, which was also the strongest genetic ability they had. When the Shadow Furious Dragon saw the three human awakened practitioners gathered together, its eyes were fixed on them. A bloodthirsty look emerged in its huge eyes. It opened its mouth and shook its huge tongue twice, as if it was provoking the three of them. Let's attack together! The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger said, and the gene waves on his body began to become intense. Samson and the Crimson Dragon Patriarch did not hold back anymore. Their gene energy was also very active. In this kind of unfavorable situation, they had to give it their all. The Shadow Furious Dragon could roughly feel the changes in the gene energy and force coming from their bodies. Its eyes were filled with coldness. However, it did not charge straight at the three of them. Instead, its actions revealed a hint of fear and a faint sinister feeling. 
Even though the three of them had used their genetic ability and hadn't hit the Shadow Furious Dragon, it still made it hesitant and not dare to rashly charge forward. Both sides were in a stalemate. After a long time, both sides seemed to have reached their limits. Attack! The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger shouted out. A huge, white, ferocious tiger phantom instantly erupted from his body. It carried an overwhelming amount of gene energy and smashed towards the Shadow Furious Dragon. Tiger Tyrant! At the same time, a huge, red, warm shadow suddenly rose from the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's body. It raised its head and roared towards the sky, charging towards the Shadow Furious Dragon. Crimson Dragon Lord! Finally, the golden stellar energy floated around Samson's body, turned into a mighty and domineering golden warrior. When it ran, it was like the rumbling of thunder. King of Lions. The three patriarchs had used their trump cards one after another. Although their genetic ability was somewhat similar, the gene energy and skills contained within were completely different. This was the full force attack of the three awakened practitioners with five gene chains. This attack was so powerful that even the beast tide was fleeing in all directions because of the fluctuation of the gene energy. The strength of the three patriarchs is actually so strong. The fluctuation of this gene energy is terrifying. It will definitely kill this mutated beast in one strike. The awakened practitioners with five gene chains are actually this powerful. On the wall of the Roaring Tribe, some of the three families of the awakened practitioners felt that the gene energy outside the wall was enough to destroy the heavens and earth. They were all shocked. Even the ordinary warriors of the Roaring Tribe could not withstand the pressure of the violent gene energy. They all squatted on the ground. At this moment, they can only rely on the wall to stabilize their bodies. The Shadow Furious Dragon felt a deep threat. Facing the three huge beasts formed by the gene energy, it roared in a threatening manner. The black gas on the Shadow Furious Dragon's body began to expand, layer by layer. Soon the black gas formed into a thick black cloud that covered its entire body. After that, it charged fiercely at the illusionary figures of the three huge beasts. The four giant beasts collided with each other. After a loud explosion that seemed to be able to pierce through the earth, a storm instantly rose up from the area where the four giant beasts collided and spread in all directions. The sky wailed and the earth trembled. The three practitioners were unable to withstand the intense explosion. In addition, they had just used up a large amount of gene energy, causing their bodies to become slightly weak. Hence, the three of them retreated repeatedly, using the gene energy to protect themselves. The beast tribe were swept out one after another. The mutated beasts were instantly cleared out and they were sent flying everywhere. When the gene energy exploded and stirred up a storm, the people who were staying in the Roaring Tribe panicked but they couldn't understand just how terrifying the gene energy contained was. However, even the powerful mutated beasts were sent flying. How could they possibly withstand such a powerful force? The walls of the Roaring Tribe fell into chaos. Awakened practitioners, it's time for us to go! An awakened practitioner who was standing on the wall let out a loud shout when he saw the storm sweeping towards the Roaring Tribe at an extremely fast speed. All of the awakened practitioners who were standing on the wall of the Roaring Tribe stood in a row. The gene energy on their bodies began to fluctuate, forming a shield on the wall. Five gene chains, genetic ability. Their attitude was very serious. The genetic ability they were carrying was definitely the genetic ability that was closely related to the ancestral gene. The phantom images of the roaring ferocious tiger, the crimson dragon, and the berserk lion had explained everything. Without the protection of gene energy, even if ordinary people or soldiers had excellent equipment, it would be very difficult to resist this kind of storm. 
Therefore, all of the awakened practitioners of the Roaring Tribe used all their strength to support the Gene Energy Shield, as if they were facing a great enemy. They used it to resist this violent Gene Energy Storm. This was no less than fighting with a mutated beast that was even stronger than them. The Gene Energy Storm that was created from the center of the explosion collided with the Gene Energy Shield that the Awakened Practitioners and the rest had jointly raised. A huge impact force violently crashed into the invisible but indestructible Gene Energy Shield. Every Awakened Practitioner's face turned red, but they stubbornly held on. If their shield was destroyed by this Gene Energy Storm, the Roaring Tribe would be invaded by a storm that was comparable to a natural disaster. The Gene Energy Shield was on the verge of collapsing. After an unknown period of time, the awakened practitioners fainted on the ground because of the exhaustion of the Gene Energy. When the Gene Energy Shield was about to break, they had survived the attack of the storm. Episode 86 Restraint After the gene energy storm wreaked havoc, the awakened practitioners and the roaring tribe soldiers on the wall slowly let out a sigh of relief. The awakened practitioner, who had three to five gene chains, combined his powerful genetic ability with the Shadow Furious Dragon, creating a storm that almost destroyed the roaring tribe. The formidable power of both sides made everyone in the Roaring Tribe nervous. Everyone stared at the center of the explosion where the three Patriarchs and the Shadow Furious Dragon were fighting. The tremendous force produced by the joint attack of the three Patriarchs not only created a gene energy storm that could threaten the Roaring Tribe, but also almost emptied the Beast Tribe. A powerful mutated beast like the Shadow Furious Dragon should be very hard to defend against. However, when everyone thought that the crisis of the Roaring Tribe had passed, a furious roar filled with bloodthirst and violence was heard. A black beam of light broke through the smoke and dust. A huge figure rushed out of the smoke with a loud sound. How is this possible? The Shadow Furious Dragon isn't dead yet. It seemed to have become stronger than before. This beast is charging at us. Seeing the huge figure of the Shadow Furious Dragon, the awakened practitioners and all the Roaring Tribe soldiers on the wall couldn't help but shout. Even though the patriarchs of the three families of the Roaring Tribe used their strongest genetic abilities together, they were still unable to kill this huge, mutated beast. It was as if it had been infuriated. It was a formidable mutated beast that even the combined efforts of the three patriarchs were unable to kill. What else could the Roaring Tribe do to defend against this enormous creature? Despair emerged on everyone's faces. Even the patriarchs were unable to stop the ferocious Shadow Furious Dragon. The remaining low-grade awakened practitioners and ordinary warriors didn't have the ability to survive in the Beast Tribe. Don't panic. It has been seriously injured. His eyes were focused as he said with confidence. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch took a step forward and arrived at the wall. Crimson Dragon Patriarch, could it be that you have some understanding of the Shadow Furious Dragon? Asked Samson as he narrowed his eyes watching the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. Although he had already released the fifth gene chain, the genetic ability, it was impossible for him to only have one trump card. Even if the combined attack of the three of them didn't cause any damage to the Shadow Furious Dragon, they still didn't panic. Even though they really couldn't resist the Shadow Furious Dragon, as long as their strength didn't decrease, they were still heroes. Just then, the Shadow Furious Dragon's skin was spraying out black smoke emitting intense gene energy fluctuations. If it wasn't for the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's announcement to everyone, they would have thought that the Shadow Furious Dragon was even stronger than before. This dense gene energy fluctuation was even stronger than the combined strength of the three great Patriarchs. 
How could the Shadow Furious Dragon look like it was in a weakened state? However, since the Crimson Dragon Patriarch had already stood out to speak, the other two Patriarchs wouldn't stop him. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch's action was to defend against the Shadow Furious Dragon's attack with his own strength. As the distance between the Shadow Furious Dragon and the Wall of Roaring Tribe shortened, everyone held their breaths. Samson and the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger's expressions were somewhat serious. Their muscles were tensed, and they were ready to retreat at any time. A strange look flashed across the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's eyes. He bit the tip of his tongue and took a bite of the essence blood. At the same time, he flipped his hand, and a blood-red jade ring appeared in it. Waves of gene energy ripples were emitted from the scarlet jade ring. It wasn't an ordinary item. It was most likely a genetic weapon. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch's action made Samson and the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger somewhat vigilant. One should know that although the two of them had their own unique genetic weapons, it was one of their trump cards. The real genetic weapon carried the genetic ability. There were all kinds of genetic abilities on the genetic weapon. Their strength varied greatly. If the genetic weapon carried a hidden special genetic ability, it could be used as a surprise attack at a critical moment. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch then took out the genetic weapon that was his trump card. This unusual action immediately attracted the attention of a large number of patriarchs around him. Samson stared at the scarlet jade ring in the crimson dragon patriarch's hand and had a bad feeling rose in his heart. However, Samson didn't dare to rush forward to stop the crimson dragon patriarch. After all, it seemed like he had some kind of technique that could stop the shadow furious dragon. When the shadow furious dragon was about to arrive in front of them, the Crimson Dragon Patriarch raised his hand and threw the Scarlet Jade Ring into the air. At the same time, he spat a mouthful of essence blood onto the ring. The Scarlet Jade Ring that had been soaked by the essence blood seemed to have been activated. It immediately expanded and turned into a huge blood-red net. The size of this huge net even covered the huge Shadow Furious Dragon, and it directly enveloped it. Waves of gene energy ripples were emitted from this huge blood-red net. After being infused with the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's gene energy and the support of the essence blood, it seemed very tough. The huge net covered the Shadow Furious Dragon in an instant. The black smoke all over its body immediately intertwined with the red net, producing a series of sounds. The huge net covered the Shadow Furious Dragon's body, even though the gene energy on the Shadow Furious Dragon's body had increased dramatically, there seemed to be a factor that could suppress it within the blood-red net. A huge mutated beast like the Shadow Furious Dragon was actually unable to break free from the net. The Shadow Furious Dragon let out a series of furious roars. Black smoke crazily gushed out from its body, but it was completely useless against the blood-red net. Interesting. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger narrowed his eyes. He looked at the huge mutated beast, which caused his heart to palpitate, and realized that it was being controlled. Crimson Dragon Patriarch, since you have such a weapon, you should have taken it out earlier. We don't need to waste so much effort. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger said as he was implying something. Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger, you must be joking. This Scarlet Jade Ring has always been my personal genetic weapon. Now that I've seen the Roaring Tribe set up a trap, of course I have to take it out. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch said with a fake smile. Episode 87 Crimson Blood Dragon Patriarch Crimson Dragon Patriarch! Haha, <laughs> now our Roaring Tribe can be saved! The Crimson Dragon Patriarch is indeed extraordinary! Even such a huge mutated beast has been trapped. How strong is the Crimson Dragon Patriarch now? Seeing that the crisis was easily resolved by the Crimson Dragon Patriarch, cheers were heard from the Roaring Tribe's wall. 
Whether it was the awakened practitioners or the ordinary soldiers, they all looked at the Crimson Dragon Patriarch with admiration. The combined attack of the three Patriarchs had consumed the Shadow Furious Dragon's strength. However, it was the blood-red net unleashed by the Crimson Dragon Patriarch that was the key to resolve the crisis. The blood-red net was shrinking more and more tightly. The huge body of the Shadow Furious Dragon seemed very clumsy. It couldn't break free from the net at all. The Shadow Furious Dragon let out a series of furious roars and stared angrily at the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. Both the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger and Samson were very surprised, and they became more and more suspicious. For a mutated beast like the Shadow Furious Dragon that had a high intelligence, its intelligence was on par with the humans, and it also had a very crafty side. Under normal circumstances, this kind of mutated beast that possessed some intelligence would choose to retreat when it sensed the great strength of the three clan chiefs. However, this Shadow Furious Dragon was actually trying to charge again. It was obvious that its actions were directed at the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. It was as if there was a great hatred between the Crimson Dragon Patriarch and the Shadow Furious Dragon. This discovery further proved that the Crimson Dragon family must have some kind of secret in the Howling Forest. Furthermore, it was related to the Shadow Furious Dragon. Since the Shadow Furious Dragon was surrounded by the huge blood red net, the orderly beast tribe had started to become chaotic. Some of the mutated beasts in the beast tribe even started to run away. When it became a disaster, they chose to flee separately. The leader of the mutated beasts, the Shadow Furious Dragon, was trapped by an awakened practitioner. Therefore, there was no need for them to continue fighting with their lives on the line. Even though the level of the mutated beast that formed the beast tribe was low and their intelligence was not considered high, they would not have been blocked by a well-trained ordinary warrior. However, their instincts as wild beasts were still there. After the Shadow Furious Dragon fell, although it still had some ability to resist, its control over the Beast Tribe was not as strong anymore. The Mutated Beast Tribe had lost its leader, and some powerful Mutated Beasts took the opportunity to break free from the Shadow Furious Dragon's control. Because of the powerful Awakened Practitioner from the Roaring Tribe, their instincts as wild beasts told them to leave and stop attacking. Therefore, the Beast Tribe began to gradually disperse. Large groups of mutated beasts began to frantically flee back to the Howling Forest. Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger, Patriarch of the Berserk Lion, please lend me a hand to subdue this beast. A satisfied sneer emerged on the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's face as he said to the two Patriarchs beside him, This beast has lost all ability to resist. Do you still need our help? The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger let out a soft humph, showing a very unpleasant expression. This Shadow Furious Dragon was attacked by the three of them together, but now the credit was given to the Crimson Dragon Patriarch alone. How could this make the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger happy? Even though the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger didn't care too much about reputation, this matter not only boosted his personal reputation, but it also increased the prestige of the entire family by a level. The honor of the family was much more important than personal honor. However, if the Crimson Dragon Patriarch took all the credit, his reputation within the Crimson Dragon family would rise to a whole new level. If that happened, the Crimson Dragon family would have an advantage over the other two families in every aspect. It Seems like the Crimson Dragon Patriarch and this guy are old acquaintances. You two can reminisce about old times alone. You don't have to bring us along. Samson said feeling angry when he saw the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's reaction. At the same time, he was also testing the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. After thinking back on all the clues... Samson was 90% sure that the Crimson Dragon Patriarch must have developed some kind of plan in the Howling Forest because the Crimson Dragon family walked in front of everyone. The Howling Forest, which had been peaceful for so many years, 
had suddenly experienced a huge change. Samson suspected that this matter might have something to do with Daniel and Nala. In addition, after the Shadow Furious Dragon came out, it rushed towards the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. Samson was trying to figure out what was going on. Ugh, the two Patriarchs must have consumed too much energy in the battle. Go back to the tribe and have a good rest. The rest will be taken over by the Crimson Dragon family. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch said in a low voice. As he spoke, the awakened practitioner and the rest of the Crimson Dragon family jumped down from the wall and came to the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's side. Use the Crimson Dragon lock spell to tie this beast up. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch gave the order. Then, he personally brought a few powerful awakened practitioners from the Crimson Dragon family to the front of the Shadow Furious Dragon. The few awakened practitioners came to the surrounding of the trapped Shadow Furious Dragon. The gene energy on their bodies floated and connected to each other, forming a special formation. With just the strength of these few low-grade awakened practitioners, even if the Shadow Furious Dragon was trapped, they wouldn't be able to cause any harm to it. However, there was still an expert with five gene chains here. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch lightly stepped on the ground and instantly jumped. He landed on the Shadow Furious Dragon's head. The Shadow Furious Dragon stared at the Crimson Dragon Patriarch with its huge eyes. Even though it was trapped, it let out low and deep cries, filled with an aggressive nature. <sighs> evil creature. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch cursed and stomped on the Shadow Furious Dragon's head. This kick was full of strength. With the help of the Crimson Dragon's gene, even the Shadow Furious Dragon was suppressed by this huge force. Activate the formation! The Crimson Dragon Patriarch saw that the time was right. He ordered and cut his finger, causing a stream of blood to flow out. When the Crimson Dragon family's awakened practitioner heard the order, he also cut his finger, causing a stream of blood to flow out. This blood was no ordinary blood. It contained a rich amount of gene energy blood. The genes of the Crimson Dragon family were mutated beasts inherited from the warm, but it was somewhat similar to the Shadow Furious Dragon. This Crimson Dragon lock spell was also used to capture the Subdragon Mutated Beast. It had a miraculous effect on the Subdragon Mutated Beast. Following a burst of red light, a circle of red light slowly rose beside the Shadow Furious Dragon, gradually soaking its huge body. Then, a dull rumbling sound came from afar, attracting everyone's attention. Episode 88, Going Against the Current The rumbling sound wasn't loud. It wasn't even outstanding amongst all kinds of escaping mutated beast roars and chaotic noises. But it attracted everyone's attention. This was because the sound was not the cry of some mutated beast, but the sound of a mechanical gear slowly rolling. At the edge of the howling forest, a golden light-armored vehicle with a bright luster slowly drove out from the howling forest. Although it was very far away, with Samson's eyesight, he instantly could clearly see the light-armored vehicle. His heart, which had been hanging on all this time, could finally rest because this light-armored vehicle was the one that the wild lion family had set off on their journey. Daniel and Nala had entered the howling forest on this chariot, However, this light-armored vehicle could no longer move forward after a short distance of entering the Howling Forest. It could only stop the entrance of the outer perimeter of the Howling Forest. Numerous mutated beasts rushed out of the Howling Forest under the control of the Shadow Furious Dragon. However, this light-armored vehicle, which was parked at the entrance of the outer perimeter of the Howling Forest, managed to avoid a disaster. Daniel and Nala were sitting inside the light-armored vehicle. Daniel's body was still covered in dried blood, 
but the injuries on his body had almost fully recovered. The broken bones were also healed by the powerful healing ability of the tenacity. The storage compartment with a small space in the light armored vehicle was filled with the genetic materials that Daniel and Nala brought out. There were even some genetic materials that could not be stored in the carriage, but only placed in the carriage. They might as well use them as stepping stones. Daniel did not care. If his actions were to be seen by others, they would probably be heartbroken. These gene materials were not ordinary gene materials, although not every single one of them was precious. However, these gene materials were all stored in the underground base established by the Crimson Dragon family. The Crimson Dragon family had been accumulating them in the Howling Forest for a long time, and only then did they accumulate so many high-quality gene materials. If the genetic materials here were brought to the trading market of the Roaring Tribe for auction, they would definitely be able to exchange them for a lot of money. However, these top-quality gene materials that represented a large amount of beast cores were actually trampled under their feet like trash. When the two of them came out, the beast tribe had already completely collapsed. Large amounts of mutated beasts were frantically fleeing towards the Howling Forest, which was the exact opposite direction of the light-armored vehicle. Under the panic, many of the mutated beasts kept rushing towards the light-armored vehicle. The defense capabilities of the light-armored vehicle were pretty good. The occasional collisions might not have any effect on it. However, the light-armored vehicle might not be able to withstand the attack of the beast tribe of this scale. Lord Daniel, Princess, be careful! A large number of mutated beasts have appeared in front of us. There is a possibility of a collision. An elite warrior from the Wild Lion family saw the large number of mutated beasts fleeing in panic. His heart sank, and he controlled the light armor vehicle, preparing to receive the mutated beast's attack. However, the number of these mutated beasts were indeed a little too many. Even the elite warriors of the Wild Lion family were somewhat flustered. Don't worry. Let's continue forward. A voice suddenly came from the carriage. His voice was deep and powerful, making one feel at ease. When the elite warriors of the Wild Lion family heard this, they calmed down, as if they had absolute trust in the people in the carriage. Therefore, the light-armored vehicle didn't stop and it continued to move forward. Isn't that the war chariot of the Wild Lion family? Why would it appear there? It's over! That was the path of the beast tribe's retreat. I'm afraid that this war chariot will be knocked over by the mutated beasts. I remember it was Princess Nala from the Wild Lion family who left the Roaring Tribe on her war chariot. Could it be that the one sitting on this war chariot is Princess Nala? When the warriors on the wall of the Roaring Tribe saw the light-armored vehicle was about to come into contact with the group of fleeing monsters, they were all shocked and sighed. Some of the awakened practitioners' eyes widened. Although they were awakened practitioners and had the ability to kill the mutated beast by themselves, if they were faced with so many fleeing mutated beasts, they could only avoid them temporarily. After all, when the mutated beasts were fleeing in a panic, they wouldn't care if there was anything in front of them that could stop them. Not to mention the fact that a large number of monsters were fleeing. No matter how strong a person was, he wouldn't dare face a group of mutated beasts head on. Samson narrowed his eyes when he saw this scene. He was worried, but under such circumstances, even if he went to rescue him now, it would be too late. Just as the fleeing mutated beast group was about to meet the light-armored vehicle group, a strange scene suddenly appeared. The mutated beasts that were charging towards the light-armored vehicle suddenly changed their direction. The entire collapsing beast tribe was separated. In the middle of the densely packed beast tribe, a huge open space appeared. The mutated beasts all circled around the light-armored vehicle. Even if they collided with the other monsters, none of them dared to approach the vehicle. The elite warriors of the Wild Lion family who were driving in front of the armored vehicle saw this miraculous scene. Their eyes widened and their faces revealed a look of disbelief. He had stayed in the Roaring Tribe for so many years and had experienced the mutated beasts in the Beast Tribe. 
However, he had never seen such a miraculous scene. He recalled the words that came from the carriage earlier, and he guessed who it was. The warriors of the Beast Tribe were shocked, and the warriors on the wall of the Roaring Tribe were even more shocked. How could this be? This is too amazing! Who exactly is in that car? Why are these mutated beasts circling around? These mutated beasts instinctively feel fear. That's why they are doing this. The people sitting in this carriage must be extraordinary. The people on the wall of the Roaring Tribe were shocked and began to whisper. Most of the people's attention was attracted by the scene that happened in front of the light-armored vehicle. Everyone stared at it. It looked extremely dangerous, but in fact, it was safe and sound. Episode 89, Return A wave of gene energy rippled out, and an invisible force burst out from Daniel's body. This was the genetic ability that Daniel carried with him when he perfected the third gene chain, the Dragon's Might. Daniel's third gene chain was the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene. This was a fusion gene that was fused with the high-tier ancestral gene Berserk Lion gene and the Crimson Dragon gene. Daniel could clearly feel that the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene was much stronger than the Crimson Dragon gene and the Berserk Lion gene. Just the fact that it carried two types of genetic abilities was enough to show how extraordinary it was. Up until now, Daniel had never heard of anyone telling him which complete gene chain could carry two types of genetic abilities. To everyone's knowledge, a complete gene chain could only carry one genetic ability. Daniel did not intend to tell anyone else about this matter. He did not even tell Nala about it because this unprecedented phenomenon happened to him. If others knew about it, it would bring him unnecessary trouble. Furthermore, with the addition of the genetic ability, Daniel would have another trump card in this battle. Everyone knew that the number of genetic abilities were directly related to an awakened practitioner's combat strength. Daniel had the strength of three gene chains, but he had four genetic abilities. Although the tenacity could not provide Daniel with any offensive ability, it could provide him with a strong recovery ability in battle. In addition to the genetic weapon that Daniel had just fused, which was the Flying Dragon Halberd, it also carried a genetic ability. Daniel now had five genetic abilities. If Daniel and John were to fight again, Daniel was confident that he could kill him with his own strength. Daniel risked his life to obtain the complete gene from the Shadow Furious Dragon, perfecting the Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene. The dragon's might skill he obtained could even threaten the Shadow Furious Dragon. The Shadow Furious Dragon felt a wave of pressure and gave up on attacking Daniel. This was the dragon's might that even the Shadow Furious Dragon feared, not to mention the pressure it exerted on the other low-grade mutated beasts. Although Daniel's body would fluctuate with the gene energy when he used the dragon's might, he still used up most of the spiritual force energy. Using the spiritual force would not bring any effect to others. Daniel could freely control the target of the dragon's might. Once Daniel used the dragon's might, Nala and the elite warriors of the Wild Lion family would be shocked. With the existence of the dragon's might, these low-grade mutated beasts wouldn't dare to offend him. This was an instinctive fear that existed in the bloodline of the mutated beasts. The light-armored vehicle didn't stop at all on the road. It was like a sharp razor that cut open a hole in the middle of the beast tribe. We have destroyed the underground base of the Crimson Dragon family, and we even let the Shadow Furious Dragon escape. Will we get into trouble when we go back? Nala looked at Daniel and said worriedly. Nala was very excited when she was plundering the underground base and did not show any mercy at all. Now that they were about to return to Roaring Tribe, she started to worry again, which made Daniel not know whether to laugh or cry. 
Why didn't you think of this when we were searching for materials? Daniel thought to himself, but he still comforted her. Don't panic. Your father is so powerful. How dare the Crimson Dragon family do anything to you? Daniel said as he stretched out his hand and lightly touched Nala's forehead. The three major families have a common prohibition. If the Crimson Dragon family dares to cause trouble, we will make the matter of their underground base in the Howling Forest public. It doesn't matter if the others believe it or not. This matter is enough to bring huge trouble to their family. If we do this, do you think these people will still want to cause trouble for us? Nala covered her forehead. When she heard Daniel's words, she suddenly understood. She had violated the prohibition and followed Daniel into the Howling Forest and was still a little worried about this matter. However, after hearing what Daniel said, the Crimson Dragon family had established an underground base in the Howling Forest and had been exposed. It was estimated that everyone's attention would be focused on the Howling Forest. Who would care about her and Daniel entering the Howling Forest on their own? Don't forget what you promised me when you get back. Make me a genetic weapon, Nala said as she looked at Daniel and pouted. After seeing the flying dragon halberd display the power of the flying dragon in the sky, Nala confirmed that this was indeed a genuine genetic weapon. However, Nala still doubted that Daniel really had the strength to make a genetic weapon. Therefore, Nala decided to let Daniel make a genetic weapon for her. If Daniel could really make a genetic weapon, Nala would believe that he was a gene-refining expert. After all, a gene-refining expert's profession only existed in the legends. It was a very rare profession, even in the E-Class Roaring Tribe. Daniel was just a low-rank awakened practitioner from the F-Class camp. However, Daniel had shown off his outstanding performance in the Gladiator Tournament. After winning an impossible match, he had also ignited the inheritance armor of the Wild Lion family. Just these things alone were enough to make people feel that it was unbelievable. Daniel said that he was still a gene-refining expert. This was too unbelievable. Even though Daniel had already taken out a flying dragon halberd and a genetic weapon, Nala still couldn't believe it, unless he made another genetic weapon for her. Of course, these were all matters to take care of after they returned to the Roaring Tribe. They needed to rush back to the Roaring Tribe as soon as possible, return to the Wild Lion family, and report the situation in the Howling Forest to their father. Daniel had also returned with a bountiful harvest this time. Although there were some risks involved, it was still safe and sound. The third Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon gene chain had been completely perfected, and it had also brought Daniel two genetic abilities. Furthermore, Daniel had used the fusion of the gene materials to produce the genetic weapon Flying Dragon Halberd, which also helped him increase his own strength in an invisible manner. With these as the foundation of his own strength, Daniel could use them to increase his strength. Even the geniuses of the Fierce Tiger family and the Crimson Dragon family only had three gene chains, but Daniel wasn't worried about them at all. It was estimated that only someone as strong as Samson, the awakened practitioner, could give Daniel a certain amount of pressure. With Daniel's strength, he would be safe after entering the secret realm. Furthermore, it would not be a problem for him to protect Nala as she safely passed through the secret realm. Daniel began to think about what kind of genetic weapon he should make for Nala. Episode 90 Ambition The light-armored vehicle slowly moved towards the Roaring Tribe. When Samson saw this, he didn't care about the people from the Crimson Dragon family doing strange rituals on the Shadow Furious Dragon. He stepped on the ground and flew towards the light-armored vehicle. Samson's precious daughter was in the armored car. He could not wait to see Nala's condition. Although he had put the inheritance armor of the Wild Lion family on Nala, the only one who could activate the inheritance armor was Daniel. The inheritance armor that was not activated could only be considered ordinary armor with strong defensive abilities. 
it did not have any power at all. From a distance, the light armored vehicle seemed to be moving at a slow speed, but it was actually moving very quickly. Samson kept jumping in the direction of the light armored vehicle. The two of them soon bumped into each other. Patriarch! When the elite warriors of the Wild Lion family saw Samson appear in front of them, they were stunned, then quickly bowed. Samson nodded, went to the carriage, and opened the door. The moment the door opened, Samson felt a very terrifying pressure crushing down on him. He didn't even dare to breathe loudly. However, this pressure only lasted for a moment before it immediately disappeared. It was as if it had never appeared. Samson couldn't help but suspect that the gene energy he had consumed during the Battle of the Shadow Furious Dragon was too much, causing him to hallucinate. Samson opened the doors of the carriage and saw Daniel and Nala. When his eyes fell on Daniel, his pupils suddenly shrank. He could feel the sharp aura coming from Daniel earlier, but now the aura coming from his body had been restrained. He was very calm. This made the people feel even more afraid. It seemed like after this trip to the Howling Forest, his strength had increased once again. Samson soon realized that Daniel's strength had changed again from a few days ago. After he restrained his aura, even Samson could not see through him. Samson could feel that Daniel's strength was increasing at a terrifying speed. He had never seen such a fast speed of growth. If Daniel was really used as a comparison, then the geniuses of the other two families would probably not be worth mentioning. Father, why are you here? Nala couldn't help but ask when she saw Samson in front of her. A look of surprise emerged on her face. Then Nala recalled the situation she and Daniel had discovered in the Howling Forest. Her expression became serious all of the sudden as she said to Samson, Father, we found the underground base of the Crimson Dragon family in the Howling Forest. They also imprisoned the Shadow Furious Dragon and prepared to control it. As soon as Nala's voice faded, Samson's expression changed drastically. What? Why did this happen? Samson shouted in a low voice. He didn't have time to explain to Daniel and Nala immediately turned around and ran towards the wall of Roaring Tribe at an extremely fast speed. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch was leading the Crimson Dragon family's awakened practitioner to cast a strange magic. At first, Samson thought they were going to set up a seal or something. They might want to surround the Shadow Furious Dragon first, and then they would discuss how to divide this powerful high-level mutated beast. The value of a living high-tier mutated beast was many times higher than a bunch of rare genetic materials. However, after Samson heard Nala's words, he immediately thought of something. Since the Crimson Dragon family had built such a huge underground base in the Howling Forest without anyone knowing, and they had even imprisoned the Shadow Furious Dragon, this meant that they already knew a lot about the Shadow Furious Dragon. No wonder this high-intelligence mutated beast would attack the three of them at all costs. It turned out that the Shadow Furious Dragon's target had never been Samson or the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger, but the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. The two of them had been completely used by the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. The Crimson Dragon lock spell that the Crimson Dragon Patriarch had set up was now most likely to be used to control the Shadow Furious Dragon when it was weak. No one else knew the exact function of the Crimson Dragon lock spell. They all thought that this was a spell that the Crimson Dragon Patriarch used to prevent the Shadow Furious Dragon from committing evil deeds again. He's actually so bold. Samson said hatefully as he gritted his teeth. He thought that the three families were more or less the same in terms of exploration and development of the Howling Forest. He didn't expect that the Crimson Dragon family had already prepared far ahead of the other two families. They even wanted to control the king of the Howling Forest. Once the Shadow Furious Dragon was controlled by the Crimson Dragon family, even if the Wild Lion family and the Fierce Tiger family joined forces, 
they wouldn't be able to stop the Crimson Dragon family from possessing such a terrifying mutated beast. When this plan emerged in Samson's mind, a cold sweat broke on all over his body. It seemed like he had underestimated the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's ambition and ability. Just as Samson was rushing towards the direction of the Roaring Tribe with all his might, a long howl that sounded like a wail suddenly came from the front of the wall of the Roaring Tribe. The roar carried an unwillingness and despair. At the same time, this roar was like a heavy hammer smashing into Samson's heart. Everything was over. Samson's heart was filled with despair, and his face revealed sadness. We have succeeded! From now on, the Crimson Dragon family will be unstoppable. A hysterical laugh came from the direction of the Roaring Tribe. After that, the Crimson Dragon Patriarch slowly raised up a huge figure and appeared in front of everyone. Episode 91 Insolence Huh! Why is this mutated beast standing up again? Could it be that the Crimson Dragon family didn't trap him? What are you afraid of? These are the three patriarchs here. Since they defeated this beast the first time, they can defeat him the second time. <laughs> you guys better watch carefully. This Shadow Furious Dragon seems to be following the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's orders. No one would have thought that after the Crimson Dragon Patriarch laid down the Crimson Dragon lock spell, the trapped Shadow Furious Dragon would stand up. The people on the wall of the Roaring Tribe cried out in shock. When they saw the Crimson Dragon Patriarch standing on top of the Shadow Furious Dragon's head, they were stunned. Should the Crimson Dragon Patriarch seal the Shadow Furious Dragon if he didn't die? Why did this Shadow Furious Dragon break free from its restraints and stand up again after it was trapped? However, no one noticed that there was a trace of scarlet light faintly appearing in the huge eyes of the Shadow Furious Dragon. Crimson Dragon Patriarch, what is the meaning of this? When the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger saw that the Crimson Dragon Patriarch had actually let go of the Shadow Furious Dragon, he immediately shouted out loudly. His eyes were wide open as he stared intently at him. He was also afraid because the Shadow Furious Dragon was underneath the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's feet and was standing quietly like an obedient pet, staring down at him from above. Although the pressure that this Shadow Furious Dragon gave the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger was not as much as before because it was no longer as fierce. However, it was still a high-grade mutated beast after all. If there were to be a one-on-one -on -one battle, it would be the Patriarch of the Three Great Families. No one could subdue this beast. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger. Did you catch too many rats? Can't you tell? The Crimson Dragon Patriarch's face, which was covered with mysterious patterns, revealed a deep sneer. He looked down at the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger from above and bluntly said to him, This statement was meant to mock the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger for being a sick cat. What did you say? With the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger's violent temper... How could he possibly accept such insults? He immediately became furious. His face turned red as he stared at the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. The gene energy on his body began to surge. A battle seemed like it could happen at any time. Seeing the confrontation between the two Patriarchs, the warriors on top of the wall of the Roaring Tribe couldn't help but look at the Crimson Dragon Patriarch in shock. The three patriarchs were of similar strength. They were wary of each other, but on the surface, they seemed to be friendly with each other. Just like when the three of them were facing the attack of the Shadow Furious Dragon, the three of them let down their guard against each other. At the same time, they each unleashed their genetic ability that was carried on their fifth gene chain. They joined hands to attack the Shadow Furious Dragon, blocking it from the Roaring Tribe's wall. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch was now mocking the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger for being a sick cat in front of everyone, whether it was from the perspective of an individual or his family. 
The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger couldn't bear this insult. This shadow furious dragon is under my control. Although it is a little weak, there is no one in the Roaring Tribe who can match me. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch ignored the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger's incompetence and fury. The arrogance on his face was completely exposed. His eyes swept across everyone on the wall of the Roaring Tribe with a ferocious and greedy look. I declare that the Roaring Tribe is no longer called the Roaring Tribe. The flag of the Crimson Dragon family will be erected on the wall. As soon as the Crimson Dragon's patriarch voice faded, all the warriors and families on the wall of the Roaring Tribe, as well as the awakened practitioners who came from different places, were stunned. Everyone's eyes were focused on the huge creature that the Crimson Dragon patriarch was stepping on. It was emitting black smoke. This mutated beast was so powerful that even an awakened practitioner who had five gene chains did not dare to block it. How could it be controlled by the Crimson Dragon Patriarch just like that? The Crimson Dragon Patriarch was originally one of the three great families of the Roaring Tribe. Their strength was at the top of the Roaring Tribe. Now they could actually control this ferocious, shadow-furious dragon. In the entire Roaring Tribe, even if the ferocious tiger and berserk lion were to join forces, they wouldn't be able to fight against the Crimson Dragon family. I didn't expect you to be so despicable, using the trust of everyone in the Roaring Tribe. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger scolded with a flushed face. Anyone with discerning eyes could tell that he was the most reckless person in the Roaring Tribe. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger, who had always been brave and fierce, was facing the Crimson Dragon Patriarch and the Shadow Furious Dragon. He was terrified. The energy waves of gene energy that had swelled up all over his body slowly calmed down, and no matter how furious his face was, he had no intention of making a move. Just that. A red figure jumped down from the wall of the Roaring Tribe and came to the side of the Shadow Furious Dragon. Father, congratulations on your great plan success. That person knelt on one knee and congratulated him. This was the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family, who had put Daniel in a disadvantageous position in the Gladiator Tournament, but was still severely injured by his punch. He had left the scene causing the Grimson Dragon family to be humiliated. Father, today is the day that the Crimson Dragon family will unify the Roaring Tribe. I still have two small requests. I hope you can satisfy them. The young lord of the Crimson Dragon family said to the Crimson Dragon Patriarch in an unfriendly tone, First, I want to kill Daniel with my own hands to prepare for the four gene chains attack. The young lord of the Crimson Dragon said with the intent to kill, he is just a tiny bug. He is worthy of being remembered by you. I promise you. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch sneered disdainfully and said, Second, I want to marry the Wild Lion family's Princess Nala. She's publicly acknowledged as the most beautiful girl in the Roaring Tribe. If I marry her, the Crimson Dragon family will have more power. The young lord of the Crimson Dragon family's eyes were filled with desire as he spoke arrogantly. <laughs> I agree. I want to see if that old fool Samson will have any complaints. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch let out a wild laugh and shouted. Samson had just arrived at the Roaring Tribe. When he heard the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family and the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's words, his face turned gloomy, but he didn't say anything. Just then, a voice that carried a long and ancient meaning was heard. Have you asked me if I agree? This voice was not loud, but it sounded like a great bell in everyone's ears, and everyone's eardrums buzzed. As soon as this voice spoke, it immediately caused everyone's expressions to freeze. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch had controlled the Shadow Furious Dragon, and it would be almost impossible for him to find a worthy opponent in the Roaring Tribe. Even the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger and the Patriarch of the Berserk Lion could only remain silent in the face of the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's humiliation and arrogance. 
They didn't dare put up any resistance. Could it be that the owner of this voice was even stronger than the patriarchs of the three major families? This voice? The young lord of the Crimson Dragon family's expression changed as he turned his head to look at a light-armored vehicle that was slowly driving towards them. Daniel! Episode 92 Provoke The young lord of the Crimson Dragon family was very familiar with this voice. The voice belonged to the one who had defeated him with a single punch in the gladiator tournament, causing him to lose all his face. Because of this, he was punished by his father when he returned home. Therefore, when the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family heard this voice again, he immediately recognized the owner. The voice came from the slow-moving light-armored vehicle, causing everyone to be stunned. Their faces were filled with astonishment. Even Samson's mouth was wide open in shock, and there was a trace of panic in his eyes. Even though he was one of the five gene chains, he could not do anything but swallow his anger when facing the Crimson Dragon Patriarch, who was controlling the Shadow Furious Dragon. He didn't dare to express any thoughts. He didn't expect that Daniel would actually dare to curse out loud. He called himself the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's father. Wasn't he tired of living? The people on the wall of the Roaring Tribe widened their eyes and looked at the light-armored vehicle with respect. At the same time, they felt an incomparable admiration for the owner of the voice. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch had controlled the Shadow Furious Dragon. He was invincible in the entire Roaring Tribe. Even the Awakened Practitioner, the Patriarch of the Berserk Lion and the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger, who had five gene chains, didn't dare to refute the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's words. There was actually someone who dared to provoke the Crimson Dragon Patriarch? The young lord of the Crimson Dragon family saw the light-armored vehicle slowly stop in front of them and a bloodthirsty look emerged in his eyes. Now that the Crimson Dragon Patriarch had control over the Shadow Furious Dragon and the Roaring Tribe, as the young master of the Crimson Dragon family, he had to take advantage of the situation and regain his reputation. He wanted to defeat Daniel in front of everyone and return the humiliation he had brought to himself. The young lord of the Crimson Dragon family walked towards the direction of the light-armored vehicle step by step. Daniel! The young lord of the Crimson Dragon family roared angrily. His tone was deep and full of resentment. Come and die! The door of the light-armored vehicle opened, and a human figure walked down from it. This person had a robust figure and a handsome face. He was full of vigor but behind his cynical eyes, there was determination. This person was Daniel. The moment the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family saw this figure, his face turned gloomy. Daniel was carrying a long halberd on his back, and his body was perfectly straight. After walking down the light-armored vehicle, his eyes swept across the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family, who was standing not far away from him, he didn't stop there. Instead, he shifted his gaze to the Crimson Dragon Patriarch who was standing on top of the Shadow Furious Dragon's head. Crimson Dragon, have you asked me if you want to touch Nala? Daniel extended his hand behind his back and the flying dragon halberd danced in the air. Daniel gouged out a few spear flowers in the air and the sound of a spear piercing through the air was heard. The flying dragon halberd was extended in Daniel's hand and pointed straight at the Crimson Dragon Patriarch, who was standing on top of the Shadow Furious Dragon's head. Such obvious provocation and insults made the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's eyes narrow, and when his eyes fell on Daniel, he was shocked. He felt that Daniel's aura was completely different from when he was in the Gladiator Tournament's arena. Daniel was like a scorching sun. He showed off his light and heat energy without any reservation. It made people feel a little dazzled, but at the same time, they could also feel the energy in his body. 
Although the energy that erupted from Daniel's body made people think highly of him, it was truly unbelievable that he could kill John, who had five gene chains, with only the strength of two gene chains. At least they could figure out what Daniel's limit was. Even if Daniel had the ability to kill John, who had five gene chains, but as the patriarchs of the three great families, they didn't acknowledge Daniel's strength and talent. They didn't see him as their opponent, even if he was their future opponent. After all, Daniel was just a low-grade awakened practitioner with two gene chains. No matter how strong his talent was and how fast his strength was increasing, it would be very difficult for him to threaten the position of the patriarchs of the three major families in such a short period of time. If he advanced to that level, the strength of the three families' patriarchs would have increased by quite a bit. Therefore, the Crimson Dragon Patriarch only gave Daniel a glance as he really didn't care about him. Although he didn't know how fast Daniel's strength had increased, Samson knew it. Daniel temporarily lived in the Wild Lion family. Whether it was Daniel being recruited from the beginning, or him learning basic staff techniques from Larry, Samson saw his improvement in strength. Although the talent that Daniel displayed before the Gladiator Tournament was powerful, everyone thought that Daniel was just a low-level awakened practitioner with a gene chain. Even Krista, who came from the same place, thought that Daniel only had one completed gene chain. After all, Daniel had only awakened it not long ago. No matter how strong his talent was, his strength would not change that much in a short period of time. However, Daniel's performance later on in the Gladiator Tournament was truly breathtaking. Not only did Daniel have two perfect gene chains, he also had a sound wave genetic ability similar to a spiritual attack. With the strength of two gene chains, he had ignited the inheritance armor of the Wild Lion family and killed John, who had five gene chains in one go. After the Gladiator Tournament, Daniel had once again displayed his amazing recovery ability. Furthermore, he was preparing to use the Mercenary Association to enter the Howling Forest and train by himself. Samson still didn't know what Daniel had gained in the Howling Forest, but judging from his current condition, he was afraid that Daniel's strength had once again improved by leaps and bounds. Samson no longer treated Daniel as a junior. He believed that Daniel must have the strength to threaten the position of the three major families' patriarchs. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch could feel the pressure coming from Daniel's body. Finally, he carefully sized up Daniel, this young, low-level awakened practitioner. How dare you speak to my father like this? Quickly kneel down and apologize. I will leave you with an attack corpse. The young lord of the Crimson Dragon family said maliciously, as his face turned red and was humiliated when he saw Daniel ignoring him and provoking his father. As soon as his force faded, the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family took a step forward and dashed towards Daniel. Go to hell! Daniel's eyes didn't even move. He looked at the Crimson Dragon patriarch and sneered. Episode 93 Kill the Young Master of the Red Dragon Family The Crimson Dragon Patriarch's heart skipped a beat, and an ominous feeling rose in his heart. Daniel's lips curled into a dangerous smile which made the Crimson Dragon Patriarch feel threatened. Ben, be careful! The Crimson Dragon Patriarch shouted, but he could no longer stop the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family from rushing towards Daniel. I will return all the humiliation I suffered in the gladiator tournament to you today. The young lord of the Crimson Dragon family's eyes turned red. He was hysterical, and he couldn't hear the warning coming from the Crimson Dragon patriarch. His expression was ferocious. His arms were covered with a layer of dark red scales. A strong gene energy fluctuation was emitted from his body. He clawed at Daniel's chest. He wanted to dig out Daniel's heart. Prepare to die! Daniel narrowed his eyes. The flying dragon halberd in his hand moved towards the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family's direction. Get bossed! Daniel shouted. 
He held the flying dragon halberd in his hand and slashed at the ferocious figure without hesitation. The gene energy on top of the flying dragon halberd began to surge, emitting a sparkling radiance and a fierce aura. Genetic weapon! The young lord of the Crimson Dragon family regained his senses after sensing the energy fluctuation of the flying dragon halberd. He looked at the halberd in Daniel's hand with shock. It was filled with a sharp aura. As the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family, he didn't have a rare genetic weapon. Only his father, the Crimson Dragon Patriarch, had a special Scarlet Jade ring that was used to capture the Shadow Furious Dragon. The young lord of the Crimson Dragon family had never thought that Daniel would actually have a genetic weapon in his hand. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch saw the genetic weapon in Daniel's hand and felt the energy ripples from the Flying Dragon Halberd. He roared and threatened. Why wouldn't I dare? Daniel sneered. The Flying Dragon Halberd suddenly slashed at the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family. The young lord of the Crimson Dragon family could feel the wind and violent energy that he couldn't match up to. He let out a wail. His voice was filled with unwillingness, despair, hatred, and regret. But it was already too late. After a crisp sound, a round head flew out from the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family's body and rolled far away. His body fell to the ground, and everyone fell into silence. No one had thought that the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family would be beheaded by Daniel with just a single slash. As one of the most talented young awakened practitioners in the Roaring Tribe, the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family had died just like that. After recovering from the shock, a series of gasps could be heard from the crowd. The way they looked at Daniel had changed from reverence to fear. Even the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family had been killed by Daniel with a single slash. He had left an indelible impression in the hearts of the people of the Roaring Tribe. Even the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger couldn't help but suck in a breath of cold air to wake himself up. The way he looked at Daniel became serious. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger would no longer treat Daniel as a low-level awakened practitioner. The courage and strength that Daniel displayed was qualified to make the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger treat him as a person who was truly equal to him. Who is he? The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger thought to himself. In the Roaring Tribe, everyone said that the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger's temper was the most violent, and he was a man who dared to fight. However, when faced with the Crimson Dragon Patriarch who controlled the Shadow Furious Dragon, the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger was afraid. Not only did he not have the courage to face the Crimson Dragon Patriarch and the Shadow Furious Dragon, but he also did not want to implicate his family. As the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger, he couldn't do such a thing. However, a young, awakened practitioner had completed this task. If Daniel was just verbally provoking and insulting them, Perhaps the Crimson Dragon Patriarch wouldn't kill him just because of the Patriarch of the Berserk Lion. However, Daniel had killed the only talented young master of the Crimson Dragon family. This grudge was irreconcilable. They had no chance of easing the tension. Samson was completely stunned and his mind went blank. Strictly speaking, Daniel was considered a member of the Wild Lion family. Almost everyone in the Roaring Tribe knew that Daniel was the prospective son-in-law of the Wild Lion family. When he was in the Gladiator Tournament, Daniel's reputation had spread across the entire Roaring Tribe. Now, Daniel had killed the young lord of the Crimson Dragon family with a single slash. There was no room for negotiation between the Crimson Dragon family and the Wild Lion family. A shocking gene energy fluctuation burst out from the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's body. A phantom of the Crimson Dragon condensed on his body, burying its fangs and brandishing its claws. Its power was overwhelming. You will die! The Crimson Dragon Patriarch roared. The Shadow Furious Dragon under his feet seemed to have been affected by the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's emotions and became very angry. It rushed towards Daniel. 
Daniel is finished this time. He has no chance of surviving. Daniel has angered the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch is the powerful awakened practitioner with five gene chains. No one can stop the Shadow Furious Dragon, let alone the Crimson Dragon Patriarch who has five gene chains. When everyone saw this scene, they cried out in shock. They all thought that Daniel would die for sure. No one could withstand the combination of the Shadow Furious Dragon and the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. Even if the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger and the Patriarch of the Berserk Lion joined forces, they might not be able to stop them. However, just as the Shadow Furious Dragon was looking at Daniel with its huge feet and claws, a vast, ancient, and enormous aura erupted from Daniel's body. When the Shadow Furious Dragon sensed this familiar aura, its speed immediately slowed down. The Shadow Furious Dragon seemed to be under control, but a trace of struggle and fear appeared in its eyes. However, the Crimson Dragon Patriarch was extremely angry. He didn't feel any unusual condition from the Shadow Furious Dragon under his feet. The Shadow Furious Dragon slowed down, but Daniel didn't have the patience to wait for it. Crimson Dragon, let me kill you! Daniel shouted out loudly. With the flying dragon halberd in his hand, he stomped on the ground. The brocade robe on his body was lifted up, revealing an ancient golden armor. He rushed towards where the Shadow Furious Dragon and the Crimson Dragon Patriarch were. This was the inheritance armor of the Wild Lion family. Nala had given this inheritance armor to Daniel long ago when she was inside the light armored vehicle. There's something wrong with the Shadow Furious Dragon's condition. Samson thought to himself and turned his head to look at the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger who was not far away. Their eyes met. They had the same idea. Episode 94 Daniel vs. the Red Dragon Chief This caused the Shadow Furious Dragon to show signs of breaking free from its control. A trace of fear appeared in its eyes. This was the pressure that Daniel had exerted on the Shadow Furious Dragon with the dragon's might. The dragon's might skill carried by his third Scarlet Blood Frenzy Dragon Gene could bring tremendous pressure to the mutated beast. Even if it was a huge mutated beast like a Shadow Furious Dragon, it still couldn't ignore this pressure. The dragon's might skill was even more effective on the mutated beast. When this powerful pressure erupted from Daniel's body, even the Crimson Dragon Patriarch who was standing on the Shadow Furious Dragon was startled. After all, he was a powerful awakened practitioner with five gene chains, and Daniel's dragon's might wasn't aimed at the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. Therefore, he was only stunned for a brief moment before he regained his senses. However, in a tense battle, even if he was stunned for a moment, the situation of the battle could change dramatically. A trace of coldness rose in the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's heart. His eyes revealed a trace of astonishment. Although the strength that Daniel displayed in the arena of the Gladiator Tournament was very powerful, he was still just a low-grade Awakened Practitioner with two Gene Chains. Although he had killed John, who had the strength of five Gene Chains, he was only able to do so by relying on the genetic weapon and the strange armor on his body. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch never thought twice about Daniel. Although he had killed John, who had the strength of five Gene Chains, the strength that Daniel had displayed was not enough to threaten the position of the three major family's patriarchs. Although John had the strength of five gene chains, like the patriarchs of the three major families, the gap between his foundation and the three patriarchs was not small. If they were to bring out their true combat strength, any one of the three patriarchs could easily trample John. Only a few days had passed since the gladiator tournament. But when the Crimson Dragon Patriarch met Daniel again, he could sense a trace of danger from his body. Daniel could actually threaten him now. How could the Crimson Dragon Patriarch not be surprised by this discovery? The Crimson Dragon Patriarch was furious, 
but at the same time, he felt a chill in his heart. The growth of Daniel's strength was too terrifying. If he waited for Daniel a while longer, perhaps he would have the strength to threaten him. He had to kill him now. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch thought to himself. The gene energy on his body fluctuated violently, and he threw a punch at Daniel. In an instant, the gene energy exploded from the Crimson Dragon Patriarch, and it turned into a red dragon-shaped shadow as it rushed towards Daniel. The gene energy contained in this punch could even form a shadow on its own. It was unimaginable how powerful the hidden power was. In his anger, the Crimson Dragon Patriarch wanted to kill Daniel with this punch. However, Daniel didn't have the slightest intention of retreating. He held the flying dragon halberd tightly in his hand and waved his arm. Gene energy quickly poured into it. The flying dragon halberd emitted waves of sparkling light and slashed at the red dragon-shaped shadow. Flying dragon in the sky! Daniel roared, with a ferocious expression on his face. He used all of his strength to slash out at the halberd. A crescent-shaped gene energy light shot out from the flying dragon halberd and collided with the red dragon-shaped shadow. Break! Daniel shouted and swung his halberd. The gene energy violently intertwined in the air, creating a loud explosion. In the midst of the smoke and dust, Daniel's halberd sliced through the thick smoke and dust and rushed towards the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. What? The Crimson Dragon Patriarch's eyes widened and he cried out in shock. His tone was filled with disbelief. Although this punch wasn't the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's full strength attack, it was still a very powerful one. Even the awakened practitioner with four gene chains was unable to withstand this furious strike. However, Daniel remained unharmed. Not only was Daniel unharmed, but the crescent moon also shaped gene energy light wave that burst out from the halberd in his hand was even more powerful than his punch. If someone had told the Crimson Dragon Patriarch that the awakened practitioner, who had two gene chains, could withstand his full force attack, he would have slapped that person. If the Patriarch of one of the three major families of the Roaring Tribe, the Crimson Dragon family, could withstand the full strength attack of the awakened practitioner, who had two gene chains, what position would he have? If they didn't see it with their own eyes, no one would have believed what just happened. Daniel was able to block the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's full strength punch with just a genetic weapon halberd. Seeing this scene, even Nala and the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger were shocked. They had never thought that Daniel would be so brave and fierce. The power of the genetic ability unleashed by Daniel's genetic weapon Halberd could even offset the full force of the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's attack. Was this something that an awakened practitioner who only had two gene chains could do? Give me your life, Daniel shouted. He leapt up and rushed towards the Crimson Dragon Patriarch, who was standing on top of the Shadow Furious Dragon's head. He used the Flying Dragon Halberd to slash at the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's head. You are so arrogant! Do you really think you can fight me? The Crimson Dragon Patriarch roared. Crimson Dragon Annihilation Slash! A wide red blade light slashed out from the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's hand toward Daniel's face. This was the powerful genetic ability that was carried by the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's fourth gene chain. The blade light contained the gene energy of the Crimson Dragon. It was extremely violent, as if it was going to tear everything apart. The Crimson Dragon's genetic ability is really domineering. Be careful! The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger felt the violent blade light that crushed the air. He was afraid and reminded Daniel of this. Nala and the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger were watching from the sidelines. If they didn't have absolute confidence, they would never attack recklessly. When Samson saw that Daniel was about to face the blade beam that contained the violent gene energy, he couldn't help but feel worried for him. After all, Daniel was a member of the Wild Lion family. He was about to get engaged to Nala. If something happened to him, the Wild Lion family would suffer some losses. Domineering. Daniel revealed in a mocking smile, let me show you what it means to be overbearing. 
The flying dragon halberd flew out of Daniel's hand, and he threw it towards the red blade light that contained the berserk gene energy. At the same time that Daniel flew out the flying dragon halberd, he clenched his five fingers tightly. A black cyclone rose from his lower abdomen, and a pure gene energy gushed out from it. Episode 95 Daniel's Strength When Daniel was in the underground base of the Howling Forest, he drank many different kinds of genetic energy serums without any restraint to obtain the pure gene energy. Drinking all of these different kinds of gene energies could make an awakened practitioner explode. Nala saw Daniel drinking so many different kinds of genetic energy serums that she thought he was going to die. However, nothing happened to Daniel. This was all because of the mysterious cyclone that appeared in Daniel's lower abdomen. This vortex absorbed all kinds of gene energy, causing them to have no effect on Daniel at all. Now that Daniel needed a large amount of the gene energy, this vortex could actually spit out all the gene energy that he had absorbed earlier. According to the vortex, the gene energy was pure and single and it wouldn't cause any trouble for Daniel. The gene energy in Daniel's body began to circulate wildly and gather in his fist upon his command. Daniel, without any hesitation, accepted the mysterious vortex that continuously spewed out the gene energy and began to condense. The flying dragon halberd that Daniel threw out collided violently with the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's saber light and was sent flying away. Although the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's Crimson Dragon's Annihilation Slash was very violent, the flying dragon halberd was a true genetic weapon. It was extremely tough. Even if it bounced away, it wouldn't be damaged at all. This caused the red violent saber light to not have any obstructions. It attacked Daniel. The blade light was about to hit Daniel's body, but the sharp edge of the flying dragon halberd made the violent blade light cut his skin before it could even touch Daniel. What's wrong with him? Why can't he resist? Could it be that Daniel has already given up on the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's genetic ability? He even threw away the weapon in his hand. Daniel is already very strong, but he is facing the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. There is nothing he can do. Everyone on the wall of the Roaring Tribe sighed as they looked at Daniel who was about to be submerged by the blade light. They hoped that Daniel would win. However, the gap between the two of them was just too great. They couldn't see any hope at all. Frenzy dragon killing fist! At this moment, an unusually wild and violent gene energy finally erupted from Daniel's body. Daniel had condensed a lot of gene energy in his hand. He threw a punch towards the red blade light that was just inches away from him without any hesitation. The frenzy dragon killing fist was one of the two genetic abilities on Daniel's third scarlet blood frenzy dragon gene. After Daniel perfected the third gene chain, he hadn't had time to use this skill. Now that he was fighting the Crimson Dragon Patriarch, he could test its power. Daniel believed that the Frenzy Dragon Killing Fist was stronger than the genetic ability that the Crimson Dragon Patriarch had used. This is another genetic ability. Just how strong is he? The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger asked Samson, who was standing beside him when he saw Daniel produce another genetic ability. He was so shocked that his white beard almost blew off. Samson was also shocked. He smiled bitterly with a helpless expression. He had no idea Daniel had such a genetic ability. Suddenly, Samson had an idea that flashed in his mind. A look of disbelief emerged on his face. He stared at Daniel and felt the fluctuation of the gene energy on his body. Don't tell me he has three gene chains. Samson exclaimed in a low voice. Only then did he realize why he could not see through Daniel. This was because after Daniel returned from the Howling Forest, he had perfected the third gene chain. What? A th the third gene chain? The patriarch of the fierce tiger's eyes widened when he heard Samson's words. He looked at Samson in disbelief to make sure that he was not exaggerating. In the gladiator tournament, Daniel only had two gene chains. How did Daniel complete the third gene chain in just a few days? 
it was impossible for Daniel to hide his true strength. In the gladiator tournament, he was almost killed by John's genetic ability. If it wasn't for the inheritance armor of the wild lion family, Daniel would have died a long time ago. If Daniel had an extra trump card, he would have used it at that time. This meant that Daniel had perfected the third gene chain in the gladiator tournament and obtained a new genetic ability. Daniel's talent is the strongest I have ever seen. I've never noticed it before. I think he has a chance to restrain the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. The two of us will wait for an opportunity to strike. Samson said to the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger in a solemn tone. The Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger was a decisive person and nodded his head in agreement. An extremely violent gene energy that seemed to tear the air into pieces attached itself to Daniel's fist and smashed fiercely into the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's red blade light. The two violent gene energies collided. The frenzied dragon killing fist contained a kind of fierce power, and it instantly broke through the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's Crimson Dragon's Annihilation Slash. Compared to the Crimson Dragon's Annihilation Slash, Daniel's frenzied dragon killing fist was even more domineering. How is this possible? When the Crimson Dragon Patriarch saw his genetic ability being defeated, his eyes revealed a look of shock. The Crimson Dragon's Annihilation Slash was the genetic ability that was carried on his fourth gene chain. It could be said that this was the strongest genetic ability other than the genetic ability on his fifth gene chain. Why was his genetic ability so fragile in front of Daniel? What an overbearing genetic ability! Samson couldn't help but blurt out when he saw this scene. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch was as powerful as him. Their strength and status were both very similar. However, at this moment, the Crimson Dragon Patriarch was being suppressed by the Awakened Practitioner, who had three gene chains in his hand. If this scene was told to the public, no one would believe it. But it had indeed happened right in front of him. The violent gene energy contained in Daniel's genetic ability was much stronger than the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's genetic ability. This was all because of the mysterious vortex in his body. If it wasn't for the pure gene energy that was spat out from the mysterious vortex, Daniel would not have been able to achieve such a strong effect just by relying on his own gene energy reserves. The fist shadow in the air shattered the red blade light and flew towards the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. Daniel followed closely behind. A bloodthirsty light appeared in his eyes. He didn't give the Crimson Dragon Patriarch any chance to catch his breath. You are courting death! The Crimson Dragon Patriarch shouted. He stomped on the Shadow Furious Dragon under his feet. The Shadow Furious Dragon let out a loud roar. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch was not alone now. With the existence of the Shadow Furious Dragon, he was in an undefeatable position. Episode 96 Crimson Dragon Bone The Crimson Dragon Patriarch spent all of the Crimson Dragon family's manpower and resources just for this powerful Shadow Furious Dragon. Now that he had the Shadow Furious Dragon under his control, he was in an undefeatable position. Even the Patriarchs of the Berserk Lion and the Ferocious Tiger together couldn't beat the Shadow Furious Dragon. In fact, even if the three of them joined forces, would barely be able to suppress the Shadow Furious Dragon. This was enough to show how powerful the Shadow Furious Dragon was. The Shadow Furious Dragon had suffered the joint attack of the three of them, and its current strength wasn't at its peak. However, the Crimson Dragon Patriarch could control the Shadow Furious Dragon's movements. Between the two of them, the combination of their power was the strongest in the entire Roaring Tribe, and they had no opponents at all. If you grow up in the future, you will be my biggest threat. Unfortunately, today will be the day of your death. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch looked at Daniel, who was rushing towards him with violent gene energy in his hand. His expression was ferocious and had a strong intent to kill emerged in his eyes. 
The speed of Daniel's growth made the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's heart palpitate. His improvement was just too fast. Even a great figure like the Crimson Dragon Patriarch found it hard to believe. However, even with Daniel's current strength, it was still a bit difficult for him to pose a threat to a martial artist with a deep foundation like him, who had five gene chains. Perhaps Daniel's hidden strength would be enough to threaten him, but now he had revealed his strength. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch would definitely not leave behind a hidden danger that could threaten his future ruling position. Furthermore, his son had been killed by Daniel. The hatred between the Crimson Dragon Patriarch and Daniel had become irreconcilable. You talk too much nonsense, Daniel shouted out. The frenzied dragon killing fist mixed with the violent gene energy flew towards the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. Do you think you're the only one who has a genetic weapon? The Crimson Dragon Patriarch narrowed his eyes. With a flip of his hand, the scarlet jade ring that was used to trap the Shadow Furious Dragon once again appeared in his hand. However, this time, the Crimson Dragon Patriarch did not use the scarlet jade ring to create a huge net to attack Daniel. His hand swept across the scarlet jade ring, and a slender, white bone blade appeared in his hand. Everyone was surprised to find that the Scarlet Jade Ring in the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's hand was not only capable of trapping enemies, but it was also a genetic weapon that could store items. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch has taken out the Crimson Dragon Bone? Looks like Daniel is really a threat to him. When the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger saw this, he became even more restless. A dangerous light shone in his eyes as he spoke. As the patriarch of the three great families, the three of them possessed a huge amount of resources. No matter how precious the genetic weapon was, it wasn't unusual for them to have one or two of them. However, due to the uniqueness of the genetic weapon, the patriarchs of these three great families wouldn't reveal their genetic weapon to anyone unless it was a critical moment. After all, others might be able to determine their genetic talent through the genetic ability. However, no one could guess the special genetic ability that the genetic weapon carried. In order to deal with Daniel's attack, the Crimson Dragon Patriarch even used the Crimson Dragon Bone. This really surprised the other two patriarchs. The Crimson Dragon Bone was the inheritance of the Crimson Dragon family. It was very precious. Not only did it have the meaning of inheriting the spirit, but it was also a very powerful genetic weapon. It was just like the inheritance armor of the wild lion family. The white bone blade was crystal clear, and the crimson dragon patriarch held it tightly in his hand. It flashed with a cold light, and waves of cold energy rose from the bone blade, causing people to feel a chill down their spines. When they sensed the cold aura on the bone blade, they understood that this bone blade was definitely an extraordinary item, and it was very powerful. The Crimson Dragon Patriarch has taken out the Crimson Dragon Bone. Samson's eyes sparkled when he saw the sharp bone blade in the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's hand. It was obvious that he had the same thought as the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger. As the Patriarchs of the two families, they were very sensitive to the situation. As the saying goes, a wise man knows when to submit to the circumstances. Samson and the Patriarch of the Fierce Tiger understood this principle. Right now, what the two of them feared the most was the Shadow Furious Dragon underneath the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's feet. If the strength that Daniel displayed could make the Crimson Dragon Patriarch even more miserable, the two of them would definitely be on Daniel's side without hesitation and launch a surprise attack on the Crimson Dragon Patriarch. Of course, if Daniel didn't show enough strength to convince the two of them, the two of them would just stand by and watch, with the main purpose of protecting their family. The responsibility of continuation of the family lay with the Patriarch. Even if they had the courage to fight, it was related to their family and many of their own kind, and the conditions wouldn't allow them to do so. Dragon Bone Thrust! The Crimson Dragon Patriarch swung the bone blade in his hand. The bone blade that was only the length of a small arm suddenly expanded and attacked Daniel. At the same time, the sharp barbs on the bone blade became bigger, like sharp blades. If Daniel was scratched by this bone blade, 
even his bones would instantly be damaged and result in death. This is really a sinister weapon. Daniel sneered, but he did not have any intent of retreating. Without any hesitation, his fist, which was condensed with violent gene energy, smashed towards the bone blade that was extending and contracting. The sound of the intense intertwining gene energy shocked everyone. Their attacks were on par with each other. What level has Daniel's strength reached? He is actually able to hold the Crimson Dragon Patriarch's genetic weapon in a deadlock with just his fist. Just how strong is his physical body to be able to withstand such an intense gene energy attack? Previously, Daniel killed five powerful awakened practitioners in the Gladiator Tournament. Is history going to repeat itself again? When the people in the Roaring Tribe saw the stalemate between Daniel and the Crimson Dragon Patriarch, they cried out in shock. Daniel's explosive strength had really shocked everyone. He was able to suppress the Crimson Dragon Patriarch in this battle. Apart from the two Patriarchs of the Berserk Lion and the Ferocious Tiger, no one else in the Roaring Tribe could do it. But now Daniel has done it. This proved that Daniel's strength has reached the level where he could stand shoulder to shoulder with the patriarchs of the three major families. Episode 97 The Choice of the Clan Leaders